Chapter 33, Who's the Real Monster? The call for Kumo's shinobi to fan out and search the countryside for Yugito had gone out, and a three-man team had come to a stop to get their bearings of their surroundings as they sat on a boulder to take a rest. Man. A dark-skinned man with shaggy white hair and a white one-shoulder Kumo flak jacket over his high-collared, sleeveless Kumo uniform said. On his left and right arms he had the kanji for lightning and water tattooed, and on his back he had a large cleaver blade, these guys were able to get Yugito. How is Rekage Sama sure she's still around here? We don't have a trace of her presence at all. Calm down Daru. A young blonde man with a sleeveless black shirt, black pants, his white one-shoulder kumo flak jacket, elbow-length arm guards, and red and white shin guards replied, if she's anywhere around kumo I'll be able to find her. No problem. Daru sighed, I know she, but what if she isn't? He was cut off when a series of large rising pillars of flame shot into the sky before merging into one massive torrent of fire, what the hell was that? The blonde man, she, stood up abruptly with a serious look on his face, I don't know, but the chakra that thing is pumping out is one hell of a beacon for me to follow. Daru rose to his feet watching the unnatural flaming structure, you think it's Yugito? She snickered, do you know anyone else that pumps that much chakra into their jutsu? He stopped laughing and motioned for them to move, Jay, get one of your messenger lizards to rakeage Sama fast, we've got to get moving. The man named Jay, a bald, dark-skinned man with sunglasses and his Kumo Hitty 8 on his head, and apparel similar to the rest of his teammates, finished writing a small message on a scroll that he gave to a small lizard, get this to rakeage Sama, coordinates on Yugito's possible position. Triple X what if Yugito got taken by a cultist group that worships the Nibi and want to free its spirit to get its revenge on Kumo for imprisoning it for so many years? A white-haired dark-skinned boy with a sucker in his mouth pondered. Amoe shut up with your overthinking crap. His dark-skinned, red-haired teammate replied, Me and Samui are getting sick of hearing your bullshit theories on what happened to Yugito, all we have to do is find her now mind on the mission. Amoe visibly deflated, You don't have to be so angry about it Kuro. He then perked back up, but you were acting kind of defensive. Is there something you would like to tell us? Like maybe what you did with Yugito? His answer was a fist to the head, ow. Kairo glared at him, I'm running out of patience with you. Now focus or I'll break your jaw and shut you up for good. Samui looked back at her teammates that she was leading, both of you focus. No one has been able to find a sliver of a clue about her whereabouts or even who took her. We're operating blind here. A faint sound of explosion rang out before a series of rising pillar of flames came into view in the distance. Amoe pointed lamely in that direction, not anymore. Kero stared at the ever-growing infernos as they seemed to merge together and grow larger, Kami, what on earth did that? I'll give you one guess. Samui was already on the move towards that area with Kairo and Amoe right with her. Triple X. With Naruto and Yugito. Yugito and Naruto's fire and wind ninjutsu had combined and caused a major upswell of fire in the form of a towering tornado that burned the entire environment, leaving the already barren landscape utterly lifeless and scarred with cinder. Cough 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 Fuutin, day tapa, wind release, great breakthrough. Naruto rid the general area around him and Yugito of all of the smoke and charred debris scattered about from their combination attack, I think we were standing way too close to that, he said as he wiped the blackness from the heat off of his face. Yugito covered in soot, cleared out her lungs with a few coughs as well, you think? Cough cough did we get them? Naruto shook his head, not a chance in hell. He tried peering through the leftover smoke but kept on his toes as he knew their respective chakra cloaks made them beacons to Hidan and Kakuzu, I cut one of their heads off last time we fought and he still kept coming. If it was going to be as easy as spamming a big ass fireball then wouldn't you have been able to beat them alone? Yugito bristled at the remark, but look at this, she said as the land around them was colored black due to the intensity of the flames they generated, that had to do something. That would have put one of us down for the count for sure. Naruto remained silent as they walked along the smoldering battlefield and reached to his back only to gasp in surprise before realization set in, fuck. They disarmed me before we did that combination. As a substitute, he pulled out a kunai and held it in a reverse grip for defensive purposes as they continued along the area. There should be bodies, a char mark, something to let us know we got them. There was no way they got out of that one, Yugito said as her chakra cloak billowed around her. Yugito channeled the Nibi's chakra to her eyes to assist her seeing through the smoke. She wordlessly pointed off in a direction that she and Naruto then followed to find Hidan leaning against a wall breathing heavily. 
the top of his Akatsuki cloak had burned and stuck to his skin in certain places, and from the view of many other part of his skin it was clear that much of his front took intense third-degree burns from Naruto and Yugito's combined ninjutsu. From the way he was shaking, Yugito figured that he was in shock from his injuries, you're still alive. I'm surprised. Naruto held his kunai up high, I'm not. Where's your partner? Yugito looked at Naruto, look at this guy Naruto. Just because he survived doesn't mean the other one did. This guy is on his last legs himself so why would you? You fucking bastards, Hidan roared as he threw his scythe at Yugito. Naruto grabbed her arm and pulled her out of the way of the incoming blade, you're both really pissing me off. It's getting really hard for me to not flat out want to kill you too. Especially you girly, we already beat you once. Yugito glared at him harshly, how are you still alive and able to move? That should be agonizing. Oh it is. Hidan assured her, but you've got to hit harder than that to stop me. I'm immortal bitch. You know, I can't die? The punk ass brat next to you should know better than you. Naruto sighed, Yugi-chan, I told you that I cut his head off and he still cursed me out and kept coming. Naruto let go of her, now where the hell is your partner? Hidan smirked, would you believe me if I said that you killed him? He chuckled as Naruto gave him a dry look, I didn't think you would, neither did he. Raiden, John, lightning release, false darkness. Naruto and Yugito moved aside as a spear of lightning cut into the ground where they were standing. Both Jinchuriki split apart to avoid the jutsu but found a flaw with their plan of evasion when the bolt of lightning branched out and followed them both. The solid rock of Kumo's mountain range was effortlessly carved into by the force of the arcing lightning. One chance to get this thing off of me. Naruto said as he formed hand seals on the move and crossed his arms in an X to finish, Fuuten, Senpu Kakasui, Wind Release, Whirlwind Pyramid. A sudden wind kicked up around Naruto's body, strong enough to deflect the quick and forceful lightning attack off to the side, effectively ending the threat it posed him and allowing him to move back in to continue fighting. He was cut off from rejoining and assisting Yugito by Hidan appearing in front of him with his scythe drawn for attack. Naruto grit his teeth in anger at being diverted by the immortal berserker, do you even know any ninjutsu or genjutsu at all? Hidan smirked, nope, just one really. I'm pretty straightforward, you know what you're going to get with me, but does that mean you can stop it? Hidan started swinging at Naruto who found it difficult to dodge due to the angles of Hidan's strikes. It was clear he was used to fighting people with extreme dexterity as his attacks were tailor-made for opponents that were far more mobile than he was. Naruto barely diverted a slash from Hidan's scythe with the kunai in his hand but seeing how close he came to actually taking a cut from the wicked weapon, he needed to get that damn thing away from him. Hidan attempted a cross slash that Naruto stopped by grabbing onto the pole of the weapon with both hands before it could impale him. Hidan kicked low at Naruto's shin, disrupting his balance and his grip. Hidan butted the pole into Naruto's face and knocked him back before swinging at him again. Naruto ducked, losing a few stray hairs in the process and pissing off Hidan further, just bleed already damn it. What do I have to do to draw blood on you? Aim better for one, Naruto said as his fist collided with Hidan's scythe pole in an attempt to hit the man in the face. He dropped low for a kick, but Hidan shifted the scythe to block him again and kicked him backwards across the ground, a kick that Naruto easily recovered from, for second you need to be faster. Meanwhile Yugito was still dodging Kakuzu's Raten, John, how long can he hold this jutsu for? He must have the reserves of six shinobi to keep this up for so long. Using the Nibi's chakra kept her a step ahead of the lightning due to her not having a defensive jutsu the likes of Naruto that was strong against lightning ninjutsu, where is it even coming from? I can't even see the guy firing it. Yugito sharply abstracted her forward motion with a back handspring and started moving closer to the source of the lightning through the smoke that was still hanging around the battlefield. She played a dangerous game by twisting around the dangerous attack and dodging its branching stems of electricity that tried hitting her as she ran. She eventually found the source of the lightning in another one of Kakuzu's black thread creatures with a mask. As she caught sight of the creature it broke off its attack and sent out some of the threads that composed its body to ensnare her. Yugito turned up the heat of her blue, protective, flaming chakra cloak to keep them from touching her, I'm so tired of you Akatsuki assholes. She got back out of range of Kakuzu's mask and opened her mouth, channeling chakra all the while, Kaden, Rise Hari, Fire Release, Laser Beam. Yugito fired a thin, straight, narrow red laser from her mouth that instantly impacted off of the mask of the creature and burned a hole right through, coming out the back of it and continuing on to burn a deep hole into the side of the mountain. 
Kakuzu's masked creature immediately collapsed in a quivering mass of black thread as the mask that signified its face cracked. You troublesome upstarts. Yugito turned her head at the sound of Kakuzu's voice, you brats destroyed two of my hearts with your last two attacks. Kakuzu no longer had his Akatsuki cloak on, instead he had on a black sleeveless shirt revealing muscle tone and visible stitches that carried all across his body. The mask was now vacant from his face and showed that he had shoulder-length brown hair and stitches around the edges of his mouth. Yugito narrowed her eyes at him, what the hell do you mean two of your hearts? Kakuzu turned around to show her three masks sewn into his back, one of them cracked, and a vacant spot that looked like it used to be filled, the mask you just destroyed was my lightning heart and that combination jutsu you and the QB boy launched destroyed my earth heart. Mask. Heart. Yugito thought before her eyes widened, each one of those masks is a heart? You have five hearts? Had. Kakuzu corrected, I had five hearts before I fought you and the boy. Now I have three. But that is of no real consequence, I'll simply have to replace them after we capture the two of you, we are in Kuminari no Kuni, I'm certain I can find a replacement lightning element heart somewhere. Yugito smirked, so you're not really immortal. All I have to do is kill you three more times before you're gone for good right? Kakuzu chuckled at the simplified plan of action, you say it like it's going to be easy little girl. Hidan get over here, he shouted to his partner who was still swiping furiously at Naruto who was shocked that he was still able to move at that intensity after attacking for as long as he had been. I'm a bit busy right now Kakuzu, Hidan yelled back as he carried on with his assault on Naruto, this kid's going to get sluggish soon and then it's game over for him. Naruto scoffed and kept narrowly avoiding Hidan's attacks, noticing that the silver-haired man was beginning to get his timing down and had stopped openly telegraphing his attacks, please, if you're waiting on me to get tired just from moving around like this you'll be here for the next three days. That was a lot of bluster because at this rate Hidan was going to inevitably hit him. He was adapting to Naruto's style of movement very well he had to give him that and the way he kept coming forward was annoying enough to press other shinobi into making mistakes. As Hidan got tunnel vision on getting a shot in on Naruto he failed to notice Yugito come at him from his blind spot, narrowly sliding out of the way of a kick from the girl only to end up eating a haymaker from Naruto right in the mouth that sent him flying at least 30 yards away due to the Kyuubi's chakra giving Naruto's considerable natural strength a boost. Yugito landed at Naruto's side and smirked at him, good shot Naruto-kun. Naruto shook his right hand out, yeah it was. It took long enough for the team to drop his guard. Naruto looked at the fist he used to hit Hidan when he felt it stinging and saw a small cut on his knuckle, but shrugged it off as irrelevant. Yugito however looked at his knuckle in abject horror, what's the matter Yugi-chan? She looked over at Hidan who was slowly getting up, did he cut you? Naruto looked at his fist, yeah, I must have cut my hand on his teeth when I punched him or something. No, Yugito said hopelessly. Yes. Jujutsu, Shiji Hayuketsu, Cursed Jutsu, Death Controlling Possessed Blood, Hidan said victoriously as he stood up, his skin now marked black with white outline that made him look like a skeleton. As he reached his feet he revealed a red symbol similar to the one around his neck drawn into the ground, and now you lose brat. Naruto rolled his eyes, what is this asshole babbling about? Nothing is any different than it was two minutes ago. You're still an immortal douche and you still haven't gotten a decent hit on me yet, and now I'm going to finish tearing you apart. Naruto made a set of hand seals and placed his palms on the ground, Raiten, Kaksen no Jutsu, Lightning Release, Live Wire Jutsu. Lightning raced from Naruto's hands along the ground towards Hidan who did nothing to move. Instead of moving, Hidan slowly began laughing and when the Jutsu hit him and began electrocuting him his laughter turned downright manic and insane. Naruto wondered why he was cackling away like a lunatic until he saw the Jutsu hit Hidan and then he felt as if he had been the one to take the hit as he felt the muscle stiffening effect of the electricity that should have been coursing through Hidan's body. His vision went spotty as the smell of burning flesh filled the air. Naruto-kun. Yugito watched Naruto drop to the ground as his frame began to smoke. She tried helping him to his feet only to take a subtle aftershock as Naruto's body was still able to complete a live circuit. Again she tried and succeeded in picking him up to his feet as he leaned on her. W what the fuck just happened? Naruto asked, still out of it. Yugito shook her head, that was how they beat me. They ended up getting a wound on me, that guy ingested my blood, and then everything that happened to his body happened to me in return. Naruto glared at Hidan, you think this is going to stop me you son of a bitch? Hidan licked his lips, I know this is going to stop you. He drew a pike from his ruined cloak and extended it to full length, I owe you a few wounds brat. Hidan stabbed the pike into his left foot, 
delighting as he heard Naruto shout in pain. Blood started coming out of a phantom wound on Naruto's foot. He shouted in pain again and collapsed back to the ground when Hidan stabbed the other foot. Hidan dug the pike into his foot and ground it around, sighing in relief at the pain he was inflicting on himself and Naruto. Come on Kyuubi brat, don't tell me this is all you can take. We're just starting to get acquainted. Sharing utter physical anguish like this lets me bond with my victims, so don't give up yet, give me some fight. Naruto stood back up, ignoring the wounds in his foot, is that the best you've got you talentless piece of shit? Naruto growled out, I can sleepwalk through this. Yugito hissed at Naruto, what the hell are you doing? Naruto turned to Yugito with his eyes shadowed by his hair, he can't kill me. As long as he can't kill me he can't stop me. There's nothing he himself can do to himself to actually stop me. This is where my demented physical training is going to come into handy. Naruto started breaking out in a run towards Hidan, actually surprising the man that he was able to do so. His surprise faded quickly as he drove the pike into the meat of his own thigh to bring Naruto's advance to a stop with their link. Yugito grit her teeth at Naruto's desperate attempt to reach Hidan and turned her anger to Kakuzu who was smirking at the sight of Naruto's struggle, I told him to just let us have you and we would leave him alone. He brought this on himself. That got her attention why would he do that? I'm not even a ninja of his village? Would he really put himself in harm's way like that for me? Our villages aren't even allies. Kakuzu shrugged, that's what I said, but he said if we wanted you we had to take you both. And I don't have any problems with that. Kakuzu clapped his hands and motioned towards himself in a patronizing fashion, here kitty kitty. Yugito was within a hair of going full nibi and attempting to tear him apart when Naruto yelled out to her, Yugi-chan you'd better remember what I said to you goddammit. She turned to him to see him picking himself up off of the ground, get fucking moving already. Yugito shook her head to him getting Naruto to sneer at her, that wasn't an option. Naruto threw a mass of kunai that spread all around, some nearly hitting Yugito and some nearly hitting Kakuzu. The unmasked nuke nin openly laughed at the blonde boy, what was that? You too disoriented and faint to throw your weapons anymore? Kiss my ass Scarface, Naruto said as he made hand seals, Raiden, Dinkai, lightning release, electric field. Kakuzu found himself encased in a roughly shaped dome of electric chakra, you threw those kunai too. That's right dumbass, Naruto said as he held the seals for the jutsu, who throws kunai that badly and lives this long. He turned to Yugito, now I'm not asking you Yugito I'm telling you. Get the fuck out of here and find someone to help you. Tears started pushing to Yugito's eyes, you can't tell me you're just going to give up, that you're going to lose to them here. Naruto smiled weakly and shook his head, it was never about winning or losing Yugi-chan. Go. Yugito stood in place for a moment before taking off back towards Kumagakur. Kakuzu tried to force his way through the barrier only to bounce off, getting a little electric shock for his troubles, so what's your plan boy? To keep me trapped here? To keep us trapped here? We're the ones that have you at our mercy, not the other way around. Naruto smirked at him, you're right, so why doesn't Hidan just leave and chase her down so that you and me can have it out? There's nothing keeping him there, hell he can even stab at me while we're fighting can't he? Just by attacking himself? Naruto's smirk turned to a manic grin, unless he has to stay right where he is to keep his little link to me. Am I right? He shouted at both Akatsuki members. Shut up brat, Hidan yelled back and he dug his pike back into his thigh, bringing Naruto to his knees. Naruto's laughing fit hit a hitch when he took the damage that Hidan dealt out, but it came right back, no matter what you two do there's no way I'm letting go of this jutsu. You both know I have the chakra to hold you here for as long as I want. Hidan can't move because the second he moves I will unleash all hell on him. And every second I hold you there Kakuzu Yugi-chan gets farther and farther away. Kakuzu glared at his electric prison, you think you've won? You think this is over? Naruto shook his head, no I don't think I've won. At best this is the ultimate stalling tactic. But it's better than letting you get us both. Even if you catch me you said it yourself that you have to wait to seal the QB last, so that gives time for a rescue attempt. And to even seal me you have to at least catch Gara, re-catch Yugi-chan, and I'm not even going to mention Kiribai. If you can put him down then you deserve to take the QB. So what you said to the girl? Kakuzu pieced together, about how it was never about winning or losing. Naruto nodded, it was never about winning or losing, it was about surviving. And I'd say that we're both going to survive this one don't you think? Kakuzu frantically turned to Hidan, Hidan make him drop the barrier now. Hidan started pounding away at his legs and arms with his pike, 
trying to weaken Naruto's hold on the seal he had his hands held in. He repeatedly stabbed away at his left arm, let go of the jutsu damn you. You can't keep taking this, no one can. Naruto held his teeth together and hung tough as the QB now had time to heal his other injuries due to Hidan's focus on his arm, and the way he was his healing increased due to the one-tailed cloak surrounding him, I can take this all day you fucking wuss. Is that all you've got, all you're willing to do to get me to break? I've taken worse than this when I was six years old. Kill me. Fucking do it already you pussy. You can't break the jutsu, he said before breaking into loud, pain-filled laughter. Hidan shrieked insanely as he started carving up his own chest with the pike trying to up the ante, shut the fuck up. What's the matter? Naruto roared, aren't you having fun? Weren't you enjoying this just a minute ago? Answer me goddammit. How about you Kakuzu, you enjoying the show? That's it. Hidan drove the pike directly through the palm of one of his hands and ground it around deeply. One of Naruto's hands went limp, dropping the jutsu that had Kakuzu trapped and the Taki Nukunin took off in the direction that Yugito took, Hidan finished the brat off and start getting him out of here. I'm going after the Nibi. Hidan looked himself over. He was a total mess. He had stabbed his arm into hamburger meat, if he could walk after the damage he did to his thighs to keep Naruto on the ground he would be shocked, and his chest was spilling blood openly after the carnage he had wrought on himself to hurt Naruto. He found solace in the fact that the intended target of his butchery was looking just as horrible as he was. Naruto's clothing stayed intact, but the blood was seeping through his pants and running down his legs from his wounds on his thighs. His top was sticking to his chest, stained entirely red by the blood from his chest and blood completely covered his arms from those injuries. Which is why it was so surprising to see Naruto stand right back up so quickly after taking all of that damage to his limbs, finally, Naruto said in the gravelly voice that using the Kyuubi's chakra gave him, that should be more than enough time for her to give him the slip and now I've finally got you all to myself, and better yet you've already done half of my job for me. What the fuck are you on about now? Hidan asked as he still had his pike stuck in his hand. Kakuzu was the real threat the entire time, Naruto said, his face still smirking, while I kept my eyes on Kakuzu the first time we fought you were always there, just walking right through any offense I threw and coming at me while I was avoiding him. You even got in the way of a few attacks from your partner just so you could hit me. Alone, you're nothing to me. Hidan seethed at the insult, we'll see how much shit you talk after I carve you a new hole to speak out of. He tried pulling at the pike in his hand to deal Naruto more damage, but it stuck fast. Before he could look up, Naruto was in his face and unleashed a savage uppercut to his body that sent both Hidan and himself flying backwards into rock formations, crumbling them from the force of the impact. The good thing for Hidan was that the punch dislodged the pike from his hand. Ugh. Naruto emerged from his rubble spitting blood, it was either that or punch you in the face and I really don't feel like growing my teeth back right now. Hidan crawled out of his own side, you little bastard. This isn't over. He had to get back inside of the circle or it was indeed over. He could barely move and yet this punk kid was not only still standing, he could still move about and beat the crap out of him. He had to wonder what was keeping him going. Not only that, but what kind of threshold for pain did he have? Hidan shakily reached his feet and began his all-out rush to reach the Jashin Circle to continue his torture of Naruto when he saw the red blur that was the qb powered Naruto coming at him again, not this time. Hidan pulled his scythe back and blocked Naruto from punching him again when a second tail bubbled from Naruto's chakra cloak. Hidan got a good look at the grinning Naruto whose face looked like pure evil once his lips took on a black outline as his red eyes seemed like they locked with his very soul. One of Naruto's chakra tails grasped Hidan's scythe and ripped it from his hands while the other grabbed the man himself and slammed him into the ground heavily. Naruto's tail dragged him through the ground before throwing him into the air and joining with the second tail to swat Hidan off into a cliff wall. Hidan stood back up and shouted with his back turned to the direction he was thrown from, is that all you've got? I'm immortal you fucking halfwit. He turned his head only to come face to face with a Naruto brandishing familiar steel, look what I found. Naruto used the Senenki no Ken to once again sever Hidan's head from his body. As he saw Hidan's head hit the ground and tumble along he sighed to himself and powered down, letting his fox shroud drop. I'm still alive you useless waste of sperm. Hidan's bodyless head spouted, I'm going to snatch your bleeding throat out with my teeth, just get over here. You're so lucky I can't get back up. Naruto slowly walked over. Without the Kyuubi's chakra helping him along he was starting to feel the strain from the battle. I wonder if I can get your bounty even though you're still alive. Naruto pondered out loud, it should still be good right? Hidan stopped cursing long enough to look at Naruto with curiosity, 
Huh? What are you saying? Naruto grinned a bloody smile and reached into his pocket to pull out a storage scroll. Hidan's eyes widened as his motionless head could only watch the process that Naruto had pulled and opened the scroll for, I'll kill you. You fucking demon fox bastard. This isn't over. As long as I'm alive I'll never rest until I pierce your heart. I'm going to watch you bleed out in front of me and I'm going to savor it. Do you hear? In a puff of smoke, Naruto had sealed Hidan's head inside of the storage scroll. At that point the only thing preventing him from collapsing to his knees was the fact that the fight still wasn't over yet. Naruto pocketed the scroll and dragged his sword along the ground in exhaustion as he went off after Kakuzu and Yugito, is it possible for 15 to be too old for this crap? Triple X. Yugito hadn't turned back since Naruto told her to run. If she had turned back she would have gone back to help him and she figured that going back when he demanded her not to would have pissed him off more than anything else she could have done at that point. Her coils were burning as she continued pumping the Nibis chakra throughout her system to keep her body moving towards Kumo. The two fights against Hidan and Kakuzu had really done a number on her. Had Naruto not given her the okay to start using the Nibis chakra in the fight she wouldn't have lasted long enough to even begin fleeing in the first place. Yugito. The voice that had called out to her and got her attention almost made her shout out loud in relief, she. Upon seeing someone friendly that didn't have a demon inside of them she deactivated her chakra cloak and collapsed on her hands and knees. She, Jay, and Daru came to a stop all around her. Daru kneeled down, Yugito what happened? Who have you been fighting the whole time? She turned her over onto her back, she needs medical attention she's really beaten up. He made a few hand seals to get his hands glowing green, Shousen Jutsu, Mystical Palm Jutsu. Yugito looked around at them, Akatsuki tried to kidnap me. Naruto-kun is still back there fighting with them. Someone needs to help him. Daru looked confused, Naruto? Who's Naruto? Jay realized who she was talking about, you mean the kid that came here with Jiraiya of the Sanin from Konoha, their Jinchuriki, Naruto Uzumaki. He was helping you fight? And he let you get away? Yugito nodded with hopeful eyes when she snorted, why would we go back and risk our necks for a Konoha ninja when we already have you back Yugito? He's not our ally. For all you know he was just fighting with you because it was convenient to him. Yugito narrowed her eyes at her fellow Kumo ninja, he was the one that saved me in the first place. He didn't even have to get himself involved. He's the only reason you were all able to find me at all and you're just going to leave him to my fate. She nodded, better him than you. Why does it matter? This way Konoha loses their Jinchuriki. They probably brought him here as a show of force or something. Get off of me, Yugito shouted, forcing she to cancel his jutsu when she shoved him while getting up, I'm going back to finish those guys off and help Naruto-kun. You three can sit here with your thumbs in your asses if you want. Jay moved to stop her, Yugito you're still a mess. She didn't get to do much and you're just going to re-injure whatever he did manage to fix. Daru nodded in agreement, yeah. She didn't have to be such a bastard about it but he's right in a way. You're risking your neck for this guy, why? Because he did it for me, Yugito yelled at them, can't you see that? Do you not get the picture here? There was no incentive, no reason, no actual objective to find me and get me away from them but he still did it. So why can't someone extend the same damn courtesy to him, nationality be damned? Well isn't that sweet? It looks like the Kyubi Jinchuriki lit a fire under your Nibi Jinchuriki. Yugito paled at the sound of that voice and immediately turned the Nibi's chakra cloak back on, Kakuzu, she hissed out in anger, what did you do to Naruto-kun? Kakuzu laughed, me? Nothing. Hidan probably maimed the brat to put him down and is probably dragging him across the mountain range as we speak. And look, you even brought me an entire mess of new hearts to replace the ones you destroyed. You're a responsible young lady aren't you? Yugito flipped him off, fuck you. I'm going to finish you off. Yes I'm sure that you will. Kakuzu replied sarcastically. His stitches on his body opened up to reveal a mass of black threads that his two remaining masks were attached to, you and your little friend tried a little combination jutsu a while back on me. Allow me to return the favor, Kat and Zukaku, fire release, intelligent hard work. Fu Uten, Atsugai, wind release, pressure damage. Yugito remembered the force that she and Naruto generated with their combined jutsu and that was a wind and fire combination as well. Kakuzu sounded extremely confident in his own, and that didn't exactly inspire confidence in her for everyone else around her or even for herself, get away from him now. Get far away. 
Hearing someone like Yugito tell them to get away got the other Kumo ninja in gear as they immediately bugged out and took off running away from Kakuzu just in time for him to launch his attack. One of his masks spit a regular sized fireball at Yugito when the other one sent off a tornado like mask that compressed the fireball before finally releasing it in a white hot torrent. The intensity of the heat that it generated forced all of the other Kumo ninja to look away. As the attack faded, it revealed that Yugito had to turn into her full Nibi mode in order to block the jutsu for the others. At the end of her rope she transformed back to normal and dropped to the ground, visibly singed in a few places. She looked at her in disbelief, did. Did Yugito just lose? Daru grit his teeth, she took the hit for us. If we weren't here she would have just dodged it and been okay, but she took it for us because we all wouldn't have gotten away. Damn him, she shouted before rushing right towards Kakuzu, I'll finish him myself. Ignoring Daru and Jay telling him to stay put he went right at Kakuzu while making four hand seals, Regan Reikau Chuu, lightning illusion flash of lightning pillar. An extremely bright light seemed to exude from she that blinded Kakuzu. Kakuzu shut his eyes and snapped out his arm that flew off and grasped she around the throat before he could take any action to follow up. Kakuzu looked the young man over before smirking, you're a lightning element aren't you? Your heart will do just fine for now. Haikan and Sukakaru, Century Rush. A red buzz saw flashed through the area and hacked Kakuzu's arm holding she off, freeing him and letting him retreat back to his own ninja. Jay kneeled over the man as he held his own throat and caught his breath, are you alright? She coughed to get his breathing back to normal, who was that? Daru pointed over to the source of the attack. Naruto stood not far from Kakuzu wearing a bladed pair of gauntlets and greaves, staring at him intently. Kakuzu's good mood vanished as his arm reattached, you were able to finish Hidan? And how exactly did you get here so fast? Flashback. Naruto was starting to run of fumes at this point but the entire situation wasn't over until he and Yugito were safely with someone that they could absolutely trust to ensure their safety, and he sure wasn't going to find that out in the middle of nowhere on the side of a mountain, I need to catch up to Yugi-chan and see if she's fighting. Naruto squinted as three figures came into his view from not too far away. He really wished that they weren't Kakuzu's stupid masks. He was so sick of those things by now it was absurd. Hey is that who it looks like? A fiery female voice called out, Kami he looks like a complete mess. They all came to a stop not far from each other, Naruto breathing heavily and staring at them all, Hey Karu, Amoi, Samui. Long time no see you guys. Amoi looked Naruto over and took the sucker out of his mouth, you look like you lost a fight to a kitchen knife. What in Kami's name happened to you? Naruto sighed, well I for sure didn't lose to anything. Yet. Anyway what are you guys doing here? He said, stumbling slightly but playing off his fatigue. Samui spoke up, explaining the situation Reikage Sama ordered our forces to scour the area for Yugito since it was revealed that she was missing. We saw a massive tower of flame a little ways from here and rushed over, but you were all that we found. Naruto grimaced, damn, so you haven't gotten an order to return yet. She's still out here, I need to go now. Naruto ended up getting grabbed on his shoulder by Karo, hey wait, you know where Yugito is? You saw her? A nod came from the blonde Chunin, I told her to escape from some unsavory people while I held them in place but one got away. We were fighting them, that's where the massive fire thing came from. He held up his sword, I really hate using this thing but I'm not catching up any other way. Senen Hake, Ikijur Aware, Millennium Release, Primary Materialization. The sword dematerialized and reformed as grey slash silver gauntlets around Naruto's arms and greaves on his legs with wicked blades on the outsides of them. Samui poked at Naruto's weapons in surprise, what on earth just happened? What are these? Naruto shook his head, no time to go into detail right now. Yugi-chan took off back towards Kumo so you probably missed her or came here from another side of the mountain range. Follow me. Or follow the trail I carve out, because you're not going to be able to follow me directly. With that Naruto took off at top speed, leaving a trail of dust and upkick rock in his wake. And flashback. Don't worry about that, Naruto said, let's finish this once and for all stitches. I'm sick of looking at your face. About that, Kakuzu said before sending two of his masks off of his body to attack an incoming contingent of Kumo ninja consisting of Shi, Daru, and Jay, I don't need anyone interrupting us you understand. Understood. Naruto then rushed in to attack Kakuzu at a speed Kakuzu hadn't seen him move at, a speed faster than when he had been using the Kyuubi's chakra. Kakuzu jumped back out of Naruto's way but ended up getting cut along his stomach. 
black threads poured out of the wound en masse and attempted to swarm Naruto and block him into place. Naruto spun out and cut through the threads as he dropped back in position to avoid a mishap with the threads that had been plaguing him in their last series of conflicts. Kakuzu's body pumped out more black thread than Naruto had ever seen come from Kakuzu's body any time prior to this point. It formed an octopus-type figure around his body and stretched out 20 feet in every direction the arms went, you're too fast now to allow you to get in close again. Luckily I can keep you off with this. It's a shame, you have a very powerful heart. I'd like to take it for myself to be quite honest. He then whipped his arms at Naruto to initiate an attack. Naruto spun in a rapid circle turning into a blur as he cut and repelled Kakuzu's threads before dodging as a second thread appendage smashed into the ground where he had been a moment before. Kakuzu was so far succeeding in keeping Naruto at a distance from him, I already finished off the Nibi. Once I beat you two you can kiss your infantile ass goodbye, and I say good riddance. Naruto had put on the gauntlets to get the speed boost needed to catch up. He hadn't really planned on how he was going to handle Kakuzu from that point forward, but he did have something to fall back on. Kakuzu had sent off two of his masks to run interference with the rest of the ninja in the area thus keeping him from spamming multi-elemental jutsu combinations at him. On the other hand, Naruto was beginning to suck wind. Once again the downside of his weapon was coming into play. For the boost it gave him it sucked his chakra like a sponge. He was already dipping into the Kyuubi's chakra to keep it from sucking his own reserves dry. At this rate it was only a matter of time. Triple X. Jay dodged another Kaden, Zukaku from Kakuzu's fire element mask, who the hell is this guy? What are these? The heat from the attack licked at his body as he stayed out of its range. Daru had drawn his cleaver blade and had been attempting to hack away at the wind element mask that had been keeping its distance since he didn't feel like dodging any wind attacks from it, Yugito's been fighting these things? Her and that kid? He cut through its body only for it to reform right in front of his eyes, she, how is she doing? She had carried Yugito out of the line of fire and was once again hard at work healing her injuries, only this time she had a few burns to go with her pre-existing wounds, she's going to be out of it for a while. She's not getting back up, her insides are wrecked. How long has she been lasting like this? Daru had enough of the regenerating freaky mass creature running roughshod all over them and made a dragon hand seal, Rantan, Raizou Saukasu, Storm Release, Laser Circus. A halo of bright light formed around his hands and shot off several beams of electricity at both masks. The fire mask showed awareness to the situation and took cover behind some rocky formations while the wind mask simply attempted to dodge in the open field. It got a nasty surprise when the beams of light maneuvered back around towards it. The wind mask generated chakra and fired off Fuutan, Atsugai, disrupting the attack and blowing Daru back off of his feet. The mask took advantage of its freedom from fighting Daru and moved towards Shi and Yugito to take him out and capture her for Kakuzu. She looked up to see the black thread monster moving his way but he stuck it out near Yugito to keep her out of its clutches and take his chance against it on his own. Lariat. She was saved by a massive, muscular dark-skinned arm plowing into the mask of the wind element creature, shattering it on impact and putting it out of the fight, Rakage sama I looked over his shoulder at his subordinate standing by Yugito. The rakage smirked victoriously upon seeing that she was still with them, good work. Now where are the fools that thought taking our Yugito was a good idea? She was about to answer when he noticed Jay still under pursuit by the fire mask that had just shot off another jutsu. The jutsu was diverted as it changed trajectory completely and found itself sucked into a scroll, Fukahuin, fire sealing method. Jiraiya rolled the scroll he used to seal the jutsu back up, it looks like we were able to make it after all a rakage sama the mask charged up another attack, but Jiraiya only smirked and pointed behind the mask before disappearing in a puff of smoke. The mask ended up getting eradicated by a Rasengan that carved through the back of its head, all the way through the front, defeating the mask and the heart that went with it. She watched in awe before his focus returned, Rakage sama the man that tried taking Yugito is over there. He pointed over to where Naruto was still engaged in combat with Kakuzu. A wrapped his body in a layer of lightning chakra and prepared to make his way into the battle when Jiraiya called over to him, Rakage sama let Naruto finish the fight himself. He did this much by himself, I want to see him finish it off. A looked at Jiraiya, we could just head in and end it ourselves. There's no need for the boy to be at risk any longer, he's proven himself by staying alive this long. Getting a nod from the white-haired man was his response, he needs this. If only to prove to himself that he's capable of defeating these people. Triple X. Naruto had sweat beating down his face, mixing with the grime and blood as Kakuzu kept him on his toes with his defensive offense. 
It was as if he knew that keeping this style of fighting up was wearing on Naruto and all he had to do was outlast him and the battle was his. Damn it this is like the forest of death all over again. Naruto thought frantically to himself, wait. He realized, this is like the forest of death all over again. And I'm just as tired now as I was then. I've been running away and fighting for at least 12 hours straight and that was before I even started using this thing. A tentative smirk came to Naruto's face. Kakuzu raised an eyebrow at this 180 in Naruto's attitude, what are you smiling about brat? You still can't touch me. The last time I tested this move out I exterminated half of a nest of spiders, he mumbled lowly to himself out of Kakuzu's earshot. What was that? Kakuzu teased, saying a short prayer for yourself? That can wait, you aren't dead. Yet. Nope, Naruto said more to himself than to anyone while still on the move, but you are. Naruto slammed the blades on his gauntlets together loudly three times, setting a low droning noise that stuck around over the battlefield. Kakuzu simply took it as a relevant noise as he felt nothing from it. Naruto then slammed his blades on his greaves together three times while in mid-stride, turning the noise higher pitched. Naruto stopped running as the threads all closed in on him, getting Kakuzu to cackle as he believed that Naruto had finally run out of energy. Naruto clashed the blades of his weapons together one more time and focused the point of the sound into one of the blades on his leg, making the noise conspicuous to Kakuzu who prepared himself for whatever was about to happen, getting his threads away from Naruto. Naruto lifted his one foot and stomped it, burying it into the ground from the force of the stomp. The vibrations from his leg blade carried through the ground, prompting Kakuzu to leap off of the ground as he assumed this was all an earth element ninjutsu. Tenbin no Harukan Pai, Scales of Total Exhaustion a high-pitched whining noise that droned into Kakuzu's ear seemingly sapped him of all of his energy. Triple X. Meanwhile, with those watching the fight from a distance a few of the ninja that had been in battle against the masks felt their energy suddenly leave them as a faint white noise hit their senses, forcing them to visibly look winded all except for Jiraiya and A. A commented on it, I can feel my chakra leaving my body. Is it this sound? Jiraiya looked on at the scene between Naruto and Kakuzu, I would guess as much. I can only imagine the effect it's having right at the heart of the noise. Triple X. Kakuzu began to leak blood from his mouth, eyes, and ears, what the hell are you doing? He willed his threads bestowed upon him by the Jiang to move forward, but they only flickered forward for a moment before dropping to the ground limply. Naruto's ears started to bleed himself, this jutsu takes the fatigue that I've accumulated in comparison to my full capabilities and saturates the air with this sound. Anything that is caught in the noise gets their chakra drained to the extent of the amount that I've used in relation to my full reserves. That fact widened Kakuzu's eyes. With only one heart left he had no ludicrous reserves the way that Naruto did, and he had been fighting just as long as Naruto had been all day long. You. Brat, Kakuzu said weakly as he slumped to the ground in a heap, how could I be beaten by a punk kid that's barely out of diapers? He said quietly as the noise persisted. Naruto walked over to him sluggishly, now bleeding from his eyes to go with his ears, because this punk kid's been training to kill guys like you since he was able to read. Naruto drove the blade on his foot into Kakuzu's chest, leaving it sticking straight out of the side of his chest his heart was on. Kakuzu let out a death rattle and he went still once and for all. A groan of discomfort came from Naruto as he allowed his weapon to return to its original ninjato form before he began walking over to where the others were. Triple X Jiraiya had a wide grin on his face as he saw his apprentice walking back over to them after finishing off Kakuzu, what did I say Reikage sama I told you he could handle it by himself. You just need to have faith in the kid. I chuckled at Jiraiya's pride in Naruto's performance, as long as that boy is in your village I can see him keeping it safe as its protector. What he was meant to be as its Jinchuriki. Yep. Jiraiya beamed, he's the spitting image of. Oh hold on. Jiraiya frowned when he saw Naruto unceremoniously drop face first onto the ground in exhaustion in the distance. A sweat dropped as he gestured for his ninja to go out and assist him, is he going to be alright? Jiraiya shrugged, May, he's fine. He cupped his hands to his mouth, come on Gaki, walk it off. You're blowing my wise teacher moment here. And here I was starting to think you were tough. Naruto, face down on the ground, heard Jiraiya's remark and started muttering curses to himself as he found himself unable to move his body or raise his voice. All right. Kyuubi's voice boomed in Naruto's mind, he's back on the list. Naruto could only give a mental nod to his tenant in agreement. Chapter 34, Allergic to Life After the little conflict with Kakuzu and Hidan had been settled, 
Jiraiya had made sure that Naruto had gotten treatment back in Kumagakura for his more nagging injuries and wounds suffered from the prolonged battle. For the physical price he paid keeping Yugito out of Akatsuki's clutches a stay in the hospital was the least that could be allowed for him. Speaking of Yugito, surprisingly after the battle was complete the worst damage she suffered was the injury through her hands that had been inflicted at the start. She didn't suffer any permanent nerve damage, but it was advised that she refrain from training until further notice to keep from re-injuring herself. During Naruto's hospital stay Jiraiya took to trying to examine Naruto's sword. And failed miserably as it did not let Jiraiya lay a finger on it without cutting into his hands with wind chakra, which piqued his interest as that was Naruto's main element type. However from what he had seen of the sword Naruto, who had finished his wind element training, never channeled chakra through the blade, and then it had that second form that simply augmented his abilities, but from what he had gleaned from Naruto it drained him heavily. Naruto was strong. This was always evident to Jiraiya. Back when he took Naruto with him to retrieve Tsunade it was clear that anyone short of the absolute best in the world would have a horrible day if they had decided to tangle with Naruto, but now Jiraiya wasn't sure if he could put Naruto down without having to resort to his absolute best, although any stirring from the Kyuubi and he could always slap a suppression seal on Naruto but getting it on him was an entirely different matter altogether. He and Tsunade needed to have a conversation on his growth once he got the kid healed up and dragged him back to Konoha. In the meantime he was getting his kicks off of watching the nursing staff in Kumo's hospital keep Naruto in place. Apparently with a Jinchuriki like Kiribai they got used to him trying to break out before he was released early on in his life and had way more experience dealing with a rowdy, powerful demon container. No leniency was given, even stepping out of bed set off an alert for trained orderlies to put him right back, forcefully. And if that wasn't enough the head doctor was a woman with a glare that could freeze lava on point. Yes, after the first day Naruto was a good boy. The company didn't hurt either however. Triple X. Kumagakura no Sato, Kumo Hospital. Naruto sat, seething to himself in his bed, I never thought I would find something I hate more than Konoha's hospital, but now I think Kumo's is pushing it firmly out of the way for sure. Yugito rolled her eyes from a nearby chair, oh get over it Naruto-kun, they'll let you out when they think you're good and ready. I am good and ready. I was ready the day after I was admitted and now it's been three days. They're just now letting me bathe myself. He nearly whined to her, hospitals are for the dead and dying. I am neither so they should let me go. He ran a hand through his hair, I can't believe mugging that orderly and transforming into him didn't get me out. I thought that would work for sure. Yugito didn't miss a beat. Kiribai tried that six years ago. Naruto sighed, of course he did. He then lightly glared at her, noticing that she was dressed in her own clothing, how come they let you go? Yugito grinned cheekily at him, all I had besides the busted ribs were a few burns and my messed up hands. Yugito lifted her heavily bandaged palms and waved them at Naruto showingly, you had all kinds of torn muscles in your legs and arms. How did you even tear the muscles anyway? Naruto glowered, the bastard sword I carry with me. He let off a scowl as his heirloom blade, that thing is more trouble than it's worth sometimes. How am I supposed to train with it when it rips my body apart just using it? Oh just toughen up you big baby, Yugito said, popping him lightly on the arm, we just beat the Akatsuki and here you are complaining about your sword. Prioritize Naruto-kun, just relax. Getting all stressed out will do you no good. Yeah, no good. Naruto replied, no good like your bum hands, he said grabbing her wrists and waving her arms around as if she were a marionette before she realized what he was doing and narrowed her eyes at him. What do you think you're doing Scarface? She growled out at him, getting beat up by orderlies and your sensei isn't enough? You want me to stomp you too? Naruto smiled at her disarmingly, I'm bored. I haven't seen anything but white walls for days, and I'm well enough to leave. Since I can't leave, I'll have to have you keep me company Yugi-chan. My lovely entertainment. Yugito smirked at him, your entertainment am I? And lovely you say? Naruto shrugged, still holding onto her wrists, it is what it is. Yugito moved her chair closer to Naruto and inched her face closer to his, and what makes you think I'm here to entertain you? Maybe I'm here for my own fun. Naruto gave her a dry look in response and then looked at his hospital gown clad form, I don't really see what would be so entertaining about me right now? Yugito's eyes went along his form, you wouldn't would you Mr. Paper Thin Gown? She placed her mouth near his ear, it's a shame we weren't in the same room while I was in mine. She pulled away from him once she felt him let go of her wrists and laughed at the incredulous look on his face, I just had to get you back for all of the stupid things you said in the cave. Don't be mad Naruto-kun. Naruto's face went back to normal once he heard the laughter from Yugito, 
that wasn't fair Yugi Chan. I thought you were serious, especially after your little kiss right before we fought Hidan and Kakuzu. Speaking of that. Yugito trailed off, why did you do it? Why did you fight for me against them? You could have just let them take me, they weren't here for you. You would be fine right now. Naruto gave her a long hard look, because we're friends Yugi Chan. He set his head back on his pillows and looked at her from his side view, I would protect you just as much as I would anyone else that was close to me and needed my help. Yugito frowned, fighting when you didn't need to against such dangerous people and losing would have crippled your village's military presence. There wasn't any reason to do this umph. Yugito stopped talking when a pillow smacked into her face. Naruto's arm was still extended from the throw, I just gave you the reason. Being one of my precious people means I'll fight for you when I have to, because it's the right thing to do. It doesn't hurt that I had to face off with them eventually anyway, but I needed to make sure you weren't caught. It's just that simple. The entire reason me and Uro Senen even came here in the first place was to try and set up an alliance against Akatsuki's working so the reason I came here was more or less to protect you I guess you could say, hey. He finished with a laugh. Yugito looked at him long and hard with an expressionless face trying to ascertain any sign of falsehood in his body language after what he had just said. She finally sighed and stood up, hovering next to Naruto's bed and looking at him as he simply stared back at her equally impassively. I told those idiots that you did it just because you were a sweetie, she said as a smile slowly worked its way to her face once more. Yeah, yeah, Naruto said, I'm your hero and all of that crap. How could I just let you go and get killed like that without trying to stop it Yugi-chan? He then felt Yugito lean over him and give him a short kiss on the lips, what was that for? Yugito stayed close to his face, that was for all of the effort it took to get me back from them in the first place. She kissed him again, that was for fighting them as hard as you did for me. She then placed one final, very long kiss on him that she had to somewhat climb onto his bed slash him to prolong before breaking it, and that was just for me. Speaking of which. She scratched the side of his face hard enough to draw blood, getting a cry of anger from Naruto, that was for making me run away when you were in trouble. Naruto tried to open his mouth to reply, shutting it firmly when he felt Yugito's close-range glare on him, no arguments, no excuses, you simply won't be doing that ever again, understood? Naruto nodded quickly seeing as how he was pinned down, good boy. With that Yugito lowered herself down, still straddling him, and proceeded to renew their previous activity with Naruto dynamically reciprocating her actions via beginning to reach under her shirt until. Yo Mr. Nine I got here fast after hearing about those guys that kicked your ass. The door to Naruto's hospital room was then kicked almost off of the hinges and the towering form of the very familiar Hachibi Jinchuriki filled it through, grinning widely it's Kiribai-sama singing you a tune, hoping to see you get well soon. He failed to notice that Naruto was sitting up unusually ramrod straight with most of his bed linens askew over one particular spot around his legs as if to cover something as well as Yugito sitting statue still in her chair, hair slightly awry and her face with a healthy blush running across it. As well as both of them panting slightly. Naruto snapped out of his trance first, be what the fuck? You knock before you enter a room with a closed door. Kiribai scoffed at Naruto, I don't knock motherfucker. Clearly, Yugito said with her eye twitching at her older Jinchuriki friend wishing he would spontaneously burst into flames right that minute. Kirabai sensei you need to slow down and be quiet, we're in a hospital. Kairo came inside of the room followed by Amoe and Samui who rolled her blue eyes at her teammate at the hypocrisy of that statement. Kairo blinked at seeing Naruto up and about, so you're finally able to take visitors Naruto? Naruto gave her a dry look, I could have taken visitors yesterday but I tried breaking out the moment I woke up and after three attempts they isolated me until today. Kirabai nodded in understanding while the others simply looked at him like he was insane. Amoe, with the ever-present sucker in his mouth spoke up, you're talking about this place like it's prison or something. Naruto's dry look switched over to him, it is when there isn't anything wrong with you. He looked between them all, I will give each of you 10,000 Ryo if you get me out of here now. Amoe and Kairo went wide-eyed while Samui simply gave him a questioning look, where did you get that kind of money to spend on something like this? Naruto smirked inside of his head. He was still counting his money from the bounty on Sasori, he had gone on back-to-back -back high level missions, didn't have any expenses other than food and Hamako handled those matters herself with the money she made assisting at the academy when he wasn't there. Yeah he was so moving out of that apartment when he got back. Hell, with the money he was going to make off of Hidan's head he was going to be more loaded than ever before. Damn. He didn't get Kakuzu's corpse. Oh well, there's such a thing as too much money after all. At that moment Jiraiya walked into the room, that's not going to be necessary brat. 
You're good to go. He threw a bundle to Naruto that when caught showed that they were Naruto's clothes and other possessions that he sealed into scrolls for travel, yep. It's time we get out of here and go back to Konoha. Finally, it took long enough, Naruto said as he began to peruse through his things. He looked up in time to catch himself from taking his hospital gown off to prepare to change, um, could I get minute here? Yugito plopped down on the bed next to him, aw, you don't want me to stay Naruto-kun? Naruto pushed her lightly, if you stay then changing is going to be the last thing that I end up doing in here. He panned his eyes over to Jiraiya who was writing down something in a small notepad, Uro Senen what the hell? Jiraiya looked up at Naruto and put his pad away, oh get over it Gaki. I've been using your life to brainstorm ideas for my book since right after we went after Tsunade, he chuckled lecherously, lately you've been giving me quite a bit to write about I have to say. I didn't see you becoming a ladies man. Naruto sighed, I'm not a ladies man. Liar, Yugito stated plainly with her arms crossed. Kairu nodded, blushing slightly, I remember the last time you were here you know. You're full of crap on that one. Samui rubbed her shoulders, is there any chance you can give me another massage like you did last time you were here before you go? Um, Naruto said unsurely, ask him. He pointed over to Jiraiya who was once again rapidly writing and mouthing out massage, oi. Don't make me burn that thing Urosenin. Oh shut up and get dressed already, Jiraiya said, wiping away the small amount of blood coming from his nose from what he himself had written, we have to get back to Tsunade Haim and give her the results of the successful mission. Naruto blinked owlishly, success? But the rakage turned down the idea of us joining forces. Jiraiya grinned at the boy, well after your little rescue stunt and after he saw how two of the Akatsuki could get right into his village and engage Yugito here without a trace going out until the fight was more or less over he saw that there was a need for some kind of measure to be put in place. So congrats kid, your little hero act brought about another alliance. You seem to be making a habit out of that. You act like you're mad about it, Naruto said, now can you all get the fuck out so I can change? He then stopped to think about it, girls can stay. Naruto hopped out of bed once he felt everyone start to move towards the door and almost started taking his hospital gown off until he felt the presence of others still in the room. Turning to the door he saw Yugito, Samui, and Karu still standing there, one smirking, one blushing, and one with no noticeable reflection on her face but a sparkle in her eyes told him all he needed to know. Naruto let off a sweat drop, you know I was kind of joking about that. Triple X. Kanahagakura no Sato, Hokage Tower. Tsunade stared at Naruto and Jiraiya with her cheek in her hand, leaning on her desk lazily as she looked at the two of them, well you certainly took the roundabout way towards doing so but good work you too. That's one village we can mark down for having our side against Akatsuki alongside Tsuna. Jiraiya nodded, pleased with Naruto's rendition of how the battle went, three of the five villages isn't a bad number at all. He patted Naruto on the head, now don't you have something to discuss with the kid? Oh yes. Tsunade perked up and reached inside of her desk, rummaging around for a moment before dropping a small stack of papers in front of Naruto and handing him a pen, I just need you to sign some things for your identification. Naruto shrugged and grabbed the pen, signing his signature on all of the corresponding areas Tsunade designated for him. After handing the pen back over upon completion he finally asked, so what was that for anyway? I've never had to sign anything before. Tsunade didn't answer and simply took out a stamp before slamming it on the paper and looking up at Naruto with a grin, oh that was just the registration forms for your promotion to Jounin. Congratulations brat. He simply stared at Tsunade for over a minute fully processing what he had just heard, you're not messing with me right? You're finally promoting me? Why now? Tsunade sighed, politics brat. I would have done it sooner but you need ample backing from many high-ranking sources in the village these days for any decision like this to go through. You can at least take it as a sign that things are definitely changing around here for you. She finished with a smile. Yeah, either that or I have friends in blackmailing places. Naruto thought as he couldn't fight the smile peeking through on his own face. Jiraiya ruffled Naruto's hair, way to go, I knew they couldn't keep you off of that rank forever. It was just a matter of time. He looked up to Tsunade, so are we supposed to head straight out to the next village? Tsunade shook her head, no. Naruto is on a probationary period as a jounin. He needs to get three more missions under his belt as the leader before it's truly decided whether or not he'll remain a jounin or get demoted to Tokubatsu jounin or back to Chunin. Naruto raised an eyebrow, I'm on probation? We have probation? Ranks higher than Chunin have probation. 
Jiraiya explained, we have a pretty large population of ninja so this is to make sure we have the best of the best leading the pack so to speak. Smaller villages don't have probation since they need their elite ninja for a showing, but Konoha ninja are already perceived as the outright best so we simply make sure of that. You'll be fine. Tsunade assured him as she put the papers away, you don't seem like a choke artist to me so just work the way you always do and things should go smoothly. You've earned this rank. Naruto reached into his pocket, speaking of stuff I've earned. He pulled out a labeled scroll, how much do I earn for this? He unsealed the scroll and covered the desk in smoke. You blonde cock chasing son of a bitch, I knew you'd let me out. On Tsunade's desk sat the disembodied head of Hidan, snarling and knife foaming at the mouth at Naruto, get down here and fight me like a man instead of like a bitch. Tsunade looked at the head on her desk cursing Naruto out colorfully, you. Didn't kill him. Naruto looked up at his village leader slowly, I can't kill him. But this should be better right? I mean, he's still alive. That's got to count for something. Naruto started raising his voice higher and higher as Hidan yelled over him, we could always. We could. We? Naruto glared at the head and stuffed the scroll he had been sealed in inside of his mouth, shut the fuck up. Winners are talking here. Tsunade rubbed her temple and pulled out some sake, I thought I'd seen everything physically possible in this world and then you literally drop something like this in my lap. You lead a charmed life brat, she said before pouring herself a small cup. Naruto then took the bottle from her and took a swing straight from it, it's not my fault Tsunade Bakken. Stuff happens. He tried passing the bottle to Jiraiya before Tsunade snatched it back out of his hands. Shizun. Tsunade called loudly. Naruto pointed at the muffled Hidan's head, can I keep that? Jiraiya gave Naruto a deadpan look, why in Kami's would you ever want to keep that for? Naruto shrugged, Hamako-chan could use some company when I'm not home and he'd make a great pet. I'll even defang him so he can't bite or anything. Hell I'm certain that I can interrogate him for some good stuff on Akatsuki. That's actually a decent idea. Tsunade admitted, the interrogation part, not the house pet part. What is wrong with you? Naruto looked away awkwardly when at the same time Shizun walked into the room, Shizun can you take this to Anbu HQ until I can get a hold of Iviki Morino or Inoiki Yamanaka? Shizun walked closer to the desk and froze when she saw a severed head mumbling curses with a scroll shoved into its mouth, shooting death looks at everyone around. Her eyes fluttered before she fell backwards into unconsciousness. Naruto and Jiraiya looked down at the fallen black-haired woman, did Shizun Nichin just faint? Naruto kneeled down next to her, snapping his fingers in front of her face and shaking her lightly in an attempt to revive her. Tsunade looked over her desk at her oldest companion, Naruto, and Jiraiya, yeah. You're dismissed brat. I'll wake her up. Triple X. Another bowl Oji-san. Naruto called out, placing an empty bowl of ramen to the side of the counter in an effort to wait for his next bowl, I have no shortage of funds to pay today. Naruto's exuberance over his meal caused Tucci to chuckle at his most prolific customer. A pair of hands were placed over his eyes before a very welcome voice let him know exactly who it was, I knew that I would find you here Naruto-sama. Why didn't you come home first? The voice finished almost poutingly. Naruto smiled and removed the hands from his eyes, allowing his aide to take a seat next to him inside of the ramen stand, Hi Hamako-chan. Anything interesting happened while I was gone? He stopped smiling and looked at her rather gravely, you didn't burn the apartment complex down testing stuff out did you? Hamako rolled her eyes and leaned on the counter, ever-present smile still on her face, no, I'm not even working with anything volatile now, all I did was outfit your gift with some seals and that was pretty much all I did. It's only been a week since you left you know. Speaking of seals. Naruto changed topics, I can use the hardest stuff that you taught me on actual people now so let me in on some new stuff next time we train. He picked up his sword, also I need you to seriously help me break down all of the seals placed on this thing and help me work out how this thing works. Going blind with this thing isn't such a good idea anymore. Naruto stopped talking as a bowl of ramen was placed in front of him. Of course master, Hamako agreed before smirking by the way, you're in trouble. Naruto stopped eating and looked at her with noodles hanging from his mouth, huh? A small laugh came from the white-haired girl before she explained, where do I start? Will you keep failing to tell people when you leave and that usually leaves me to inform them of your absence, people don't like that, especially the people that were looking for you. Like who? Naruto asked as he continued to eat, I was only gone for a week, who could have possibly had anything to say to me? Tuya-san first of all. Naruto stopped eating to listen, I'm certain you were expecting that though. 
Then there was Anko San as well about the cursed seal, but I handled that appointment in your stead. Right up until Tuya San came over for what assistance she could offer in the story of your. Ahem. Exploits, got out. Naruto stopped slurping up his next bowl of ramen at a breakneck pace and looked at Hamako, still holding his chopsticks to his mouth, and? Hamako looked away sheepishly, everyone that knows of you now knows about it. I am sorry Naruto-sama. Naruto looked over at Tuchi who had also been looking at him before the ramen chef turned away, whistling innocently. He then thought about that statement. Everyone that knows of him. That was actually a ton of people in reality, so when you say everyone you mean. Naruto Niiken. Naruto turned around on his stool to find Konohamaru along with Udon and Moigi. The leader of the trio was looking at Naruto defiantly, Hey Konohamaru. You guys are Janan huh? Good for you all. Hamako at his side waved pleasantly at the trio who waved right back to her. Konohamaru made a fist and thrusted it out at Naruto, I'll show you how much stronger I am now Naruto ni, Oiroke no Jutsu, sexy Jutsu. Konohamaru promptly transformed into a beautiful, nude, brown-haired woman, only to sweat drop after realizing nothing was happening. Naruto simply raised an eyebrow at the display, ha. Huh? Man I haven't used that move in forever. Naruto vacantly realized that a pair of chopsticks were being held in front of him with food on them, oh, thank you Hamako-chan. Naruto gleefully partook in his meal, forcing Konohamaru to face fault out of his transformation. Moigi and Udon helped Konohamaru stand back up, man. Well I guess for someone that invented the technique and can see the real thing whenever he wants it won't have much effect. Naruto immediately stopped letting Hamako feed him before looking at Konohamaru emotionlessly, bringing a shiver to the newly minted Janan's spine. Naruto turned and placed his money for the meal on the counter before cracking his neck and turning back to the trio, so you know how I could never legit train with you guys because you weren't ninja yet? Yeah, that little restriction is off. The kids turned to run, but before they could take their first step, Hamako flashed some seals into Naruto's hands that he slapped onto the bodies of the three young Janan before making a set of half a dozen hand seals, Fuuin Jutsu, Mahi no Fuuin, sealing technique, seal of paralysis. Naruto nodded in appreciation at the effect of the seals as he saw the kids freeze in mid-stride, good work Hamako-chan. How long do I have until it wears off? The seal isn't attuned to you personally so I would give it two minutes since I don't think they know how to stop their chakra flow that well yet. Hamako informed him. Damn. Naruto started to gather them all up at once, that isn't enough time to get all the way across town to the forest of death so I can cut loose. Oh well, I guess I'll have to make this informal at a nearby training ground. Later Hamako-chan, I'll be home in a bit. I've got stuff to talk about with you later anyway. Naruto jumped off with Konohamaru, Moigi, and Udon all being carried by him unable to escape, don't beat them up badly master. You'll get in trouble again. Hamako called out to him before she began to make her way home. Triple X. Naruto didn't really beat them up, sparing them from the horrible flashback to their time in the academy. He really actually did train with them, not on things that they could do with their Jounin sensei who he found out was Ebisu, such as tree climbing or teamwork drills. He made Cage Bun shine and actually worked with them for a bit on things that he figured played to their strengths. With Konohamaru being the heavy hitter he gave him a few pointers on strength exercises and told him that the sooner he showed marked improvement in the things that Ebisu had been training him and the sooner both he and Ebisu would more than likely teach him more ninjutsu to work with. For Udon, Naruto taught him what he knew of wicked traps that the boy already had base knowledge on after hanging out with Konohamaru for so long and tried to steer him towards starting specialization in Fuuinjutsu, citing that other than Jiraiya, himself, Hamako who wasn't a ninja, and maybe Kakashi there really wasn't anyone in Konoha that could claim any kind of advanced skill in sealing techniques. The things that Naruto attempted to give him a crash course were more of starter concepts for someone as smart as Udon was. For Moigi as far as concrete teaching there wasn't much he could show her. She wasn't going to have the chakra reserves to handle Naruto's form of combat so all of the ninjutsu he knew were out of the question. He didn't know any genjutsu, he didn't know any medical jutsu, so he figured that if nothing else he could show her some blade work as an effort to teach her something. She surprisingly took to it rather well and worked hard to learn the basic things that Naruto was trying to teach her. He also promised her after giving her a wooden training sword that if she could show him that she had learned enough on her own he would buy her an actual sword and teach her more than just basics. He didn't just head right out and buy her one after finding out she was interested because he was certain that she wouldn't need one for quite a while, being a Janan for a little over two weeks and that he wanted to give her some incentive to actually train instead of coast on her laurels. After a few hours of working with the Janan, 
and hearing Konohamaru lament about how he wished Naruto could have been promoted sooner so he could have taken them as a team he sent them on their way, telling them that any time they wanted to reach him they could look for him or Hamako. Well just look at you Naruto. Naruto saw Kakashi emerging into the clearing of the training field I smiling at him as the sun was going down, maybe you should lobby on taking a Janan squad of your own if that's how you'd work with them. Naruto chuckled to himself, no way Kakashi sensei. I just like those kids, they're going to be good. I don't think I could take a team just like that. And from that I'm assuming you've heard that I got promoted. As a miss thought he rubbed the back of his head, I hope Ebisu isn't sore about me stealing his team for a few hours. Kakashi nodded, who do you think put in an endorsement for you to move up? I may not look at it at times, but I am very influential. Ah, Naruto said as they began to walk back towards the town, you're right. Walking around with your face buried in Uro Senen's pervert book all the time doesn't make you look very influential, no offense. Kakashi wagged his finger chidingly, says you. From what Anko said to everyone about you and the Tuya girl. Damn it Anko-chan, Naruto shouted to no one in particular, she just spread that around to spite me after she got sent back on that mission we were on. I'm going to get her back later, she better know that. You're in trouble. Kakashi chirped with a sing-song voice, after that little bit of news broke there were some people very interested in speaking with you. A twinge of remembrance ran through Naruto's head, Hamako-chan said that too. She didn't really get a chance to elaborate on it though. What the fuck does that even mean Kakashi-sensei? Kakashi simply gave him his trademark look, it's not my place to say. You'll find out soon enough, I'm certain. Naruto could swear that the man was radiating an aura of I know something you don't, once you get off of probation I should set up a party for Konoha's newest jounin. You never know Kakashi, Naruto said offhandedly, I might get myself demoted. I mean what if I'm not good enough? Both of them stopped walking and turned towards each other, both of them with complete and utter straight-faced looks, right up until both of them simultaneously burst into laughter, yeah right. Can you imagine me saying that out loud to anyone? Yeah, everything's going to be fine. Working with people way older than me that I have to lead might be awkward though. Kakashi motioned for them to keep going, May, you get used to it. I was a jounin at 13 remember, imagine how I felt. You're just lucky that there isn't a war going on right now. Naruto immediately countered, if there was a war going on right now I would have been promoted faster and the team leading thing wouldn't be an issue since I would lobby for more solo sneaking missions than anything else. He looked over at the masked jounin, I get where you're coming from though. But that's just another reason that I wouldn't take a Janan team even if I could get one right now. Akatsuki is still after me. What would my Janan do if we were attacked while we were out? Well then that's just extra incentive for you to finish them all off so you can experience the joys of teaching like me, Kakashi said cheerfully. What teaching? Naruto asked, all you taught Team 7 as a team was how to climb trees. I'm sorry Naruto did you say something? Kakashi asked as his nose was right back in his favorite book. Naruto's eye twitched as he fought the urge to tackle Kakashi and beat the crap out of him wondering if he could get away with it, nothing important Kakashi-sensei, nothing important at all. Triple X. Sitting at the kitchen table behind Naruto, Hamako was using the only thing she knew that could possibly be construed as a ninjutsu, Shikoku Fuuin, finger engraving seal, that she was using to engrave a seal on Naruto's upper shoulder. Hamako wasn't too thrilled with doing this, as it required her to actually burn the seal into Naruto's flesh before she could actually apply ink to make a tattoo out of it, but Naruto wasn't complaining, or flinching, or even showing that this was mildly hurting him, allowing her to proceed with a steady hand. The entire time she was simply telling Naruto about the things of mild interest that transpired when he was gone. It wasn't until Naruto started going over what he had been doing in Kumo, with Yugito, that she felt a twinge of something in her. Luckily for Naruto she had finished the part that required her to burn the seal onto his shoulder or else she might have slipped her control and messed up the pattern. From that point on, Hamako refrained from responding verbally to anything he said that tried to engage her in the conversation. She simply stayed silent right until she finished placing the ink seal over Naruto's burn. After allowing the ink to dry he looked himself over in the mirror, that's good work Hamako-chan. What was this thing again? You were pretty insistent on putting it on me. Hamako responded almost robotically, it is a simple seal of communication between you and I Naruto-sama. She lowered the shoulder of her kimono to show that she had already placed the exact same tattoo on her shoulder, it will allow you and I to communicate by channeling chakra in short bursts resulting in sharp pulses to the other person's corresponding tattoo. She then tested it out on Naruto. He felt the same feeling she told him he would feel on his shoulder, 
so it's like Morse code? Okay then, that's great. He then noticed that the small serene smile she usually had on her face was gone, what's the matter Hamako-chan? Hamako tried to speak three times, but closed her mouth with nothing to say each time. She finally steeled herself in front of Naruto, I allowed your relations with Tuya-san because she knew you longer than I did and having someone like her care for you would have been a good thing. What of this girl in Kumo? Naruto leaned against a wall, Yugito? Yugi-chan is interested in me. We didn't have sex Hamako-chan. But you were going to. She countered, that's where your story was going until Kiribai-san interrupted you if you were to be believed. Naruto frowned, maybe that's where it was going to go. What does it matter in the end? Hamako looked down, why do you think I've stayed for so long master? Why do you think I enjoy doing so much for you and helping you? I even sleep in your bed with you all the time. Do you really dislike me that much? Naruto blinked at her mood, I figured you were just one big sweetheart that I couldn't convince otherwise. And no, I love you Hamako-chan. I don't know what I did to deserve you doing so many things for me. Hamako shook her head, you don't love me. Not the way that I wish you would at least. She stood up and started walking closer to him, you are the most important person in the entire world to me Naruto-sama. You are the only man that I would readily give my life for if need be. I know you tell me not to, to live for my own dreams. Well I've found something to live my life for. Naruto looked at her expectantly, and that would be? Hamako closed the distance between them and placed herself firmly against Naruto's body, all I want is you Naruto-sama. I just want to see you be happy, not only that, but I want to be the one that makes you happy. Without you I don't know what would have become of me if I had ever gotten out of cryogenic freezing without you, but you need me, and that makes me feel wonderful. Naruto sighed and held her against him, I can't marry you Hamako. I've said it repeatedly to more than just you, real relationships won't work for me, there are. I don't want you to marry me, and from the way you reacted when we first met nothing about our relationship is normal. She cut him off, I just want to know that you care for me. Because I really do love you, honestly. Naruto tilted her chin up to face him, I already told you that I love you didn't I? Hamako made a pouting face at him, I don't mean like that master. Naruto kissed her on the lips and felt her nearly go limp in his arms, oh you didn't? Naruto asked, stroking her cheek with the back of his hand, are you sure? Because I think that was the kind of love you wanted to hear from me. The amber eyes of Hamako were quivering at the prospect of this being some kind of trick, see can I kiss you? Please. Naruto grinned down at her, you never had to ask me if you wanted to do that Hamako-chan. Like I said since the day I brought you to Konoha, you're more than a servant to me. And I would do anything to make you happy. Hamako's smile returned and Naruto thought it could have single-handedly lit the room were it dark inside. She wrapped her arms around his neck and kissed Naruto possessively, he didn't think she had that kind of aggression in her, the back of his head bounced off of the wall when she did that. Naruto scooped her up and plopped himself down on the couch, still holding on to Hamako with her sitting in his lap. Naruto laughed when he felt her squirm for a better position, all right we need to talk about stuff. Hamako shook her head, I don't want to talk, she emphasized this by kissing him again, I don't care what you end up doing as long as you love me master. Naruto leaned down and placed her on the couch, I can't not love you. I can't not love anyone. I don't have it in me to turn people down for some reason. Can you believe that? I'm supposed to be a killer aren't I? I know, Hamako said, and that's why people like me and Tuya-san like you, probably why Yugito-san likes you too. If you care about someone you won't let them down, but if anyone hurts someone close to you, you destroy them. That's very reassuring. Naruto laughed, I'm the meanest nice guy in the entire world. Hamako pulled him back down into another kiss. Hey, he said she never had to ask didn't he? Triple X. Hokage Tower. Jiraiya sat across from Tsunade's desk, both of them drinking from her bottle of sake as the day wound down to a close. Jiraiya finished his drink and looked over at his old teammate, I'm planning on heading off to follow up on a lead sometime soon. It shouldn't take too long, just in and out. When? Tsunade asked, filling her cup back up, we still need you to finish the mission with Naruto. You still need to head to Kiri. Jiraiya watched her drink down her own sake, we should give them a little more time to bolster their rankings before we try with them, possibly after the next tuning exams if I were to give it a time frame, he laughed once she gave him a look of disbelief, hey I know enough about politics. I'm doing this alliance thing for a reason right? Tsunade let a smile grow on her face, alright, alright. So when do you plan on leaving on this mission of yours? Jiraiya shrugged, 
let me rest up a bit from this one and get word from my network operative and I'll be good. It should be about a month or so. And just so you know I'm going to take Naruto with me so have his schedule cleared by the time I'm ready to go. Tsunade paid special attention when she heard that. Anything about Naruto was a point of serious interest to her, he was her only living family and she truly did care about him, why do you want to take Naruto with you? Jiraiya scratched his face, a few reasons. But anyway, can you do that for me? He should be done with his probation period in a month or two shouldn't he? He turned on the begging, please Tsunade Haim? Tsunade simply rested her face in her hands, you're 30 years too old to be doing that you pervert. You're giving me more of a mutt face than a puppy dog face. She lowered her hands once he went back to normal, all right. When he's all set with his new responsibilities you can take him with you again. Kami I'm going to regret sending you two out again aren't I? Both of you are bad luck and sending you both out at the same time is just begging for trouble. Yeah you would know about bad luck wouldn't you? Jiraiya quipped, getting a tick mark to form on Tsunade's head, oh you know I love you Tsunade Haim. Now come on and show me how much you love me. Within a second after uttering that, Tsunade had sent Jiraiya flying backwards, obliterating the office doors and who knows what else with the force of her punch, I love you that much pervert. Tsunade smirked while cracking her knuckles. I, knew you did. Jiraiya called out weakly from his place among the rubble. Omake, Cage Bunshine Chronicles. All right be why the fuck am I here? Naruto asked, seated in Kiribai's hut in the Unreikayu, what kind of training are we about to do here? B sat down in front of Naruto with a look of utmost seriousness on his face. He took a deep breath before speaking, this is the most important kind of training I could ask you to help me with. That immediately disarmed Naruto, Kiribai never spoke to him normally, ever, can you help me? Naruto pondered for a moment. What the hell could he possibly do to help someone like Kiribai train? Oh well why not? Maybe he could learn some cool Jinchuriki moves while he was there? That was more than enough incentive to help even if the fact that they were friends wasn't enough, all right, you've got it. What do you need me to do? Kiribai smiled and reached over to the side before thumping a sizable batch of notebooks off of the ground. Looking at them curiously he picked one up. Maybe Kiribai was trying to work out the physics for a new jutsu or something. Upon reading what was logged inside he blanched and face faulted, what the? What is this? Kiribai grinned, my shit is old after the passing of time it's time for the killer bee to make some new rhymes. Ignoring the large black man sitting in front of him, Naruto perused through the notebook before slamming it on the ground, down on the town, a face with a frown, a sad clown. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Kiribai, seriously? Kiribai nodded, don't be a shiv kid let me know, do my rhymes kill or do they blow? Naruto stared at Kiribai as a war waged in his mind, the unbridled, unadulterated truth versus his own personal survival instincts. He could tell Kiribai the truth, that everything he just read on that paper gave him brain cancer that the QB had to purge from his system swiftly. However, Kiribai took pride in his horrible rapping ability, and he seemed to take an incredible amount of pride in the drivel that Naruto was reading. And it got worse as it went along. Were Naruto to tell him how much it sucked then Kiribai would probably quickly show him exactly why he needed to come this far away from Kumagakura to actually train, and he wasn't looking forward to that. Finished with his covert thoughts Naruto opened his mouth to answer Kiribai, well I think that I'm not interpreting the rap right or something. Maybe I'm not taking this the right way, rap's not my thing. Oh that's all? Kiribai picked up one of the notebooks and randomly flipped it open, I can teach you to feel the rhyme kid it's all right, Hachibi-sama's got all damn night. Triple X. On the road back to Kanahagakura no Sato. Naruto stopped right in the middle of the road before looking back down the road they had just come from with a shiver. Jiraiya poked Naruto in the side of the head to get his attention, what's got you all messed up in the head Gaki? Naruto shook it off and kept walking down the road as a stray tear fell from his eye, I love my Cage Bunshine so much. Omake, Cage Bunshine Chronicles 2. Tell me again how I got myself into this situation? Naruto asked as he was trying his very best to keep his eyes from straying downward. The reason being, there was a very naked Samui covered only by a towel lying down on her bed with a content look on her face. The reason for that being, Naruto had his hands going all across her back and shoulders in a very soothing manner. The girl in question turned her head to the side and looked up at him questioningly, are you complaining? Naruto shook his head as a grin broke out onto his face, are you kidding me? I'm here aren't I? Now chill out and let me work some of these knots out Samui-chan. You're so rigid all the time, it's bad for you. 
He cracked his knuckles before getting right back to work, eliciting a moan of pleasure from Samui. You know if you lived in Kumo I wouldn't have shoulder and back problems Naruto-kun. She replied sleepily, I'm certain you'd make sure of that. Naruto smiled wryly at her, trying to get me to defect huh? And what exactly would I get out of it? Samui smirked, I'd be more than willing to let you touch more than my back if you were. She ceased speaking when Naruto worked over a particularly sore spot, stifling her words with another groan. Ahem. Naruto turned his head towards the doorway to see Yugito and Kairo both standing there in towels. Yugito was tapping her foot impatiently on the ground, it was to my understanding that we were all supposed to get a turn here. Samui didn't even spare her fellow Kunoichi a glance, I saw him first, get your own. As Yugito visibly bristled angrily at that, Naruto felt the makings of a catfight brewing and despite his desire to see it, especially with them in only towels, he simply couldn't let it happen for his own reasons. He wordlessly made a cross-hand seal and in a puff of smoke, two cage bunshine were at the other girls' sides, escorting them to their own spots on the bed, Yugito grinning the entire way, Kairo blushing and somewhat scowling, but her heart wasn't into it. Triple X On the road to Kanahagakura no Sato Naruto and Jiraiya had stopped on their way to Konoha for the night and had set up camp. Naruto was simply poking at the fire they had started to cook their food just as blood slowly started coming from his nose and a goofy grin crossed his face, I love my cage bunshine so much. Chapter 35, Good-Natured Hazing Naruto sat in the shady branches of a tree situated near the main gates of Konoha as he waited for the team he was intended to lead on his first mission as a jounin. He had finally decided to wear his flak jacket, and underneath that a black long-sleeved muscle shirt. The change in clothes due to the climate he was going to be facing for this mission. He had never lead anyone before, that was for certain. He was more accustomed to taking orders and dealing with whatever he was instructed to handle and he was for the most part okay with that. However overlying mission parameters didn't direct him to be a follower, they directed him to be a leader, because what Hokage couldn't lead a few missions. Hamako, who was relishing her new position as the primary woman in Naruto's life more or less by default, but it didn't matter to her, was quick to give Naruto a goodbye kiss when he left for the mission that morning. After that point, Tuya caught him outside of his apartment and laid her own claim on him, heading back inside of her apartment after stealing a blistering kiss of her own with a toothy grin. Strange, Naruto assumed she'd be more pissed about their little escapade. Oh well, it was time to get to work as usual, you're punctual aren't you Sai Kouhai? Naruto said to seemingly no one before Sai appeared in an ink sunshine with his strange smile on his face, you're the first to arrive. Looking forward to working with you. This certainly makes things easier now doesn't it? Sai asked the scar-faced blonde. Naruto nodded, yep. Now I can just act like we met on this mission and hit it off and became friends. It takes away one pain in the ass of finding you to talk to for sure. You should get used to it Naruto-senpai, as of now I am a permanent fixture on your squad for the foreseeable future, Sai said, pulling out a notebook that he began drawing in as they waited for the rest of the team. Naruto watched Sai from above and began to chuckle, what's funny? Naruto stopped laughing and looked at his comrade, you might be all about pushing your emotions away and all of that, but you still have a coping mechanism for all of the crazy stuff we do, just like every other good ninja does. Sai looked up at Naruto blankly, I don't understand senpai. Naruto shook his head, your notebook. What are you doing with it right now? Sai looked at the notebook in his hand and back to Naruto, I don't understand. Naruto jumped down from the tree and took the notebook from Sai's hands, flipping through it with an analyzing eye, you draw more than just stuff to fight with? Sai nodded and Naruto handed him back the notebook, that's your thing. Drawing is probably the thing you always do when you're not on missions keeping you from cracking like an egg, the only blatant link to your emotions you have. And to prove my point, give me that for the duration of the mission. Sai looked at his notebook for a moment before handing it over to Naruto who gave it right back, I thought you were going to take it away why give it back? Naruto grinned at Sai and patted him on the shoulder, nah I didn't want it. I knew no matter what it meant to you, you were going to hand it over since I was the one that told you to do it. All I needed to see was the little flash of hesitation you gave me before handing it over. That would be a normal thing to other people, but to guys like you that Donzo Gigi train that's exceptional. I'm starting to get through to you Kohai. Sai's face showed no inflection of actually caring, I fail to see how you being able to see through my emotions is a good thing. It means my training is a failure and I need to be conditioned again. Naruto let out a phantom shiver at the thought of being reconditioned, no you don't. 
you're my liaison to Donzo Gigi and apparently his successor so that means that you need to be somewhat functional in social situations or else you'd be really suspicious. How else are we supposed to work together to help each other do our missions if I can't even get you to hold your own in a public forum? Although I'm barely the guy to be counting on for that. Sai put up his drawing notebook and pulled out a smaller one, then I will simply have to take notes on regular interactions from you. You are my senpai and you have far more experience than I do with the matter. Um. Naruto stared at the pale teen blankly, sure, why not? Let's try that. Sai's eyes flecked to the gate, we will have to continue this conversation another time. I believe it is time to get to work. Naruto rolled his neck loose and started towards the gate to reach his other teammates, all right, let's do this. You might want to have on some better clothes for where we're going, but hey, you're a grown ninja. He patted Sai on the shoulder as they both walked over, everything's going to be a-okay on this one, it's an easy detail. Triple X. Hello Ten Ten. A cheerful Sakura said as she walked over to the gate only to see the bun-haired girl with a sweat drop on her head, what's the matter? Ten Ten rubbed her temple, other than the fact that you and I are the only ones here on the squad we also have. She pointed at a middle-aged man with glasses freaking out about something around a crew of others, this guy that's all worked up in a frenzy and he's not telling me what's wrong. Sakura's reply was cut off when Naruto and Sai walked onto the scene, hello Sakura, Tenten Chan, meet Sai, he'll be working with us on this one. Sai nodded in confirmation of Naruto's statement, you guys ready to do this thing? Sakura pleasantly greeted Naruto with a wave, hi Naruto. Congratulations on your promotion. She looked him over, so you're the Jounin on this mission? You're pretty young for it aren't you? Naruto shrugged, everyone's got to grow up sometimes right? Hell, Neji's a Jounin and he's one year older than us, right Ten Ten chan Naruto looked over at the weapons specialist who haughtily turned away from him getting Naruto to sweat drop, so she's one of the people that wanted to ahem talk to me is she? Sai nudged Naruto out of his stupor, getting him to clear his head on the matter, okay so let's get this show on the road and roll out already, we've got to get moving to get to the coast right? Where's the Sandeyu guy that hired us? We can't leave yet. The man that had been so upset the entire time came scrambling over to Naruto and clutched at his vest, the entire reason we needed the escort, Yuki Fujikase, isn't here. She's missing. Sakura gasped, that's who this is meant to protect? The movie star? I've seen all of the Princess Gale films. Naruto hadn't, but he knew who she was, she was so famous. Being busy almost non-stop for years kind of kills your free time. He looked at the man before gently pushing him off, all right then. This mission is starting off just great isn't it? He sighed before calling his team in, Sai, Sakura, you two search for Yuki and I'll send a cage bunshine with you in case you two or me and Ten Ten find her. Everyone nodded and set off to search. Naruto simply walked, keeping Ten Ten from running off like Sai and Sakura had, what are you doing Naruto? We have to find her. Naruto noticed her snappish tone and how she had taken the kun off of the end of his name, but didn't say anything. He simply made the hand seal for Cage Bunshine and created three dozen before setting them out to search the village. He gestured with his head for her to follow him as he walked through the village to wait for any feedback giving him Yuki's location. He could feel Ten Ten's eyes on him, but when he panned his onto her she would turn them back down the street, you wanna talk while we wait Ten Ten. He kept the chan off of her name that he had been calling her ever since their border patrol mission because she was doing the same. Maybe he could get her to snap and tell him what was wrong. I don't really think we need to talk Naruto. Ten Ten replied, keeping her eyes straight ahead, I think I know all I need to without even hearing a word from you. Naruto groaned inwardly, this wasn't going to be something she could set aside for the duration of the mission and the last thing he needed was her attention split if they wound up in a fight. He stepped out in front of her and stopped her from moving any further. All right, I was going to wait until you told me yourself, but this isn't something that I can hold off on. Ten Ten, what's wrong? What did I do? Ten Ten's eyes locked with his, glaring before she had to turn away from him. What happened to Ten Ten Chan? Or did you drop that once you did your neighbor? Naruto froze in place, confused look on his face before he slowly spoke. What me and Tuya Chan did is between us. Why does it bother you? And I stopped using the Chan because you're acting all pissy and you dropped the kun from my name. Ten Ten took a deep breath, I was starting to like you a lot Naruto-kun. The month we had doing the border patrol was the best mission I'd ever had. Everything you did was so sweet and you made me think that you were into me. Naruto could see where this was going, I do like you Ten Ten chan He looked around seeing people in the streets looking at them both, can we talk about this some other time? He almost flinched at the recoil her face made, 
I promise we can talk about this later, I swear. But we have to work. One of my clones found Yuki and they're bringing her to the gate as we speak. She liked him too? Man this couldn't have come up at a worse time. He could only hope the mission wrapped up quickly so that he could work this out. He put a hand on her shoulder and pulled away quickly when she balked under his touch. What could he say? There wasn't any time for him to even try and smooth this out with her, they had to move out now, come on 1010 Chan. We've got to get moving. Everything's going to be okay. This was all his fault, he never thought girls would actually get attached to him if he dropped his guard and acted like a spaz around them as opposed to being iceberg cold like part of him wanted to be and he was fully capable of pulling off. They hated him when he was sealed and he was a total airhead then, so how would he know how different they would see him after that? Does Tsunade Bakken even know she's giving me such clusterfuck missions or is it just me? Naruto thought to himself as he and Tenten headed back to the gate. Triple X. With Naruto, a few moments earlier. After telling the rest of his team to head back to the gate and wait for him, Naruto kicked in the door to a dimly lit small bar with a perturbed look on his face. He saw Yuki Fujike's downing shots like a champ at the counter of the bar, only taking note of the people in the room. Yuki and the bartender, a middle-aged man with short black hair, visibly graying in certain places. Yuki's cheeks were tinted pink to show how under the influence she currently was when her eyes turned to the door and took note of Naruto, Uck, this kid again. Why do you keep coming after me? Naruto kept a straight face as he sauntered in, because it's my job, and I'm not really into failing missions. I'm supposed to escort you to Yuki no Kuni and be done with it. It's kind of hard to pull that off when you mace me. I wouldn't try that again by the way, it won't work twice even if you did actually get me with it this time. She glared at him for a moment before letting it go, oh what would a kid like you know about life anyway? Naruto chuckled slightly, sharing a look with the bartender who had a smirk of his own, oh lady you have no idea. Now come on, let's get going so that you don't let down your legions of fans by not finishing your movie. Yuki let out a bitter laugh, actors are the biggest fakes in the world kid. This business is dirty, almost as dirty as being a ninja like you I could guess. He really doubted that most actors had to kill people with metal wire on a day-to-day -day basis, we're just fakes, following the lives of others written by others, never really being ourselves. She looked Naruto over before a drunken leer met Naruto's eyes, hey, you wanna know what it's like to be with a movie star? Naruto blinked and looked at the bartender who was simply cleaning glasses and watching the dialogue between them with an amused grin. Naruto turned back to Yuki, first of all I tend to avoid hooking up with drunk women as a personal bylaw, second of all you wouldn't even know what you were getting yourself into. Now let's go, I'm sure you can take your drinks with you. And I'm paying. Sandeyu's waiting, he's pretty upset right now. All he's worried about is me and his meal ticket. Let someone else play Princess Gale. Movie switch actors roles all the time. Another actress can take my place in the next movie, I'm not going to Yuki no Kuni no matter what you say. Naruto sighed and sat down at the bar next to Yuki, Yo Ren, get me a quick shot. Top shelf stuff if you would. The bartender nodded and grabbed what Naruto asked for. Finally decided to quit and let me do what I want? Yuki gloated before downing more alcohol, and you even decided to drink and keep me company. Naruto shook his head keeping his eyes forward at the bar, nope, not quite. One shot, no matter how strong it is, won't do anything to me. I'm just drinking so I can get myself ready to be bitched out for what I'm about to do. Before she could ask what he was talking about another Naruto clone appeared behind her and grabbed a point on her neck, rendering her unconscious, slumped over the counter. Naruto took his shot and swiftly downed it, grimacing at the taste before pulling the money out to pay and dropping it on the counter. He stood up and hoisted Yuki up over his shoulder, later ran. I'll probably be right back here after the mission is over so I'll see you soon enough. Triple X. True to his previous thought, Naruto was indeed chewed out once he got Yuki to the front gate. Mostly by Sakura, who only refrained from trying to hit him due to him outranking her and the fact that she still had never forgotten him dropping her with one punch all those years ago. Sandeu almost fainted at seeing the actress out cold. Once the princess was set inside of the carriage intended to transport her, still unconscious, the ninja got everyone moving to the coast, hopefully able to make it there by the end of the day. The group moved surprisingly fast and got to the ship intended to transport them by sunset where Naruto proceeded to drop the woman he was intended to protect in her cabin on the bed. Naruto shook his head as he looked her over. She was very beautiful, that much was for certain, but her attitude needed a serious adjustment. He was about to leave her until something caught his eye around her neck. He got closer and almost backed away in surprise, no way. 
the last time I saw that was ten years ago. He looked at the woman that was out cold and tried to dredge her face up from memory, it is her. Holy shit. Flashback, ten years ago, Yuki no Kuni, Naruto, age five. Naruto was sent on a simple mission of reconnaissance to Yuki no Kuni, Land of Snow, by Danzo as his first assignment in order to get his feet wet in the kind of work he was to do. This was intended to supply Danzo with information on what was to go on in the country. The old master of espionage was well informed that there was underlying turmoil being stirred up in the court of the daimyo even though the man himself was unaware, and Naruto was to bring back info determining whether or not Danzo should send any of his root ninja under the radar to push things along for one side or the other to keep the status quo among the nations. This seemingly easy mission however would be the first sign of a pattern of Naruto's propensity for drawing missions that undoubtedly would go sour as soon as he began. Shortly after arriving in the capital city of the country and beginning to record his findings a ruckus broke out at the daimyo's castle. An entire attacking force made of amassed mercenaries and ninja from a new, small village, Yukigakur, took on the outmatched royal guards of the daimyo. Staying hidden in the shadows the entire time he forsook taking his notes and made it a priority to get the hell out of Dodge before he was caught in the crossfire. It wasn't his fight and he had no reason to stay there any longer. As he made his way out of the city under siege he saw one of the most famous men his village had ever produced. Gravity-defying hair, face mask covering his nose and lower face, and hideate covering. Nothing. His single Sharangan I was out and looking behind him as he drove a sled out of the area with a small girl, four years older than Naruto, away from pursuing forces also on sleds. Either get discovered or allow Kakashi Hatake and the girl he was protecting to be caught and may be killed by the people after him. Kakashi was too valuable to allow to die, and having Konoha fail a mission like this no matter the circumstances would undoubtedly have negative economic repercussions for years to come. Naruto pulled a plain white mask over his face and jumped out into the open between the retreating Kakashi and the pursuit force. Facing down the enemy of the copy ninja, Naruto made a quick set of hand seals and linked his fists together before pushing them out, Fuuten, Fuujin Seiken, Wind Release, Divine Fist of the Wind God. Naruto shot off a full power burst of wind from his knuckles, not worried about missing, knowing that they didn't even see him standing in the way, fully focused on Kakashi. The shimmering wind attack hit them all with the blunt force of a brick wall, and at the speed they were moving on sled it might as well have been one, as the concussive force killed everyone it hit on impact. It missed one however as he jumped off of the sleds and over the attack, letting his fellow warriors perish from Naruto's jutsu to cover his next move. He rapidly descended and attempted to crush the young root under his heel. Naruto rolled aside and slid to a stop on the surface of the ice. Naruto patiently looked the man over. He had a forehead protector similar to the Naidaim Hokage only with the insignia of Yukigakur, a grey high ponytail, an odd set of armor and an arrogant look on his face. He laughed at the diminutive ninja facing off with him, this is what they send to protect the princess? A baby ninja and copy ninja Kakashi? He stopped laughing and sneered at Naruto, you allowed Kakashi and Princess Koyuki to escape. Dodo-sama will at the very least reward me when I return with your head. Naruto had used a lot of his chakra hoping that he would blow away the entire contingent with that one attack that he got them off guard with, seeing one had survived didn't really bode well for him, especially since he looked to be a top-flight adversary. He slowly drew the small tipless tanto he was provided early in his career for combat before wordlessly rushing his enemy. The man quickly drew his own kunai to clash against Naruto with when he slashed at him, you're just a little brat playing ninja. Get that useless toy out of my face. Naruto felt himself being pushed back. Even if he wasn't physically inferior to his opponent, he was still only 5 years old. The pure size that the man had over his own was too much of a decisive factor. He learned this the hard way when the man simply held him off with one hand, grabbed his collar and slung him across the landscape. Naruto's body hitting the solid ground with a thud and sliding to a steady stop. Naruto stood up and lifted his tanto to swiftly block a kunai intended for his chest only to see his enemy close in. Naruto rolled under the man's lunge and took his legs out from under him with a sudden move. Naruto tried to scramble to his feet only to take a kick to the face from the man that knocked his mask off as he himself picked himself up. Naruto shook the cobwebs of the kick off and saw the Yuki ninja attempt to stab at him with a kunai. Naruto diverted the stab with the tanto, but a grown man being blocked completely by a five-year-old boy with a little over one complete year of training, the best training feasibly possible yes and far from being a normal little boy, but still only one year of it and still a little boy, was an impossibility. Naruto still wound up stabbed in the side with the kunai, watching the man smirk as he let out a pained gasp as blood began to flow onto the ground. 
He weakly elbowed the man off of him, freeing the kunai and spilling even more blood onto the ground, as he weakly held his tanto up despite the blood loss. You ignorant runt. The man taunted, did you really think you could kill Nadair Roga? I'm the finest ninja Yukigakur has to offer. Naruto finally spoke, as he could feel blood welling up inside of his mouth, if you're the best that your village has then you're lucky I fought you instead of Hatake. I'm only five. He could see that his comment rose the ire of Nat Air and that wasn't going to do him any favors while he was wounded, I can't die now. Not on my first mission. I promised Donzo Gigi I would be the best ninja there ever was. The best don't die like this. Do you want to live boy? What? You heard me. Do you want to live? There was no one else around, but then he remembered what Donzo had told him shortly after his training began. The fox that had attacked the village the day he was born was entrusted to him when the Yondame sealed it inside of him. Donzo said he could use it as a weapon, but he had never felt anything. Until now, can you give me enough power to survive this? The laughter of the demon echoed throughout Naruto's mind and Nadair circled him like a predator, give you such a minuscule amount of power just to survive? Why not enough to eradicate this pathetic human in one blow? Very well, you asked, you shall receive. Just stay alive. Naruto immediately felt his entire body re-energized. The wound on his side faded from a biting pain, to a dull throb, to nothing at all in just seconds. Nadair saw this all as an orange aura began to generate off of his body and proceeded to move in to attack before anything else could be done. Naruto slammed his tanto against Nadair's kunai, only this time he held fast. His heart was pumping a mile a minute as he held the larger figure back. He freed one hand, noticing how his nails had sharpened and swiped at the man's exposed face. Causing him to recoil in pain and let Naruto slam his fist into his face, sending him flying backwards. Naruto didn't stick around to survey his damage dealt as he took off, in order to leave the country in the midst of its insurgents. And flashback. Ah, good times. Naruto heard the QB say inside of his head. Naruto had wandered out onto the deck and sat out there as night fell and everything went still on the ship. What's going on around here? He wondered to himself, and to the QB as it was the only soundboard for any input and ideas, I can see why she doesn't want to go back to Yuki no Kuni after everything that went down that forced her away, but still. He shut his eyes in thought, it's just for the movie. Once the movie's done she can leave. As long as no one recognizes her then she'll be fine. Who'll be fine? Naruto turned and saw Tenten walking up to him, you've been out here for a while. Naruto sighed, May don't worry about it. By the way, in case anything goes down you're second in command. Tenten blinked before narrowing her eyes, this isn't a way for you to get on my good side is it? Is it working? Naruto quipped before getting serious, no, it has to be you because you have more experience than Sakura and while Sai has way more experience than you he's not one for leading squads if you get my drift. He looked around, where are Sakura and Sai anyway? Tenten pointed behind her, below deck. Me and Sakura were talking for a while with the rest of the film crew and all of that. Sai went off on his own, writing stuff in a notebook. He's kind of odd isn't he? Naruto laughed slightly, everybody's got quirks. At least he isn't ranting about youth or fate. Tenten nodded and stared out at the sea along with Naruto for a while before speaking, so you said we were going to talk later. Well it's later now isn't it? It is. He still wanted to wait until the mission was over, but Tenten was a very stubborn girl. The kind he tended to attract, Kami how did he not see this coming? Naruto rubbed his jaw and spoke, okay then. You wanna talk? Let's talk. Go ahead and fire away Tenten-chan and I'll tell you what I can. Tenten looked at him intently, you had sex with that Tuya girl next door to you? Naruto nodded, yeah. She wanted it, I didn't back down. Why would I have? I'm 15 and it was sex. With Tuya. Who is really really hot once you get past the attitude and the swearing. And I would do it again too, I care about her a lot. Tenten frowned, and Hamako, your assistant? Helper? What is she? Naruto shrugged, I don't know. Assistant sounds good. Although it could double as girlfriend now though if she has anything to say about it. Tenten raised an eyebrow at him, you did her too? Shaking his head rapidly, Naruto disputed her claim, no I haven't. Not yet anyway I should say. I care about her a lot too. She's the only link to my family and clan that I have and I'm the same to her. I would never leave Hamako-chan alone. Not after what she told me. Naruto locked eyes with Tenten, she told me she loved me. Not like a brother, 
Not like a benefactor, legit loved me. He noticed Ten Ten looked down in defeat, and she isn't the only one. Ten Ten let out a sigh, so you finally got it did you? Naruto nodded, yeah. Tamari Chan does too, so does Yugi Chan, so do you. Wait. Ten Ten's head snapped back up, other girls like you too? Naruto could only scratch his head in confusion, it's just as weird to me as it is to you. Yugi Chan is from Kumo though. I swear I'm seriously not trying to do all of this stuff, it just happens when I go places. I don't want to hurt you or any of these women, how can I pick? Ten Ten stared at him before a smile crossed her face, so the only one you have is Hamako for sure right? Since she's bonded to your clan no matter what? Naruto nodded, Ten Ten then moved in and kissed him on the cheek, well then I better get myself in gear and put my name in for consideration shouldn't I? Naruto stared at her vacantly, what? Ten Ten giggled, you just said that you don't really have a girlfriend, that you and Tuya only had sex for the fun of it. You're still on the market as far as I'm concerned, and I'm not letting this drop. You will be mine Naruto-kun, count on it. With that, Ten Ten confidently stood up and walked back inside making a show of waving her backside as she vanished, leaving Naruto by himself outside. Naruto stood staring at where Ten Ten had just been walking for upwards of two minutes before talking, wait a minute. What the hell just happened? The QB was laughing maniacally in Naruto's head, for such a powerful human you sure are whipped by the females in your life boy. Naruto growled audibly at the QB's taunts before he stopped and thought, hey did you just actually vocally admit I'm one of the most powerful people in the world? QB stopped laughing abruptly, no I. You. I mean. Sai shut up kid. Naruto grinned and looked back out at the ocean, aw, QB I love you too you big furball of amassed violence and hatred. I really can't wait to eat you. The powerful entity growled inside of his container. Triple X. The next day. The next day had the team on basic guard duty while the film crew shot the scenes that they were able to on the ship. Having never seen one of her movies before, Naruto had to admit that Yuki really was a fantastic actor. Now if only that translated over into her having a great personality there would be something there. Honestly he was more surprised that she wasn't visibly hung over from all the drinking she had done yesterday. She's like a completely different person once the cameras turn on. Sakura commented from nearby, getting a nod out of Naruto. That's Yuki. The director commented, once it's time to play that character there's no one like her in the world. She was born to do this role. Naruto turned towards the area away from the chute to see Sai, leaning on the railing of the ship with his notebook out, how are you holding up Sai? Sai turned his attention to Naruto, just fine Naruto-senpai, though I am learning much about interaction between others from you. For instance. Naruto cut him off before he could say a word. Ten-ten raising an amused eyebrow as she heard what Sai was saying, Sai Kouhai I have not handled a single personal relationship the right way since this mission has started. At all. Everything I did yesterday, absolutely everything. It would be better for you if you just forgot that it ever happened. How long have you been taking notes? Sai flipped back in his book to the indicated point, since the point in time where you drank with Fujike's sand to diffuse her temper in order to ease the difficulty to have your way with her. Allowing her to drop her guard and let you get close. He stared at Naruto expressionlessly, blinking at regular intervals. Naruto deadpanned a look at Sai, opening his mouth before thinking on it and trying to speak again. Okay that actually works depending on exactly what kind of personal relations you're aiming for. However that is a whole nother conversation I don't feel like having here in the open. Naruto turned to the others only to see Ten Ten smirking and Sakura shaking her head with a dry look on her face, Oi, quit gawking. You ain't being paid to look at me. And Sakura, do you really think you can do a better job teaching Sai about relationships? Sakura had a smile come onto her face from the banter, better than you I'm sure. Really? Naruto said, getting into the spirit, well let's backtrack shall we? In the academy you basically threw your best friend away for a guy that showed no interest at the age of 10. 10. You just now got around to fixing that not too long ago, and that's probably because the guy had issues and left the village, thus taking away the point of your conflict. And don't even get me started on Sasuke team himself because that's about 2 hours of griping right there. You try to fuck anything with legs and a uterus. Sakura shot back, I thought you weren't a pervert? she said tauntingly. Naruto frowned, okay, I'm somewhat a pervert, but in my defense I never had a chance. Look who all of my most prominent sensei were, Kakashi Hitake and Jiraiya of the Sanin. One reads porn everywhere he goes, blatantly and brazenly. The other writes said porn among other unscrupulous activities. 
I'm well balanced by comparison, which is weird because the way I live and as strong as I am you would think that I would have some extreme quirk at some point right. He then stopped and snapped back, hey, I don't try to fuck anything with legs and a uterus, I've only ever done it once. He sniffed haughtily, and I haven't tried to fuck you yet have I? Yes you have, she said dryly, I count all of the stuff you did when we were first Janan as you trying to fuck me. Naruto gave her a perplexed look, you thought I was trying to fuck you back then? I barely understood what that implied until right after the tuning exams. I just wanted to date you. I was simple like that, I figured that was the pinnacle of what I was going to get out of you. What made you think all I wanted was to fuck you? He looked her over, though now I might be considering it. You filled out quite a bit Sakura. Sakura gaped at Naruto before growling with a flustered face, Naruto. Naruto shook his finger at her chidingly, ah, ah. Superior officer standing here. I'm not one to abuse my power, but in this case I'm more than willing to as long as you don't hit me. Hey. We've got a scene going here. The director snapped at Naruto and Sakura. Sorry. Both of them said before Sakura went to silently fuming at Naruto. Tenten noticed Sai writing dutifully in his notebook and looked over to see what he was doing, what are you writing in there? Sai simply read back what he had been writing, friends tease and provoke one another by bringing up negative character traits that distinguish them as well as bring up examples from the past that serve little other purpose than points of humor. Also friends of opposite sex tease one another with innuendo-laden remarks and suggestions, such as what Naruto Senpai did with Ugly over there. Tenten sweat dropped, yeah. I wouldn't try that with anyone if I were you. People don't like being called derogatory names like ugly. That's no way to make friends. Sai simply looked at the bun-haired girl, well I understand that nicknames are a way to endear yourself to the people around you. If that is the case and going along with all of the other things I've learned thus far I think have a name for Naruto-senpai. You do? Tenten asked. This Sai guy was totally weird. Did he really not know anything about other people, what is it then? Tenten moved her ear closer to Sai so that he could whisper the name to her. Ten Ten choked back a laugh and patted Sai on the back, I would keep that to myself at least until we're done with the mission. It might disrupt things if you start calling him that. Sai gave her one of his smiles, okay bun girl. Bun girl? Ten Ten asked herself before remembering her hairstyle, well he might not be totally clueless at the name giving thing. Triple X. The crew in the ninja protection detail disembarked from the ship on the site of a massive glacier. As the crew took to setting up the lights and sets for the shots the director ran around manically, yes. This is absolutely perfect for the fight scene I have written out. Who says that going on location to shoot is dead? As the fight scene began being filmed, an explosion rocked the glacier, causing a slab to crack from the top of it towards the crew. Naruto narrowed his eyes and sprang into action, jumping in front of everyone and making his hand seals before linking his fists together and thrusting them out, Fuuten, Fuujin Seiken, Wind Release. Divine Fist of the Wind God. Naruto viciously smashed the chunks of ice to harmless powder with the force his jutsu hit the debris with. Get into standard defense formation. Naruto knew his allies were astute and learned enough to know the simple formation and was not disappointed when they immediately backed him up. It's just like last time. Yuki began to panic as the chaos started building, I should never have come back here again. She began to run off in no particular direction, getting a growl out of Naruto for making his particular job that much more difficult. Sakura. Naruto barked, go get Yuki and get her back to the ship. Keep watch over her until this is all over. Sakura nodded and went after her to fulfill Naruto's order. As Sakura drew near Yuki, a large man on a snowboard quickly bared down on both women. Tenten saw this and broke formation to cut him off. She quickly brought out a scroll and produced a large metal sphere spiked with kunai welded into it that she threw into the man's path before it suddenly exploded. Showing a great amount of navigational skill on his board, the man dodged all of the shrapnel and debris from Tenten's ball. Well I remember that jutsu. Naruto's eyes turned red and slitted for a moment as his memory dredged up recollection of who the voice belonged to, I remember that face too. Suddenly appearing in front of Naruto and Sai was the Yuki Nin from Naruto's last escapade in Yuki no Kuni. It's good to see you again boy. From the looks of your face the years haven't treated you too kindly have they? Naruto scoffed, look who's talking. Although I guess you wouldn't mention the little gift I left you the first time we met would you? Naruto was referring to a small vertical scar right under the man's right eye. The glare he got for that remark settled him down enough to get Sai in order, Sai Kouhai go back up Tenten-chan. This is their squad leader. 
Sai nodded and rushed off to take on Ten Ten's adversary alongside her. Now Nadair, Naruto said as he set himself in a fighting stance, let's get to round two shall we? I have a habit of paying back all of the few bastards that left scars on me when I was kid. Lucky you, you were the first one that did, and you're also the last one left alive. Not for long though. Nadair put his hand out expectantly, just hand over the princess punk, you couldn't beat me then, you can't beat me now. Princess? Naruto feigned ignorance, but the only princess here is an actress that plays a princess in movies. You might be able to get an autograph though but I doubt it, she's kind of a bitch. Nadair narrowed his eyes, you were there, you can't tell me you don't recognize Yuki as Princess Koyuki. He let out a short laugh, still a brat that doesn't know any better. Nadair taunted, Yukigakur has made some improvements over the last 10 years that you couldn't imagine. You won't get a lucky shot in on me again the way you did last time. Funny, Naruto said as his face turned stone serious, that was going to be my line. With that, Naruto lowered his center of gravity and rushed at Nadair who immediately jumped back out of his hand-to-hand range. Triple X. With Sai. Sai swiftly made his way over to Tenten, however before he could get to her he found himself trapped once a pillar of ice encased his body, freezing him solid. A woman in a grey winter hat with two pink pigtails sticking out the side appeared with a smirk on her face, Hayoru no Jutsu, Ice Prison Jutsu. Sai's body suddenly turned to ink within the pillar. The woman then found herself forced to dodge a swing of Sai's tanto as he appeared behind her. As she got away from Sai's surprise attack she sneered at him, you're rather talented to avoid that in the blink of an eye like that. Sai said nothing and pulled his scroll from his back. The Yuki Kunoichi made a tiger seal as a burst of ice flew up around her and took the form of miniature swallows, Hayotan, Subame Fubuki, ice release, swallow snowstorm. The sharp winged projectile scattered about before focusing in a straight line at Sai. Sai drew out his brush and special scroll, Kuju Giga, Super Beast's imitation picture. Sai quickly drew a gigantic leech, three times Sai's size that covered his body, taking the brunt of the attack from the enemy jutsu as it riddled the leech's body. It eventually turned to ink and dripped to the ground, revealing Sai had vanished again. The woman licked her lips, cute and somewhat talented. Triple X. With Ten Ten. Ten Ten threw a salvo of kunai and shuriken at the large man but instead of impaling him on contact they simply bounced off of his body. The man barreled on through her attack on his snowboard and slammed his body into her, sending her sprawling through the snow. The man laughed as Ten Ten stood up, glaring at him, your little projectiles won't get anywhere near me as long as I have my chakra armor on and active. Chakra armor, Ten Ten said distastefully, what a useless shortcut. The large man simply laughed at her, say that when I'm alive and you're dead. He placed his right arm out at Ten Ten and seemingly fired it out at her when she realized that it was a weapon. She dodged the hand that flew past her and grabbed into the ground, but when she turned back towards her opponent he was coming right for her, being pulled in by a cable attached to the hand behind her. Ten Ten quickly summoned a katana to avoid being smashed into fully by the man's metal snowboard. It did still make impact with her and sent her sliding through the snow once more. Ten Ten rolled through to her feet this time, getting angry at this person. He wasn't even really that good, but he was troublesome to try and fight with her style. He could ignore her projectiles for the most part and just run right through to attack her. This guy was seriously getting under her skin with the way he was just snowboarding all over the place. He wasn't even moving that fast. The markswoman in her just wanted to fill his slow ass with projectiles and be done with it, but that damn armor was in the way. She was about to seriously test that crap out and see who had the better tools. Triple X. With Naruto. Naruto was sick of Nadair playing keep away with him, getting him to finally back off, here's a throwback for you, Fuuten, Fuujin Seiken, Wind Release, Divine Fist of the Wind God. Naruto fired off one of his oldest and most favored ninjutsu at Nadair who simply allowed it to hit him flush before it simply dispersed in front of an odd-colored shield of light, what? Nadair smirked, like I said, Yukigakur has made improvements that you couldn't even imagine boy. Our chakra armor is the pinnacle of shinobi technological research. Hearing this didn't phase Naruto at all, then I'll just have to break it won't I? If you think you can, go ahead and try it. Nadair began making a set of hand seals, Hayotan, Haryu Umoko, Ice Release, Tearing Dragon Fierce Tiger. From the ice surrounding the field of battle a massive dragon-bodied tiger formed and went at Naruto. Naruto moved and the jutsu crashed harshly into the glacier quaking the surface and cracking it from the collision. He still wasn't safe however, 
as the tiger penetrated the surface and continued its pursuit, it came so close to his body the temperature dropped immediately. If it had hit him it would have flash frozen him. While the respective battles were raging on, the director was screaming at his crew to get all of this on film, saying it was better than any script. Dodging this tiger was beginning to utterly piss Naruto off. He turned towards Nadair and saw him holding his hands in his last seal. Grinning widely at what he saw as a sitting duck, Naruto began rushing straight towards Nadair, choosing to completely ignore the tiger altogether. Nadair saw Naruto coming and pumped more chakra into the jutsu, speeding up the tiger, adding more mass to it, and putting more force behind it. It crashed right into the ground behind Naruto's feet dredging up a cloud of powder snow and ice chunks. Nadair smirked as he felt the glacier begin to collapse from his jutsu, there was no way the kid walked away from that. His party was short-lived however when the blonde figure of his hatred flew out of the cloud of snow and delivered a jaw-shattering punch that sent Nadair's body flying before smacking roughly against a wall of ice. Naruto goaded Nadair from a distance as the glacier started to split, I thought you said I wasn't going to sucker punch you again? He could feel the place coming down around them, getting him to glare at Nadair who had picked himself up, rubbing his red jaw, you're lucky. Naruto started making his way back to the ship, yelling around for his partners, Sai Ko Hai, Ten Ten Chan. This place is going down, we need to get out of here. Ten Ten looked back at a retreating Naruto and narrowed her eyes at her opponent, you'd better hope we don't see you again. The man grinned at her untastefully as Nadair called out to his own squad to fall back, Mizore, Fubuki. With me. The woman, Fubuki ceased her battle with Sai and winked at the boy before making her way to her leader, I'll see you later cutie. Sai simply blinked and stared emotionlessly before moving to get back to the ship with the rest of his team. Naruto, Tenten, and Sai reconvened on board where they watched the glacier quickly break apart into small chunks and sink. Naruto sighed and slumped against the siding, too many X-factors or else I would have torn that asshole apart. He looked at himself and noticed the back of his arms, legs, and torso had a layer of ice on it, that last jutsu must have been closer than I thought. Tenten frowned, you're not the only one. That stupid giant with the armor. I was about to put him under. The glacier was unstable. Sai commented. Naruto nodded, that was the only thing keeping me from tearing Nadair to pieces. Using anything high level enough to maybe get through his armor would have done just as much damage as the idiot's last attack if not more. It would have definitely taken the glacier out if I had used it. Naruto shrugged, oh well, he wasn't worth it anyway. Sakura came running up to her team, are you guys alright? Naruto blinked before looking at his fingertips and toes, can you cure frostbite Sakura? Omake, lost missions too. During the border patrol mission, one year prior. Naruto and Tenten were seated in the lookout tower of the border outpost their group of them, Neji, Rock Lee, and Shikamaru were stationed at for the month along with 20 other ninja that were out and about or scattered along the base. Naruto was seated all the way across the space from Tenten, holding up a kunai by the blade and waving it around right as a second kunai from across the way hit Naruto's kunai right through the ring. Naruto looked and whistled at the accuracy of the throw, damn Tenten-chan, if I wasn't so sure that you wouldn't spike me with that damn thing I might have been weary of letting you do this. That makes you 22 for 22, point well proven, you own me in accuracy. Tenten stood up and proudly walked over to Naruto to retrieve her kunai, I wasn't blowing smoke when I said I would Naruto-kun. Naruto nodded before snorting and looking away, I still dominate you with a sword though. Tenten got a tick mark on her head, much to Naruto's amusement, hit a sore spot there did I now? Says the guy that lost his own sword in the middle of a fight once, Tenten said as she pulled out a scroll and quickly summoned a katana. Naruto raised an eyebrow, you aren't seriously going to. He was cut off when he had to draw his own ninjato to keep from being split vertically by the bun-haired kunoichi. Naruto blocked and began to push back as he kept sitting in his chair, I don't think we should be doing this right now. We're going to get busted for this. Tenten smiled as she continued to push against Naruto's sword, Shikamaru is with Neji, he won't be very motivated to finish his rounds quickly and Neji won't be able to make him go any faster. Lee is on his own, so once he finishes his rounds he'll probably head out to do more for some reason. Good points. Naruto mentioned as he continued to defend. He sat back and placed the bottom of his foot on the back of his sword before kicking it, generating enough force to throw Tenten off of him. Tenten stumbled back as Naruto fell backwards out of the chair and ran back towards him to keep fighting. Naruto quickly stood up and kicked the chair at Tenten, hitting her in the legs and getting her to trip up right into Naruto's grasp, who disarmed her and performed an over-the-shoulder toss that took the air out of her, 
letting him put his body weight on top of her as he held his sword to her throat, but I can think of way better things we can do with this free time than fighting. He stared at Ten Ten who began to fluster under such an intense gaze, ha, huh, you have really pretty eyes Ten Ten Chan. Ten Ten blushed at being complimented so intently by a boy that was right on top of her, ah, uh, why you too Naruto-kun? Naruto grinned and got up off of Ten Ten, helping the girl to her feet as he set his sword over his shoulder, thanks. I don't really hear too many compliments you know. We can spar this evening when it's our group's turn to take a break. Ten Ten remained anxious around Naruto, that sounds good. What the hell is wrong with me? She tried to look anywhere but at Naruto when her eyes rested on his sword, wait, that's new. You have a new sword? Naruto looked at the blade over his shoulder before holding it out for her to see, oh yeah. This is the Seninki no Ken, it's an old heirloom of my clan. It's a long story. However Ten Ten wasn't concerned about that at the moment. Naruto had to pull the weapon back before, oi. You can't touch it. A sparkly-eyed Ten Ten pulled her hand back empty without Naruto's sword in hand, Mo, why not Naruto-kun? What wrong with me touching it? She said with a pouty face. Naruto looked at her face, wow, that's a really cute look. He cleared that thought, you can look but you can't touch, it's my most personal piece of hardware. It's basically in my genetics. Ten Ten moved closer to him, prompting Naruto to hold the sword over head out of her reach while he kept his hand on her head to keep her from jumping up, come on Naruto-kun, something like that is meant for others to enjoy. Naruto let out a laugh, yeah, it's really enjoyable when I shove this thing into someone. You should see when I pull it out too. Naruto shook his head, you couldn't handle this thing Ten Ten Chan. Ten Ten's face furrowed in anger, taking that as an insult, I'll have you know that women like me were born to handle things like this. You're right, some are. Too bad for you, you're not one of them. He was referencing the fact that it was an Uzumaki heirloom. Naruto gave her a challenging look, I'll believe it when I see it. Fine, Ten Ten said with a grin, you'll see right now. With that she tackled Naruto to the ground and started trying to wrestle his sword away from him. Triple X. Outside of the lookout room on the stairwell, two Konoha shinobi were frozen in place at the door to the room with their ears to the door and blood trailing down their noses. They had been standing there ever since Naruto had said, Dash, it's a long story. Ten Ten grunted loudly from inside, Give it to me Naruto-kun. I thought you could take it? Naruto taunted right after she spoke, crashes and bumps sounding out all throughout, call me Naruto-sama and I might lighten up. Do your worst, Ten Ten said, you won't break me. She grunted in effort before cursing loudly, damn it why are you so big? That was all the poor eavesdroppers could take as they blacked out and fell halfway down the flight of stairs. Omake, Cage Bunshine Chronicles 3. Naruto stared across a desk with half-lidded eyes that were steadily shutting quickly. He caught himself and snapped his eyes wide open with a hard slap to his own face, give it up Tsunade Bakken, I'm better than you. It's that simple. Tsunade gave Naruto a look much like the one she was giving him, you're a few decades too soon to be trying to outdrink me brat, Tsunade snapped her fingers, Shizun, fill us up again. Shizun stood off to the side with a container of sake and a sweat drop on her head, Tsunade-sama I don't think a drinking contest with an underage subordinate is such a good idea. And Naruto-kun you shouldn't be getting drunk like this, it's not good for you. She had been sitting there watching her master and her surrogate little brother throw back drinks for the better part of two and a half hours. What had started as allowing Tsunade a reward for finishing her work so efficiently degenerated into a competition once Naruto had randomly ambled into the office. After heading home and returning with a ridiculous amount of alcohol for any 15-year-old to have you began to engage Tsunade in a game of the drink. Naruto slapped his hand on the table hard, Oi, I'm not as think as you drunk I am. Now you heard Ba Chan Shizun Nichen, fill it up again. He finished loudly, holding his saucer out for her to fill. Eager to get put under the table brat? Tsunade wisecracked as Shizun topped them both off, I outdrink Jiraiya on a regular basis, what makes you think that you can put me down? Naruto didn't answer he simply smashed his fist on the desk and grabbed his drink before tossing it back down his throat in one go, followed by Tsunade doing the same. Both of them held the saucers up with both of their heads tilted back before Tsunade fell backwards out of her seat onto the ground, snoring with a content look on her face. Naruto lowered his head and saucer, swaying in place for a moment before shakily standing up and walking over to Tsunade, nudging the unresponsive Hokage with his foot, I think I can put you down because I'm not really Naruto. With that, Naruto fell backwards and disappeared in a puff of smoke once he hit the ground. 
Shizun was visibly gaping at what she had just seen. She rubbed her temple and sat down where Naruto had been sitting before pouring herself some sake of her own, I need a drink. Triple X. Naruto was seated out on the deck of the ship by himself just looking out at the ocean when a memory hit him, damn it. He scowled, my cage bunshine and Sonate Bakken drank all my sake. He held his head and growled, and I get the hangover effect? Fucking stupid clones. He stood up and headed inside, Sakura. Can you do Shizun Nichin's hangover cure? Chapter 36, Self-Esteem. As Sandeyu was fretting over Yuki, now definitely ousted as Koyuki Kazaana, and the director was inside alongside his assistant drooling over the action scenes he had shot due to the battle that had just taken place, Sakura was busy trying to get feeling back into Naruto's fingers. The last jutsu that Nader used against him didn't hit, but the sheer cold it produced from simply being in its vicinity was enough to give him frostbite. Lucky for him he had a medic nin on his squad or else he might have been out of luck when it came to his fingers and toes, especially since they were in Yuki no Kuni and it wasn't going to suddenly get all warm and pleasant outside in this country. Hey Sakura, Naruto said as they sat inside of the main trailer of the expedition through Yuki no Kuni with all of the others. He got a HMM in response letting him know she was listening as she used Shousen Jutsu, Mystical Palm Jutsu, I know a better way to get my hands warm. It doesn't cost chakra either. Sakura's head turned up from her work on his fingers, what? Naruto looked away innocently, you could just let me put my hands under your shirt. You know, body heat. Sakura gave him an even look with a tick mark on her head, you're a pervert. Naruto placed his fingers slightly apart and mouthed out a little bit. Sakura's brow twitched as a dark smirk came to her face, Tsunade Shisho taught me how to deal with perverts like you. Please. Naruto rolled his eyes, just because Urosenin trained me up a bit doesn't mean that I took on his habit of standing still when an askicking was about to come his way. Sakura gave him a sickeningly sweet smile, maybe, but you are currently sitting here with your hands in my grip. Naruto's face paled as he tried pulling them free only to find them stuck fast, so watch yourself from now on, okay Taiku? Naruto gave her a stiff nod, you got it Sakura. Good. Sakura chirped as she tugged on his cheek. Naruto sighed in relief when she stood up and walked away from him. Okay, do not do that stuff with Sakura, she does not find it cute in any way. He started flexing his fingers out, Sakura did really good work, why did the idea of her pummeling me actually turn me on though? Kami, there's something wrong with me. Uro Kyofu's roots run deeper than I thought. Naruto's thoughts were cut short when Sai and Tenten entered the room and sat down at the table. Naruto, Getting in the spirit of the predicament as team leader put his proverbial game face on, what do you guys have for me? Sai immediately responded, we didn't find them Naruto senpai. The glacier sank not long after the ship got out of sight. They weren't there anymore. Ten Ten took a seat at the table, who were those guys anyway? Naruto answered her, ninja from the hidden village of Yukigakur. And they're here for Yuki. Or should I say Princess Koyuki. And you knew this the whole time didn't you Sandeyu? Sandeyu's eyes widened, how did you possibly know Naruto-san? You couldn't possibly know anything about our country and what has transpired over the years, you're too young. Naruto crossed his arms and leaned back in his chair, it's a story that you don't want to hear right now, but that's not important right now. You had to know that this was totally dangerous bringing her back here at all, identity change or not. Sandeyu sighed, you're right, but it was the only way I could think of to get the princess back to Yuki no Kuni, he said despondently. Sakura looked over to Koyuki who was in the corner of the room with a cold look on her face, so Yuki Fujikase is a real-life princess of an entire country? And Sandeu is from Yuki no Kuni as well? Yes. The middle-aged man admitted, when she was just a little girl I was her aide. Before the revolt. I don't blame her for not remembering who I was. It was far too long ago and there were far more important things about than me. He adjusted his glasses, I served the princess's father, the former daimyo of the country Saosetsu Kazaana. We were a peaceful nation. Saosetsu Sama adored his daughter and was beloved by our people, but then the lord's younger brother Dodo staged a revolt. The palace was burned to the ground and I feared the princess had perished with her father in the palace. He then looked over at Naruto, but how do you know anything about our princess? Konoha had nothing to do with our nation except for the one man that was there for negotiations on the day of the revolt. Naruto's eyes darted to Sai who let out a near unnoticeable nod, fine, Naruto said, I was there too. That got a round of gasps from everyone in the room except Sai. Even Koyuki, surprise showed on her face at hearing that her bodyguard had seen her already. Sandeu almost had a heart attack, why you were there? 
but that was 10 years ago, you couldn't have been any older than 5 years old. Yep, Naruto said as if it didn't matter, I was 5. Oh don't give me that look, Kakashi sensei was a chunin at 6, is it really so hard to believe that I was training at 5? Kind of, yeah, Sakura said matter of factly, what the hell were you doing in this country back then? What kind of training does a 5 year old do in a foreign country and who the hell sent you out here when you were 5? She and Tenten were both interested in this. It had been years since Naruto had gotten exponentially powerful, but for Sakura especially, after seeing the goofy blonde she had become accustomed to as a child in the academy it was hard to grasp that he did anything like that before showing up in school. Naruto had a blank look on his face that could give Sai a run for his money, I was gathering intel on Yuki no Kuni's situation to take back to my sensei to see if he needed to bring up a point to lend the country assistance. The coup happened when I was still here, there was nothing I could do. His face was somewhat apologetic, all I could do was make sure that Kakashi sensei, who was here, could get away with Koyuki. Who was your sensei? Tenten asked inquisitively. Don't worry about it. Naruto responded. Sai let on that he could talk, he didn't let on just how much he was allowed to say so he was going to keep Donzo's name out of it. They wouldn't flat out know who he was talking about even if he told them, and they sure didn't need to know. How did you help Kakashi sensei get away? Sakura tried her own hand at asking a question. That was apparently the right question to ask as Naruto was willing to answer it, the team leader that fought us this time, Nadair Roga. Back then I had to fight him long enough for Kakashi sensei to get away with the princess. If it weren't for my buddy on the inside he would have killed me. Sakura's breath hitched, you mean the? Naruto nodded, getting a shiver out of her. Even though Naruto was still Naruto it was hard to imagine such a thing trapped inside of his body. It was a good idea he wasn't in Konoha when Tsunade released that information. It took time for a lot of people to get used to that knowledge that didn't already know. The knowledge that Naruto contained the Kyubi no Yoko. Not your buddy Brad. The Kyubi growled from within him, hurt only by Naruto himself, I still fully intend to eat you once you overstep your bounds. Still looking forward to kicking your sarius all over the fake Konoha in my head too furball. Naruto focused back on the real world and his human companions, yeah, anyway we fought until I had bought enough time and I got away myself. I never learned what happened to Koyuki after that, it's interesting. I should have died back then. Everyone turned to face Koyuki who was looking away lifelessly. Sandeyu moved towards her, you shouldn't say such things princess, he exclaimed, everyone feared the worst for you. You can't imagine the panic that went up in your absence, we never stopped praying for your safety. Well you can stop praying now Sandeyu, Koyuki said, I'm alive as you can see, it's just my heart that's dead, she said solemnly, that day all those years ago any tears that I had left dried all up. Sandeyu had to wipe his own eyes hearing his princess speak in such a defeated manner, eventually I found the princess under her new identity and became her manager, and have since been biding my time for the day when I could escort her back to her country. The director's assistant spoke up, so you've been using us the entire time? I apologize for deceiving you, but it was for the sake of our people. Sandeyu turned to Koyuki and bowed on his hands and knees, Koyuki Haim please confront Dodo and take your rightful place as leader of our land. I will sacrifice myself without hesitation to protect you so I beg you, please take up arms and lead our people. I don't think so, Koyuki said indignantly, you've got to be kidding. But, but, Sandeyu stammered, what about your people? We need you Koyuki Haim. I could care less about them just forget it, you'll only get yourself killed in the end. She argued vehemently, would you give it up already? Don't be stupid, it doesn't matter what you do, you will never get rid of Dodo. Well, Naruto said, we're already here, and we're supposed to stay and protect her until the movie is done. So who feels like taking down a tyrant? Naruto asked his team. Tenten smirked and cracked her knuckles, you know it Naruto-kun, I wanted a second shot at that hulking loser from the glacier anyway. Sai simply stood in place, I'm to follow your lead Naruto-senpai. You've got my support. Sakura smiled, yeah, how could we just let things lie the way they are? Of course we'll fight. Are you all insane? Koyuki shouted at the band of Shinobi and Kunoichi, Dodo will massacre you all. You can't beat him. Naruto scoffed and rolled his eyes, lady, combat is what I'm good at, sucky odds are just an inconvenience. I'm the best and I specialize in the ridiculous, don't count any of us out. Everyone on my squad is ready for this. He stood up out of his chair, a little chakra armor isn't enough of an ace in the hole to beat us. Not by a long shot. He looked over at his people, can you guys get through it? Absolutely, 
Ten Ten said with full confidence, I was just about to when you called us back to the ship. Sai nodded his head, I'm certain I can find a way around it. Sakura smiled and punched her fist into her open palm, I'll turn it into scrap if I end up fighting one of them this time. The director started speaking quietly, as long as there hope, there is a dream. As long as there is a dream there is a future. This is perfect. What a perfect theme for the final chapter of the Princess Gale movie. Sakura looked at him with a sweat drop, are you seriously going to keep filming after everything that's happened? The director nodded with self-assurance, I told you all back at the glacier, the movie's simply evolving. I mean, just think about it, how often do you get to make a movie with real princess? This is the opportunity of a lifetime here. You're right. The director's assistant started liking the idea more and more as the realization set in, the buzz is going to be enormous. Even the making of will be a hit, we're sitting on a surefire blockbuster here. Hey, Koyuki shouted only to be cut off by Sai of all people. There's only one course of action available to us in the current situation. The usually quiet teen said firmly, now that Dodo has discovered your identity you will never be allowed reprieve. The only option is to fight to get through this. Naruto stated the changed status of the mission, so in addition to keeping the princess here in one piece we also need to finish off Dodo, otherwise this thing is never going to end. Koyuki got progressively angrier listening to everyone, stop joking. This isn't some movie, there's no such thing as a happy ending. The director shouted right back, his mood noticeably far better though, of course there is if you're willing to fight for it. Naruto called Sai in close, is there any way you can send one of your ink animals back to Konoha or are they not fast enough? Sai shook his head, no, by the time they would manage to get there everything here would be over with anyway. It would be pointless Naruto senpai. Naruto frowned but nodded, well it should still be just fine. Nadair is Dodo's heavy hitter and even he shouldn't be too much trouble once I get past that armor of his. You and the girls are more than enough for this. He then spoke up to Sandeu, well this is seriously stretching the limits of the contract, but I hate leaving business unfinished. You've got us for as long as this lasts. Sandeu spoke quietly with tears in his eyes, all of you, thank you so much. The director looked at the scene eagerly, oh yeah that settles it, we're definitely going along with this picture. And you can bet this one will have a happy ending. The assistant said. The entire time Koyuki was looking at everyone in the room with a sense of utter detachment. Triple X. For the next few hours as the caravan traveled, Naruto and his team came up with a plan of action for who would be fighting who in case Nadair's team decided to attack again. Per the requests of everyone else the dynamic didn't change too much. Everyone wanted the chance to finish their own battles from before, especially Tenten who saw the use of chakra armor as a cop-out way to fight, even for a ninja. The contingent came to a stop outside of a cave as directed by Sandeu, our hideout is not far from here. It is just beyond this cave. Once we've finished shooting here we will pass through to the other side. And then my people can rest easy with the fact that they have their princess back. He was visibly excited about having Koyuki back in the country. The director was completely agreeable with this, it would probably bring some good footage, all right then people, let's get this show on the road. Director there's a problem. The director's assistant shouted, Yuki has up and vanished again. Naruto palmed his face upon hearing that, stupid bitch. She's seriously testing me here. How do you protect someone that seems to have a death wish? A small black rat ran up Naruto's leg and into his hand before turning into words, and Sai is still awesome. With that, Naruto shunshined away from the caravan. Sakura looked around with her hands on her hips, where is Naruto? We need to find the princess. Tenten shrugged, he was just here not too long ago. Naruto senpai is handling the situation, Sai said, scaring both girls with his presence on top of one of the trailers. He was drawing absently in his notepad while speaking, he should be back shortly. Triple X. Koyuki was frantically running through a snowy forest away from her crew as fast as she could, there's no way. Absolutely not. I won't go back there. She was so intent on running she failed to notice herself slip in the snow and fall downhill until coming to a stop. She simply lay down there, unmoving with her eyes slowly drifting closed, you lied to me father. There is no spring in this country. After a short while she opened her eyes to the sound of footsteps only to find herself staring at a pair of shinobi sandals. Her vision turned upwards to see Naruto standing over her, you know I've done my fair share of both and I have to say, it feels better when you face down your problems instead of running away all of the time. Now let's go, everyone's waiting. 
Naruto picked her up piggyback and carried her back towards the others, this has turned into a fine clusterfuck hasn't it princess? He said in a conversational manner, maybe next time you should shoot your movies somewhere like in Tsuki no Kuni or Oni no Kuni. You never hear about this kind of stuff happening there. Why did you even bother coming after me? Koyuki said as she put up no resistance to being carried by Naruto, and how the hell do you even keep finding me? Naruto laughed to himself, because it's my job. Even if I didn't want to I would still do it, and I can find you because me and the people I'm working with are good, and I just so happen to be the best. Koyuki smiled slightly at that, modest aren't you? Naruto grinned, well if you don't believe in yourself then who else is going to? Her smile dropped back into her usual cold expression, well you can drag me back all you like. All I'm going to do is act in front of the camera, that's all, you got that? Whatever you say, Naruto said as they found themselves inside of a tunnel. Suddenly a train whistle sounded out behind them, what the hell? Triple X. Outside of the tunnel the ice melted to reveal train tracks. Sakura kneeled down to inspect them, there's chakra running through these rails. Sandeu's eyes bulged out, he's here. He started yelling around to everyone in the area, everyone hurry. You need to get out quickly, it's not safe. You can't let them find you. The man started running up a nearby slope. Wait Sandeu, Tenten -ten yelled, where are you going? Tenten -ten don't go after him, Sai said, we need to protect the princess and that means we have to wait for Naruto Senpai. Triple X. A light appeared behind Naruto and Koyuki. That, along with the whistle and the train tracks revealing themselves told her all she needed to know about what was happening, it's a train. A train? Naruto repeated in an irritated fashion. The entire tunnel began to shake with icicles falling down from overhead, of course it is. And why not? Naruto said before taking off at full speed before the thing quickly reached his heels, fuck. It already had a ton of momentum. It's no good, we'll be run over, Koyuki shouted as she held onto Naruto tightly. Well excuse me if I don't want to be put down by a train. I've had too much stuff try to kill me to let a giant hunk of metal be the thing that gets the job done. That would be embarrassing, Naruto bellowed right back. Koyuki shook her head desperately, it's impossible. Naruto grit his teeth trying to pull every ounce of speed he could out of his leg muscles, woman I live the impossible every damn day. Now let me run. Look, there's no way you can outrun that thing. Well I might be able to for sure if I drop a few pounds. Are you volunteering? No. Then shut the hell up and let me save your ass already. That ended the argument right there, come on QB, a little assistance wouldn't hurt here. The feeling of the malicious chakra circulating through his body came forward and drove him faster than he otherwise would have gone at top speed, we're getting out of here. They both finally breached into the light and Naruto immediately jumped to the side allowing the train to speed past them. Naruto stood up laughing at dodging the massive locomotive and helped Koyuki to her feet, who can't outrun a train. You need to get some faith. It's been a long time Koyuki. A voice belonging to an older man said. She looked up at the train as a gasp escaped her lips, Dodo. A man with brown hair trailing down to his shoulders wearing an ornate robe was standing on top of the train that had come to a stop, it's been ten years hasn't it? Don't be shy now dear, let me see that beautiful face of yours. Koyuki shirked under his gaze, bringing an evil grin to his face until Naruto moved in front of her with his hand on his sword, so this is the guy I'm supposed to kill? He doesn't look too tough at all. Before any more words could be said a massive log slid down a nearby slope and plowed into the side of the train. At the top of the hill stood Sandeu in samurai armor along with many others garbed in the same, do you see it men? Our beloved princess is here to watch over us. With her at our side victory will be ours. As the men all cheered out, Sandeu drew a sword from his hip, Dodo we have waited a long time for this day of reckoning to arrive Sandeu Asama and fifty loyal warriors stand before you to avenge our fallen leader Lord Saosetsu. On this day you breathe no more. Dodo looked at the men distastefully, I thought that you had destroyed the last of the insurgents. Nadair appeared at his side, bowing slightly, my apologies my lord, we will get rid of them immediately. No, no, Dodo said amusedly, with men such as these there is little that they can understand but total annihilation. With that and a battle cry, all of the men charged down the hill at Dodo's train. Dodo nodded and in response Nadair made a hand seal that opened up the train doors to reveal holes throughout that began to rapid-fire kunai at all of the men, mowing them down in cold blood. Naruto watched the scene in amazement at the quickly distributed carnage, they have something like this? As if just throwing the damn things weren't lethal enough. 
Naruto glared at Dodo who was laughing at the violence. Sandeyu was still standing with Kunai sticking out all over his body when Dodo signaled for another salvo to go out to finish him off. As the mass of metal weaponry was about to hit him, Ten Ten jumped in front of him and pulled out one of her scrolls that she used to summon a large iron dome around both of them. Sakura started punching and kicking at the ground at the top of the hill with her chakra enhanced strength technique to cause an avalanche that blocked the volley guns on the train. Ten Ten sealed her iron dome and threw kunai with explosive tags attached at the bridge in front of the train, destroying it and almost taking an escaping train with it, however the train car holding Dodo detached from the rest and got away quickly. Naruto Senpai, Sai said as he saw Naruto walking with Koyuki around the remnants of the massacre, what are we going to do now? The film crew was helping with the dead and wounded, and Sakura was doing what she could for Sandeyu, this is terrible, she said as she did her best to heal the man, what kind of monster is he? Koyuki looked around callously, this is what comes from never giving up. If they hadn't stood against Dodo then none of this bloodshed would have happened. No, Sai said, this is also what has been happening to civilians. Women. Children. Anyone that Dodo even suspected of being against him, it made no difference to him. A true tyrant that cares not for the evils he commits. Ten Ten looked from the dying Sandeyu to Sai who said that entire thing without a hint of anything in his voice, don't you feel anything for all this? She asked him. She was pissed off personally at the thought of Dodo getting away with this. Sai shook his head, I don't have feelings. Sandeyu choked for a moment before looking at Koyuki and speaking, Princess. Please forgive me. I should have never gotten you involved in this. But every one of us all believed in spite of everything, because we knew you were alive. You must believe in yourself. You have always been this country's ray of hope princess, so do not waste your tears on me. With that he let one last breath go. Sakura stopped her jutsu and looked at the others solemnly. Koyuki simply kept her eyes on his lifeless form, you are such a fool Sandeyu. I can't cry. You have my eye drops. She then looked at the director and the Konoha ninja, are you all satisfied? Let's go back. If you stay here your lives will be in jeopardy, let's just go home. Your home is here, Naruto said, and it's a mission, of course our lives are in danger. You can't just disappear now, Dodo knows you and he'll keep coming after you until you're dead. No amount of running is going to keep him away. What would you know about it? She snapped back, spring doesn't come to this country. Our tears are frozen over and our hearts are hardened with the cold. No. Naruto replied, that's him, he said as he pointed at Sai, but you could change this country yourself if you would just face up to what you know you have to do. Sakura's fist shook in anger hearing Koyuki speak so cruelly, Sandeyu believed in you. He lived his entire life keeping you safe so that you might come back here and free the country one day. You haven't even shed one tear for his sacrifice because you're a coward. Sakura calmed down, Naruto said. Sakura stopped herself, realizing she was about to walk up to Koyuki and hit her in the face. Her muscles were tense to deliver the punch when Naruto's voice stopped her, hitting her won't change anything or bring anyone back. Koyuki tried to walk away when Ten Ten stood in front of her with a firm look on her face, sorry, but you can't just do as you like in this instance. Koyuki then gasped at something behind Ten Ten. A blimp rising up over the nearby cliff. The large man, Mizore aimed his retractable hand at Koyuki from his spot at the bottom of the blimp and snatched her up swiftly. His female partner Fubuki threw kunai at them that branched out into jagged ice trees that the others were forced to dodge, motherfucker, Tenten shouted, they have even more of this crap? What do we do now Naruto-kun? She said, looking at the team leader. All eyes turned to him as he looked at the blimp flying away, Sai Kouhai? I have eyes on the blimp Naruto-senpai. Right up there with you. That got a look of confusion from the girls and a grin from Naruto. Good, Naruto said, the real me will be in touch with you soon. Just follow where the blimp went and be ready to fight soon. Triple X. On board the blimp. You have grown beautiful Koyuki, Dodo said, do you have the hex crystal? Yes, she said. For standing in front of her father's murderer her tone was exceptionally even. Very good. The man said with his disturbing grin. It is the sole link to the Kazaana clan and the key to opening its greatest treasure. Treasure? Koyuki said. What treasure? She didn't know about any kind of treasure. When I... Dodo stopped, trying to come up with a term for what he wanted to say, obtained. Control of the kingdom from your father the resources of the clan were all but gone. Sao Setsu obviously hid his treasure somewhere so I searched high and low for it before finally finding it, hidden deep within Rainbow Glacier. 
A keyhole there can only be opened by the hex crystal. Once I get the fortune hidden there I can finally gain military superiority over the five great nations. Now, Dodo said with his hand outstretched towards Koyuki, I will take the hex crystal now. After all, you don't need it do you? Koyuki removed the necklace from around her throat and passed it off to Dodo who examined it before his face twisted angrily, what is this? What? Koyuki said, taken aback by a shift in temperament. He grabbed her by the collar, you think that I can't recognize that this is a fake? Where is the real crystal? That's impossible. Koyuki reasoned before realization hit, Naruto. The blonde boy. He was the only one that ever could have. Nadair who was leaning against a wall in the room growled lowly, yes, that boy. He certainly grew up to become a thorn in my side on a consistent scale didn't he? Fubuki gave a sultry smile, do you want us to head out and round it up? We'll find it in no time. Dodo grinned again, no that will not be necessary. Why bother chasing after it when the group will show up for their princess of their own volition? All we have to do until those rats stumble upon us is to just wait. He never took notice of the actual rat, in black and white, scuttering across the corner of the floor. Triple X. Dodo's fortress, prison level. Koyuki sat by herself in a cell with her knees up to her chest. Every few seconds two armed guards would walk past her cell as they kept watch over her. As they walked out of sight she heard sounds of struggling followed by complete silence. A matter of moments later, Naruto appeared in front of her cell with a kunai in his hand, well look at you. Prison doesn't suit such a pretty face, would you like to leave? She looked at him in shock, how did you get here? How did you even find this place? Naruto picked his ear, I was on the blimp with you the entire time. It's not that hard to hide from these guys. Take away that armor of theirs and their practical skills suck. Why the hell didn't you get me off then if you were there the entire time? Or better yet why didn't you just defeat them all and end it there? She hissed lowly with a tick mark having formed on her head. Naruto gave her a deadpan look, yes, because you and me jumping off of a blimp at least a thousand feet in the air would have ended well. And then if I had killed everyone on board the blimp I'm personally trained to safely land it and make sure that we all survive instead of die in a miserable, fiery crash in middle of a winter wasteland, he said sarcastically before poking at the lock with the kunai, goddammit. He cursed lowly when it proceeded to shock him. Just quit, Koyuki said, you can't win all by yourself against all of Dodo's men. You really don't know me very well, Naruto said, this is just a setback. And what is your problem with having faith in something? You're so cynical I was this close to letting Sakura clock you. Koyuki fixed Naruto with a stare as she watched him examine the lock probingly, my father always told me that spring would always come. To imagine myself in a field full of flowers, running through it. He always said that if I never gave up, always believed, then spring would come to Yuki no Kuni. But this place has no spring. My father died, I was forced to flee, and I stopped believing. I began to run away and lie to others, but to no one more than myself. I told you that I deal in lies as an actress and I'm the best at it, but that's because my entire life is one huge charade. You done? Naruto said as he pulled out a slip of paper and a brush and began drawing on it, because if you're I'm going to tell you a little story while I work on freeing your pessimistic ass. You say all of these things about your life being a charade and everything but you chose that life. Yes you were worked into a corner and had to run as a little girl, but eventually you quit, you quit without ever trying. His eyes flickered to hers before getting back to work, I was worked into a corner too, right from the start. I have within my person a murdering, malicious, palpable mass of living chakra in my head. Or belly. One or the other, I never really figured it out. Either way, it was placed there moments after my birth by my father, to protect a village that spited my existence all throughout my childhood that refused to acknowledge me as a child. So do you want to know what I did? What? Koyuki asked. I worked my ass off. I underwent detestable training for years and became a ninja for my village. I fought and bled for that place in far away lands that most of them will never hear anything of to keep them safe. I did all of this before I became eight. I wanted to be the best, because if I was the best ninja in the world there was no way that they couldn't recognize me as a person. Do you want to know how long it took? It took 11 years and things are just now getting to where I wanted them to be. And now I have a group of super-powered criminals coming for the demon locked inside of me and my life, so I've got that going for me too. So do you know what I'm going to do about that? Koyuki shook her head, bringing a grin to Naruto's face, I'm going to kick their asses. I'm going to beat them all they're not beating me no matter what I have to do, and that's going to get me where I want to be. And I'm going to show you that right now because this seal is done. 
Naruto stood up making one-handed seals, fuu in jutsu, jenso kyushu, sealing technique, elemental absorption. He slapped the finished seal tag on the bars and held his hand to it. As the electricity from the trapped cell coursed, Koyuki turned her head away so that she didn't see Naruto die of electrocution. After a few seconds when she didn't hear his body hit the ground she opened her eyes to see electricity coursing around Naruto's arm that was stuck to the seal. The electricity faded and Naruto then proceeded to rip his seal off of the door and pick the lock open. How did you do that? Koyuki asked when the cell door popped open. Naruto ripped up his used seal into bits, that seal takes the element of whatever it sticks to and converts it to chakra. But if the element isn't your affinity then your coils are going to get destroyed by whatever the element actually is. Good for me my affinity for lightning is strong enough right? He held out his hand for her, now let's go. Koyuki gave him a smile and took his hand before they ran out of the prison area of the fortress. They eventually came upon a group of Yuki ninja when Naruto prompted Koyuki to stop, hello you guys. Good to see your ink rat made it back to you in one piece. Sai and the others got rid of their disguises, yes Naruto senpai into you as well. He had his signature smile on his face, you've got the princess. Do you want the crystal you gave me back? Give it to her, Naruto said, pointing at Koyuki, because I'm about to raise this place to the ground and beat Dodo's skull in, and I might destroy it if I have it on me. Now get out of here so I can finish this. I'm not leaving Naruto-kun, Tenten said, why would we leave you alone like that? Sai echoed her sentiments, I am here to ensure your safety, I'm not leaving Naruto-senpai. Someone's got to heal you when you get yourself busted up you idiot, Sakura said, but she had a smile on her face. Fine. Naruto grumbled, I would write you all up for insubordination in my report, but I'm on probation and that might make me look bad. We need to move now, Koyuki said, taking the hex crystal back from Sai, I can hear the guards coming. Follow me, she said, taking off with all of the Konoha ninja following behind her. She led the team into a room where Dodo's voice sounded out in laughter, well done Koyuki. She ran towards him standing atop his throne area and before any of them could stop her, Nadair, Fubuki, and Mizore appeared ahead of them, cutting them off from intercepting her. Fubuki blatantly winked at Sai who simply raised an eyebrow and Mizore made a lewd tongue gesture at Sakura and Tenten who simply started radiating killing intent. Nadair simply had a victorious smirk on his face as he looked at Naruto, it looks like you lose boy. You still can't beat me after all these years. Naruto's face went stone cold, I'm going to enjoy shutting that mouth of yours with my sword. He turned his eyes up to Koyuki who was standing next to Dodo, what do you think you're doing Koyuki? The princess gave her necklace to her uncle and looked down at her hired team, this shouldn't be any surprise to you. I am an actress after all, aren't I? Dodo laughed triumphantly, yes, another magnificent performance from the great Yuki Fujikase. Yes. It was all an act. She then revealed a tanto hidden underneath her clothes and stabbed Dodo, I told you didn't I? I'm an actress. Naruto had an interested look on his face, well that's taking things into your own hands I guess. Good stuff. Why you little? Dodo grabbed Koyuki around her throat. Naruto cursed and made a move, but the other group of ninja stopped him and his own team before they could try anything. Koyuki grabbed Dodo's arm, I always knew Naruto, that I was going to die if I ever returned to Yuki no Kuni. At least in the end I could. Naruto grit his teeth, you'd better survive damn you. It's an empty victory if you die achieving it. Koyuki smiled weakly at Naruto while still in Dodo's grip, it was thanks to you Naruto that I was able to face my home in the end. Naruto's eyes flickered red, Nadair get out of my way or I will rip your head off. Naruto barreled into Nadair suddenly, shoulder checking him out of the way as he ran towards Dodo and Koyuki who both fell off of the throne area. I'm sorry father. Sandeyu. Koyuki thought to herself as Naruto reached her side. Koyuki, you'd better be alright damn it, Naruto said as he kneeled down at her side. While fretting over Koyuki he didn't notice Dodo reach his feet and it gave the man the opportunity to kick him away from her. Dodo untied his robe and revealed advanced looking black chakra armor, you really thought that little toy could kill me? The knife had left a mark, but had not pierced it, the latest prototype of our chakra armor. Worth every bit paid. He grabbed Koyuki and laughed when she tried to struggle against him, stop wasting your time. Every ounce of your chakra is being taken from you, you're powerless, she continued to fight in vain as the ceiling broke and Dodo shot a line up to escape, come Koyuki, let us go beyond the rainbow. Naruto seethed in anger as he watched them escape. Naruto formed a blue ball of chakra in one hand to make an improvised exit, Rasengan, 
spiraling sphere. Naruto destroyed a nearby wall and got outside to see Dodo and Koyuki flying off, northwest. Get moving now, he shouted to his team that immediately went out through the hole he made and gave chase. Naruto was prevented from proceeding by a series of kunai keeping him there. Let's finish this shall we little Naruto? No running away this time eh? Nadair said tauntingly as they both stood on the cliffside surrounding the fortress. Naruto glared darkly at Nadair, I don't have time to play with you Nadair so I'll make this quick and brutal. He threw a kunai right down the middle at Nadair that simply bounced off of a chakra shield, you should know by now that it's pointless. Now it's time to show you my original jutsu, Hayotan, Roga Nadair no jutsu, ice release, wolf fang avalanche jutsu. The snow gathered at the top of the fortress spilled over and raged towards Naruto in the form of a pack of wolves rushing right at him. Naruto made hand seals and stopped his movements with his arms in an X, Fuuten, Senpu Kakasui, Wind Release, Whirlwind Pyramid. A violent wind whipped around Naruto's body, most prominent in the area that was facing the avalanche of wolves. The ice jutsu smashed into Naruto's wall of wind, kicking up a blur of powder as it flowed down over the cliffside. Nadair laughed loudly at disposing of Naruto in such a manner, your weak little jutsu couldn't stand up to the power of my chakra armor. You were still ten years too young to put me down brat. Doten, Shinju Uzanshu no jutsu, earth release, inner decapitation jutsu. Naruto's hands wrapped around Nadair's legs and pulled him underground. After a short moment Nadair found himself driven out of the cliffside he had been standing on with a pair of explosive notes, one on his forehead, the other on his back. Damn you boy. You aren't better than me, my armor is invincible. You can't do this, he said as he fell down the sheer drop raging with lunacy. Naruto stood at the edge of the hole he had pummeled Nadair's body through and placed his hand in a half-tiger seal as he looked down on his enemy's descending body, invincible huh? Let's see it survive a thousand-foot fall. Boom, Naruto said just as his tags finished burning down and detonated, consuming Nadair's body in an explosive fireball. He then took off to chase after Koyuki and Dodo. He circled around the front of the fortress when he heard someone calling out to him and saw the director on a mobile trolley of sorts. Naruto smirked, he wondered how fast that thing was. Triple X. With Sai. Sai flew through the trees of a snowy forest dodging a series of ice pillars forming up and crashing through the branches he leapt to and from, Kuju Ugiga, Super Beast's imitation picture. Sai drew up a flock of birds to fly off at his enemy to buy himself some space. Aw oh, come on sweetie, don't you want to chill out with me for a bit? Fubuki said as she saw Sai's birds incoming and allowed them to bounce off her chakra shield from her armor you should know that won't work by now. Due to the destroyed birds a mist of ink surrounded Fubuki that she came out of looking around for Sai, come out wherever you are. All right then. Peekaboo. Fubuki turned to see Sakura leap out of the ink mist and drill her straight in the face with a hard right hand. Her body was sent flying through the forest, taking out trees that crashed down all around her. Sakura let out a sigh of relief and wiped her brow, finally. Thanks for that Sai. That bitch was getting on my nerves. Sai landed from the trees next to Sakura with his smile placed on his face, no problem you. Sai caught himself before he could call Sakura ugly due to Ten Ten's advice, names based on amassed traits of the people they're intended for. He tried again, Blossom San. Sakura gave him a small smile, Blossom huh? She shrugged, it's damn better than being called ugly, isn't it Sai? His smile was the only answer she got. Triple X. With Ten Ten. Ten Ten stood in place as her opponent Mizore flew through the trees surrounding them swiftly on his snowboard. What are you going to do little girl? You still can't do anything to me. He threw out his cable retracted arm at her. Ten Ten dodged it and pulled out a scroll, eat this then, Bakuryuugeki, exploding dragon strike. A large flame dragon emerged from the scroll that Ten Ten opened and unsealed, sending it right at Mizore, melting the snow as it came right at him. The fire bounced right off of the shield produced by the chakra armor, Ha ha. You can't even touch me. His snowboard slid along the rough, coarse ground where there he ended up tripping over something stuck in the ground, what the fuck? He said to himself as he picked himself up, rubbing his injured body, and looked where he fell. He shouldn't be this hurt just from a simple fall, what is this? Ten Ten smirked, I knew you were coming after me. Didn't you notice me waiting for you? I set tons of those things all over this area and you stumbled right over them jerk. Mizore looked down at them and saw that she had planted tons of spiked metal balls beneath the snow, and he had fallen on and slid all across them, his snowboard was mangled, now let's see you block this. 
Ten Ten took the large scroll from off of her back and threw it into the air over him, Sugu, Ten Sasai, manipulated tools, heavenly chain of destruction. He couldn't dodge with the metal of his snowboard mangled around his feet due to Ten Ten's trap so he simply prepared his chakra armor to take the shot. He realized something was wrong when he tried to put his shield up, but it simply fizzled out. He looked at his armor only to find that a vital part that converted chakra into the shield was broken from the unprotected fall, no. Ten Ten's mid-air scroll started bombarding him from directly above with countless tools of all sorts. Kunai, shuriken of all sizes, fuuma shuriken, broadswords, large spiked iron balls, anything that could be sent at someone. Mizore quickly found himself impaled with multiple weapons of all types throughout his body. Ten Ten looked at him and all of the weapons surrounding him, yep, that armor of yours. Something that strong would have to have a weak point. I saw you touch a certain place on your armor repeatedly during the last fight. An accident and something like that could get really messed up huh? She looked around with a sigh, do I have to pick all of this up now? Triple X. Rainbow Glacier. Dodo looked around frantically. He had used the hex crystal, and nothing was happening. There was no secret passage revealed or anything at all, where is it? Where is the treasure? The Kazana fortune? Hissing sounds rang out and the frozen ground began to melt, a heat generator? This is the hidden treasure that I've spent so much time looking for? He said, outraged. It's so warm. Koyuki commented to herself quietly. Raiden, Kaminari Shuriken, Lighting Release, Lightning Shuriken. Lighting struck from overhead from a single Shuriken positioned directly above Dodo who automatically responded by turning around and forming hand seals, Hayotan, Kokuryu Ubufu Asetsu, Ice Release, Black Dragon Blizzard. He shot off a dragon formed from the ice around him by him arm at Naruto who was standing not too far away. The dragon hit him, launching him into the air where he burst into smoke, what? He turned around to see that the princess was no longer there and was a ways off with Naruto who had her in his arms and put her down. Naruto faced Dodo and cracked his neck, no skill, all power. And not even that much of that really. Who are you boy? Dodo asked, nearly frothing at the mouth at the current turn of events. Everything he had done, it was all for nothing. Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto replied with his arms crossed, ID number 012607, Jounin level shinobi of Kanahagakura no Sato, Jinchuriki of the QB no Yoko, and the future Hokage. Nice to meet you. Koyuki looked at Naruto with his game face on, Naruto. Please, don't die. Naruto gave her a reassuring smile before turning back to Dodo and walking out away from Koyuki, the day I get finished off by a guy like this. Well, let's just say I'll be fine Koyuki. Just believe in me. Koyuki let him walk out into the open ice to face Dodo, Naruto. You are by far the strongest ninja I've ever known. I believe in you. Naruto smiled to himself as he continued to walk forward, it's about time. His smile dropped once he looked back at Dodo, now let's finish this. My sentiments exactly, Dodo said, Hayotan, Sauryu Bufu Asetsu, Ice Release, Twin Dragon Blizzard. This time he released two black ice dragons at Naruto that quickly merged into a large black tornado, now die. Naruto bounced on the balls of his feet to loosen himself up, so QB. How should I handle this one? Any ideas? Subtle or loud? Oh for Kami's sake kid, just take some chakra and blow his ass away. Asking me what to do like you didn't already know. Naruto smirked at Kyuubi's outburst. Naruto's eyes flickered red as a one-tailed cloak emerged around his body, it's going to take a lot of chakra for this one, but since you have a tornado I might as well show you how strong the wind can really be. Naruto rolled through a long chain of hand seals as the black tornado came ever closer. He finished his seals and inhaled deeply as his chest expanded, I may not have had the finesse for any of Donzo Gigi's wind techniques, but I do have this. Fuuten, Hirogari Teihen, Wind Release, Spreading Air Disaster. Naruto exhaled full force and unleashed a terrible blast of wind large and wide directly at the Black Dragon Tornado, tearing up the ice plates on the ground and ripping up the landscape. The high-speed wind hit the tornado and ripped it to black snow, scaring Dodo shitless when he saw it coming his way. He turned on his chakra shield but that only protected him, not the ground beneath him, which ended up getting torn asunder by Naruto's jutsu. It picked him up off of the ground and threw him backwards across much of the tundra, slamming him into a wall of ice hard, back first. The force of the hit should have killed him, but his armor proved exceptional when compared with the rest as the impact left him with internal injuries, coughing up blood, but otherwise alive. He walked out, 
still looking ready to fight, but on his last legs with Naruto charging towards him with a blue ball in his right hand. He smirked a bloody smile as he saw that, I have on chakra armor you fool. You can't harm me with that. It's pure chakra. He kept that thought up until he didn't notice his chakra shield activating. He looked at Naruto with fear in his eyes as he saw the Rasengan and his hand turn multicolored. Koyuki's eyes widened, is that rainbow chakra? She said in disbelief. Naruto thrusted his hand forward, die you son of a bitch, Nanero no Rasengan, seven colored spiraling sphere. The Rasengan carved right through the armor like a buzz saw and pulverized its way into Dodo's body as Naruto continued driving forward right into the thick ice wall that Dodo had hit after Naruto's wind jutsu. The wall cracked and collapsed on top of both of them, revealing one of the walls of the massive generator. Quiet reigned over the area as the scenery changed due to the rapid melting of the ice until the voice of the director could be heard, tell me we got all of that. Holy shit we're going to need to make this movie 3D after that. Believe in the future and spring will surely come. Everyone looked around and saw a large projection of Princess Koyuki as a little girl. What will you do when spring comes Koyuki? The voice asked her. The little girl smiled brightly, I'm going to be a princess. What kind of princess? The voice said. Let's see. Little Koyuki said, one that's strong, and kind, and most of all one who fights for justice. The man chuckled, that's some dream. Koyuki found herself tearing up as she watched this, did I? Really say those things? Well so long as you believe in your dreams and never give up one day you will be that princess. A man then appeared in front of the image and put the necklace around Koyuki's neck, you can see it right? A beautiful princess standing right in front of you. Koyuki's tears finally started to fall just before she heard her younger self speak again, but there's sort of something else I want to be, she said with uncertainty. And what would that be? The man, her father asked. An actress, she said full of spirit. The older Koyuki began to laugh as her tears fell, tears of joy instead of sorrow. Over by the generator Naruto threw the slowly melting chunks of ice off of himself and stood up, looking himself over with a disgruntled look on his face as his frame was covered in Dodo's blood, great. I need a shower now. I guess it's a good thing I didn't blow up that fortress after all huh? Triple X. Koyuki's Coronation Ceremony. Koyuki was speaking to the ninja squad that had helped her country, the generator wasn't even full developed in the end. She commented as she stood in the beautiful garden where the ceremony had taken place. Sakura smiled apologetically, I guess it will be back to winter soon huh? Koyuki shook her head with a big smile, no, not really. If we take what we know and keep researching, before you know it Yuki no Kuni will be Haru no Kuni, Land of Spring. Ten Ten rubbed her own shoulder, yeah. But it's a shame though. You're such a big star, are you really going to stop acting now to run your country? Koyuki gave a sly grin, who said I was retiring. Ruling over Yuki no Kuni and acting, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to handle them both. I mean I would have to be out of my mind to give it up now, she said as she pulled out a script in full sight of the team. Sakura blushed at the sight of the heading as she was very familiar with it due to what her first sensei could always be seen reading, you're going to star. In Icha Icha? Koyuki let out a laugh, well I'll be seeing you. And Naruto, she said, getting the scar-faced blonde's full attention, I'll be needing a leading man for that role. Do you think you would be interested? Naruto's eyes widened before a smirk formed on his face, do I need to audition? He said as a drop of blood came from his nose. Triple X. In Konoha, two weeks later. Donzo sat in Tsunade's office as he fished inside of his robe for something as he spoke to Tsunade, it seems that Naruto is doing a fantastic job. His last mission should get Konoha plenty of new business and publicity. Yes I read his report, Tsunade said evenly as she remained suspicious of what Donzo was looking for, he did wonderful for leading his first mission. And his success could lead to a potential trade alliance with Yuki no Kuni, their technology is something to take note of. But I don't know too much about the publicity. Donzo pulled a poster out of his robe and set it down in front of Tsunade, oh, I believe so. On the poster was Koyuki and a picture of Naruto in a blown-up action pose as the title of the new movie was emblazoned above. Tsunade's eyes widened at the sight until Donzo spoke again, I wonder if Princess Koyuki will ask him to star in her next film if this one is a success? He then obstructed Tsunade's view of the poster by dropping a script on her desk that made her grab her desk so hard it cracked, have a good day Tsunade Haim. The bandaged man said as he left the office. Shizun entered shortly thereafter and saw Tsunade staring hard at something on her desk, 
Is something the matter Tsunade-sama? She asked. Tsunade didn't look up even when Shizune came around her desk and looked at what she had her eyes locked on, I don't know who I should take a certain pressing new issue up with. Jiraiya for signing off on this movie of his. Or the brat if he actually ends up being in it. Shizune read the heading and had a small trickle of blood leave her nose. Chapter 37, Road Trip with Urosenin. The sun was rapidly fading as Naruto ambled back through the gates of Konoha with the team he had been placed with to lead on his latest mission, Kurenai Squad, Team 8. Kiba grumbled as Naruto signed them back in at the check-in station and caught up with Izumo and Kotetsu for a moment. Man, how come nothing cool happened on this mission? We had Naruto leading it, he's like the magnet for irksome situations or something so we should have had some trouble. Shino spoke as Naruto continued with the pleasantries with the gate guards, Kiba it is illogical to actively desire a desperate confrontation the way you do. Though from what I've heard it is something of an anomaly to go on missions with Naruto-san and avoid trouble. Yeah, right? Exactly, Kiba exclaimed, from what we hear you could go on a sea rank with Naruto to deliver a wagon full of plush toys and chances are he'd end up fighting a a ranked missing nin with a plan to control the economy of an entire country with the plush toys. And don't give me that crap like you're not disappointed Shino, you know that you wish something happened too. Perhaps. Shino alluded to him being right, but unlike you I can keep the complaints to myself and can keep the amount of noise pollution in the air to a minimum. Kaib fumed at his usually stoic and silent teammate. Kiba-kun, Shino-kun, stop fighting. Hinata chided softly, the mission was successful and we're all okay, that's what matters right? Naruto watched the team interact from afar. This was his third mission led as a jounin and it went off without a hitch. He actually couldn't wait to get to Tsunade's office and see if his probation would end with him as a jounin or if he would get demoted. He'd better not get demoted, every single mission ended with him bringing the team back in perfect condition and then some. As he looked at the team of his former classmates he had to admit, they were way stronger than he thought they would get when he fought them after bringing Tsunade back, especially Hinata. His incident with her was either going to make her or break her, and apparently she had enough fight in her at the time to have that episode end up building on her character. Getting promoted was proof of that. She was still sweet as could be, and he could tell she still had a little something for him, but damned if it wasn't manageable now. He could easily work with her, and from the looks of things she could be the voice of reason between the two extremes of emotion and logic that resided on her squad. It was clear she was skilled enough in a fight or else she wouldn't have been promoted in the first place and of course it never hurt that she was absolutely gorgeous. Kiba and Shino were stronger, that much was clear just from looking at them. And Akamaru. Who was fucking huge. Kami how did he miss that during the Chunin exam in Suna he was there to watch? Anyway, after his last mission with Team 10 as well it was evident that everyone was stepping their game up for the future and he was proud of them. Why he was proud of them he didn't know. They were friends of his. He would hang out with Kiba when they ran into each other sometimes, good times. Shino was actually ballsy enough to head into the forest of death every now and then, not so good times actually. And then Hinata, when Neji asked him for spars every now and then she would sometimes watch and talk to them afterwards. She never wanted to fight him herself though. Still she was good company. All right everybody, Naruto said, directing their attention back to him, good work. That was quick and clean, my kind of mission actually. He smirked when he heard Kiba snort his displeasure at the lack of action, I'm going to go and give an oral report on the mission to Tsunade Bakken right now. You guys can turn in your written ones whenever you get to them. Shino nodded and walked off on his own. Kiba nodded as well, see you later Naruto. Don't be a stranger okay? Hinata smiled at him with her arms behind her back, goodbye Naruto-kun. You should come back to the clan compound sometime, it's nice speaking with you. Sure thing Hinata, Naruto said, take it easy and make sure you kick Neji's ass for me next time you two spar. I owe him. Getting a giggle out of her, he turned and shunshined away towards the Hokage Tower. Triple X. Naruto stood out in front of the Hokage Tower with an intent look on his face as he wrestled with himself to make a decision, should I take the front way or should I take the window like usual? He pondered to himself, this could be important to my full promotion. If I take the regular way it would show professionalism and that I'm ready to be a jounin. But it might show that I get rattled by pressure, while going through the window would show that I can stay cool in important situations or. For the love of Kami brat. Naruto's head snapped up to see Tsunade looking down out the window from her office with a tick mark on her head, you've been out there for 20 minutes just standing there. Get up here already and get debriefed. Well I guess she doesn't care as much as I thought she would. Naruto thought as he bent his legs to get ready to jump, maybe I overthink some stuff? 
Naruto jumped up and landed on the windowsill of Tsunade's office, hide Tsunade Bakken. Tsunade shook her head with a smile on her face, get in here already and get this done. Naruto hopped down into the office and smiled at Shizun who was standing by Tsunade's desk holding Tantan, hello Shizun Nichin, hi Tantan. The dark-haired assistant returned his smile, hello Naruto-kun, you seem awfully upbeat today. Tantan oinked as if to agree. And why wouldn't I be? He said, unable to keep the excitement off of his face, I didn't screw up and fail in missions, all of my teammates were always in top condition when we got back. There's no way I'm getting demoted, I'm a Jounin now. Tsunade took a seat at her desk, all right, I'll be the judge of that. Now go ahead and debrief. Okay Hokage-sama. Naruto coughed and got down to business, the mission, a B-ranked reconnaissance mission into Tano Kuni came up with no new outward fortifications by Orochimaru's forces. He hasn't made any new moves since I sacked his bases on the mission that ended a little over a month ago. We were unable to recover anything new and there hasn't been any presence at what was formerly his main base since we last took it out. Tsunade nodded, that sounds about right. Orochimaru was never too careful when it came to covering his tracks. And we only have five months left until he attempts his jutsu on Sasuke Uchiha. Naruto leaned against her desk, should we really be wasting resources like this to stop him before he can take Sasuke's body? I mean, he already failed trying to take Itachi Uchiha's body at full strength and when his body wears down this time he should be easy pickings. Sasuke will kill him when he tries unless he's been lazy for the last few years and I just don't see that. Tsunade sat her chin on her hands, do you think that he will come back after he beats Orochimaru or something? Hell no, Naruto said immediately in response, he's going to go after Itachi probably, but that won't matter right now. All that matters is that Orochimaru will be dead and his forces will be in disarray. That's the time to actively search for the smattering of bases and disoriented forces with a few quick task forces if we have any ready at the time. Let Anko-chan do that to make up for sending her back on the last mission we took to take his bases out. Tsunade nodded with a serious face before a grin came across her features, trying for another promotion so soon are we brat? Naruto smirked, the serious moment for the most part over with, not really Ba-chan. I don't think I want one right now anyway. That is if I'm a Jounin. Tsunade rolled her eyes, yes, your probation is over, you're a Jounin now, congratulations. You've earned it. She smiled at him, you're really earning that necklace of yours too aren't you? Naruto pulled it from under his flak jacket and held it out, I'm glad you think so. I make it look good don't I? He said with a grin. All right calm down, sheesh, Tsunade said, waving him off, you're dismissed. Stay in good condition to move out on another mission soon, don't overexert yourself, and get some rest. The specifics behind what you're doing should be out for you to know of in a few days. Naruto raised an eyebrow, why so secretive on the mission Tsunade Bakken? It's supposed to be at least S ranked in difficulty and importance, she said, do you still want it? Naruto didn't flinch, you wouldn't have asked me to do it if you didn't think I could or didn't think I was needed. Of course I'll take it. I told you already Ba-chan, I may mess around a bit, but I'll follow any order you give me. That's the way I was taught. Naruto gave a two-fingered salute to the women in the room and left through the door. Triple X Naruto opened the door to his apartment to find Hamako laying on the floor in the living room with notes strewn about. Naruto quietly shut the door and prepared to sneak past her to get to his room when he was stopped in his tracks, I already know you're here master. I felt the security seals go off when you opened the door. Naruto sighed and walked over to her, sitting on the couch nearby as he looked at what she was doing, been busy? Hamako stood up and sat down in Naruto's lap and kissed him happily at seeing him, welcome home Naruto-sama. She then looked at the floor and the mess she had made with all of her work all over the place and blushed, well, yes. I have been. I've been studying Anko San Seal. And? Naruto said curiously. Hamako had taken over systematically studying the seal in his place due to the fact that she was far better at fuel and jutsu than him and could work it out better than he could and faster as well. Hamako looked away sheepishly, I've hit a brick wall of sorts in getting it off of her. Feeling Naruto's gaze on her she squirmed in his grasp, it's not that I don't understand what it entails because I do. And I'm positive I can get it off of her. Naruto raised an eyebrow, I'm sensing a but here somewhere. I need certain things to get it off of her, Hamako said, a frown marring her pretty face, apparently Orochimaru ingrained some of his very being into the seal, and enzymes of someone else too. Without the DNA of both of them I can't break the seal without doing anything to her mind. 
it could either stunt her abilities and mental to physical capabilities or break her mind altogether. Rochimaru is a true villain, he won't even bother taking it off of her the way he did with Tuya-san because he still sees Yu's in keeping it on her unlike Tuya. Naruto returned her frown, I'm guessing you weren't able to get any of Orochi team's DNA from the hospital, or Ba-chan or anything like that right? Hamako shook her head, no such luck Naruto-sama. He rested her head in the crook of his neck, I'm sorry. I haven't told Anko-san that I've failed yet. Good, Naruto said, letting her get closer to him, because you haven't failed. You know what to do, you just don't have everything you need to do it. That's what I'm for. I don't know how, but I'll end up getting Orochimaru and our mystery jerk's DNA for you to finish. I already promised Anko-chan I would anyway. You're going to ask for permission to hunt Orochimaru? Hamako asked curiously, can you do that? Naruto shrugged, I have no idea. But I'll have to build up some credibility to ask for a mission like that. Maybe after my next one I'll build up enough, it's supposed to be S ranked at least. He felt Hamako stiffen in his grasp, what's the matter? You're going to be gone again? She said sadly, I know you're an important ninja to the village and everything, but you're always away. Always working. I miss you a lot master. You know all of my friends and I know they like you too. Naruto tried to reason, I can't take you with me. You know I can't. I know, and I love that you keep correspondence with me through our tattoo, Hamako said desperately, but your friends aren't you. And I don't really fit in with them. They're all ninja except for the Ichiraku family and I'm not. Just because I sometimes teach seals at the academy doesn't mean much. Naruto stood up, well I have time to rest for a bit, so I'll tell you what, he said pleasantly, you and me are going to go to bed because it's clear from the notes everywhere and the tired look in your eyes that you haven't been sleeping too well while working on this. And then tomorrow the whole day will be about you, okay? Whatever you want to do we can do, and it's about time we look for a new place too right? Hamako smiled at him before pouting playfully, and give me an even bigger space to clean up after you? Her smile returned, I would like that very much. When she noticed that he carried her past her room into as she looked at him curiously, what are you doing Naruto-sama? Naruto set her down in his bed, you said you missed me didn't you? So why would I make you sleep in your own room tonight? He started taking his shirt off, you're with me tonight, or do you mind? He pulled his shirt off to see that Hamako had already shed her own clothing and was securely underneath the covers of the bed waiting for him, fast. Master, she said softly, come here and keep your servant company. I thought I was the one that was supposed to be giving orders? Naruto thought to himself as he shed his pants and climbed into bed where Hamako immediately latched onto him, you haven't done this in a while. And you still don't wear anything when you sleep. Hamako looked up at him from where her head was on his chest, my offer from the first night I spent with you still stands master. I have no issues with you taking advantage of my body if you wish. Naruto felt her lovely breasts press against his bare torso and felt himself stiffen, you have no issue, or you would love it if I did? Okay was it him or did they grow since he had met her? Hamako smiled sweetly, a combination of the two if I were to be honest with you. She knows it would put a smile on her face for the rest of the month if I did. Naruto thought to himself as he started rubbing the sides of Hamako's body. He locked eyes with hers, blue staring into amber, and I did say that I would do anything you wanted tomorrow. I guess I can start that a little earlier than anticipated. Author's note, there is a lemon here if you want to read it link to the story is in the description. Triple X Four days later, 11 a.m. Master, wake up. Come on Naruto-sama you have to get up. Naruto opened his eyes to see a mop of red hair on his chest and his own body sprawled out on a couch. What the? Naruto looked around to see a few bottles of sake on the floor around the couch. Ugh. What happened? He looked over at the door to the apartment to find Hamako standing there with her hands on her hips. Hamako-chan? He felt the person on his chest stir. Tuya-chan? Tuya looked up at Naruto's face and held her head with a pained look on her face, Uzumaki. What the hell did we do last night? Hamako walked over to the both of them who were still fully clothed much to Naruto's surprise as he could feel the effects of a hangover, you, Naruto-sama, and all of Naruto-sama's friends went to a bar last night to celebrate him being done with his probationary status for Jounin. Tuya's eyes widened in remembrance, oh yeah. She looked at Hamako, you didn't go? I don't like drinking. Hamako replied with a distasteful look, I was kind of scared off of it when I saw a few people mix alcohol with experimental fuel in Jutsu. She shivered in terror. That's why I locked up all of the notes and supplies last night when you two left the complex. It seemed like the wisest course of action available at the time. 
Naruto's brain was working in slow motion as it muddled through the leftover brain cells he killed last night. It was him, Tuya, Sai, all of the rookie teams, all of Team Guy. And a lot of alcohol, mostly because he could afford enough for everyone 10 times over and not even make a dent in his account so he paid for most of the drinks for everyone. He was generous like that. And in gracious fashion, everyone got smashed, even Sakura who was the one who was most against it in the first place. Yeah, she loosened right up once she got a few in her. For sure. Even Rock Lee. Once he was good and fully tied up by every dude in the building. Hands and legs. Tied together. And he still wound up destroying two tables and part of the bar itself with the use of only his head before he finally blacked out much to everyone's relief. Lee was a mean drunk. Even sigh. Though nothing seemed to happen to him. He drank, he drank just as much as anyone else but when it was time to head home he didn't have a waver in his step at all. Damn Sai could hold his liquor. As if remembering something interesting, Tuya suddenly pointed at Naruto and smirked, Ha ha, you made out with the girl with the buns in her hair last night. Naruto raised an eyebrow, he did make out with Tenten. A lot, you say that like it's a bad thing. A memory then triggered that got him to smirk right back, I made out with you too Tuya-chan, all the way back here apparently. Yes, Hamako said plainly as she put two glasses down in the kitchen and started fishing through the cabinets for some kind of medicine, you did. And you probably would have done more if Tuya-san hadn't passed out on top of you Naruto-sama. Ha, Naruto said to a stunned Tuya, not stunned because things might have gone further, she was actually kind of disappointed that they didn't, stunned because she passed out first, you lightweight, you passed out first. I'm still the reigning champ. He looked at himself and saw that he was extremely dirty and disheveled, I don't know why I look like this from making out though. Were you that rough with me? Ignoring his question and focusing more on his teasing of her ability to imbibe in the drink, Tuya poked Naruto in the stomach, we all don't fucking have demons stuck inside of us that help us process poisons and the effects of alcohol through our systems you fucking ass. If you didn't have the QB I would have put you down. She went back to holding her head, Kami I feel like that fat ass Jirobo tap danced on my fucking head. Hamako placed a glass of some orange substance in front of her face, this should help with feeling in your head right now. Tuya took it and she handed the other to Naruto who quickly drank it down and cringed for a moment, Naruto-sama, there's a message for you to show up at Hokage-sama's office immediately for a mission. So today's finally the day? Naruto groaned, moved Tuya off of him and stood up, damn, is there time for me to at least wash up and change? I smell like a complete drunk right now. Tuya held the glass of what Hamako gave her in her hand, you are a drunk Uzumaki, you just control yourself better than most. Get it through your head. You do this every time you're home. I don't see how Hamako here is even able to put up with taking care of your ass. So? He said moving towards the bathroom, I'm taking a shower and changing before I go. Tsunade Bakken is going to be pissed off even if I do show up on time because I smell like booze. So if I'm going to be in trouble no matter what I might as well smell fresh when I am and give the monster headache time to go away. QB better get to earning his rent. Fuck you Ningen, I'm not the cure for all that ails you. QB mentally butted into Naruto's conversation vindictively. You are today. Naruto shot back as he entered the bathroom and flipped the lights on. Tuya finished downing Hamako's apparent remedy and cringed like Naruto did at the taste, all she knew was that crap better have worked, all hell. I have a mission today too. I might as well go and shower for that too. I would get in with Uzumaki, but that would just end up making us later, Tuya said with a sheepish grin. Hamako smiled at Tuya, I hope you feel better Tuya-san. Tuya let out a grunt of acknowledgement once she reached the front door. Hamako turned towards the bathroom and called out, Master I'll help you. You'll take too long otherwise. I think you only have a few minutes to be there anyway. Triple X. Two hours later. Naruto stepped into Tsunade's office with a huge grin on his face only to be forced to duck a paperweight thrown at his head. He looked at Tsunade who still had her arm outstretched from the throw, Brett there had better be a good reason you're late. Naruto grinned to himself once more before it faded, it would only get him into more trouble, I could tell you the reason and you could get even more pissed off at me or I could say I'm sorry and it won't happen again and we can drop it. He didn't feel like telling Tsunade that a shower had turned into him having sex with Hamako for well over an hour and forced him to take another shower lest he smell like Hamako once he got there and get hit for real. Fine, Tsunade said, we're just waiting on someone else and you can be briefed on what you're doing. You're to work under this person on this assignment. That got his attention. He was a jounin and was supposed to work under this person instead of with this person. 
a moment later found Jiraiya jumping through the window with a grin, Tsunade Haim. You left the window open for me this time. I knew you cared. Tsunade sighed, just get on with it and tell the brat what you two are doing. Naruto looked between the two Sanin, I'm with Uro Kyofu on this one? Naruto said before shrugging, it sounded good to him, so what's up? What are we getting into this time? Tsunade was listening clearly as she wasn't sure what this one would be all about either. All she knew was that it was to be something of a reconnaissance mission. Jiraiya's face was gravely serious, I found the base of operations for Akatsuki. Naruto and Tsunade both showed clear shock at what Jiraiya had just said. Tsunade spoke, that's great. Then the reality of it hit her, wait, why do you two have to go? It's too dangerous, let me send someone else. Jiraiya shook his head, can't do it Tsunade Haim. Nothing spoils quicker than information and you can be sure we won't have a surefire window to enter the village for long. Besides, the only people you have in Konoha good enough to get in are me and the Gaki. You know what I can do, and the brat's proven he can do it by repeatedly sacking Orochimaru's bases right from the heart again and again. Since he was eight I should add. Naruto glared lightly at the perverted man, you still screwed me over in that one. Who fucking blows up an entire section of the base during a reconnaissance mission. Jiraiya rolled his eyes, get over it Gaki. Things are on the up and up now aren't they? Naruto didn't let it drop, no, you never explained this to me, I wanna know. What in Kami's name possessed you into thinking that was a good idea? Jiraiya rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, I wanted to leave with a bang. Naruto palmed his face, the entire point is to make sure no one knows you were there stupid. Sometimes I forget you're a Sanin, I swear. Jiraiya wrapped Naruto on the back of the head, oi. I will break my foot off in your ass Uro Kyofu. Jiraiya got into Naruto's face, come and try it Gaki. You're still 10 years too soon to even be in my league. Naruto pushed right back, you want to test it out? You feeling froggy Uro Senen? I summoned Toads you idiot. Jiraiya cracked back, are you sure you have the brain power to be a Jounin? You seem to be back to your stupid 12 year old self. The two were stopped by Tsunade's fists neatly depositing them onto the ground, both of you shut up and be serious. Naruto pulled himself to a seated position, ow, damn Ba-chan. But yeah, Uro Kyofu's right. We can handle this, and besides, who else could you send that actually knew what to look for and could actually pull it off? A frown came to Tsunade's face, I really don't like this you too. This is a little too close to the hornet's nest, don't you think? Naruto shrugged his shoulders, it's no different than running around Orochimaru and his cronies on eggshells inside of those rat nests he calls hidden villages, but this time I have more room to move about and I don't think we'll be there for over half a year this time. Jiraiya nodded in agreement, he's right Tsunade Haim, it'll be a quick in and out to confirm some things and that will be that. Like the leader of the entire organization. His face turned serious again, apparently the man's name is Pain. The entire village sees the man as a god of sorts. Naruto scoffed, sounds like another case of that S-ranked arrogance again. Quiet Naruto, Jiraiya said, but yet Tsunade, anyway, we'll be there for a moment to confirm this and that, maybe get some new information or see if they've bolstered their rankings since Super Gaki here keeps taking them out one by one. Hey, Naruto said, what about Hidan's head? You've had that for a good month now. Have you gotten anything out of him yet? Tsunade shook her head, he's unbreakable brat. Even Inoiki can't get too far to get anything on the group out of him, and since his head is gone and he's probably in screaming pain every second of his existence there isn't anything we can do to persuade him any further that way. Fuck, Naruto said, I thought I had something this time. Jiraiya ruffled Naruto's head after standing back up, well that's what we're leaving for. Rest assured we're coming back with something big. Count on it. Tsunade looked away from the both of them, just. Just be careful you two. Don't get yourselves killed out there. I need you two here. Naruto grinned at her, no worries Ba-chan, I can't die yet right? He pulled her necklace out from his flak jacket, I've still got to prove that little curse of your wrong don't I? I'll keep Uro Kyofu out of trouble, don't you worry. Jiraiya put Naruto in a headlock, really you cheeky punk? Don't you worry Tsunade Haim, I'll keep the kid from biting off more than he can chew. We'll be back before you know it, driving you crazy in no time. Tsunade smiled at both of them, very well. Naruto Uzumaki, Jiraiya, do you two accept the S-ranked reconnaissance mission to the village of Amiga Kurano Sato? Jiraiya smirked, of course. I was the one that suggested it after all. Naruto grinned, you've got it. I'm at your command Ba-chan, 
you know that. Tsunade nodded at both of them, then proceed with caution. I want both of you coming back from this one, or else I'll drag you two from hell just so I can kill you myself. With that, the two of them left the office through the window as both of them were prone to do. As she watched the two of them walk down the street towards the exit of the village she couldn't help a feeling of foreboding that crept through her person, please come back from this. Triple X. Two days later, Kuza no Kuni. Naruto and Jiraiya were hitching a ride on an ox cart heading through the country towards Kusagakur. Naruto footed the bill due to Jiraiya not carrying any cash on him. Ever apparently, but Naruto was of course still loaded from the bounty on Sasori. He hadn't been able to turn Hidan's head in yet. The would have to hop off sooner or later lest they get too close to the village, be forced to answer some rather unsavory questions, and blow their cover before they even got close to getting started. So Uro Kyofu. Naruto started, why are we heading through Kuza no Kuni instead of just heading right through the country Ame is in? We directly border it so what's with taking the roundabout way? Jiraiya smirked at his godson, Naruto, you should develop a more worldly taste for something other than the women that you care for. He ducked a swing at his head, though I have to say I am proud of you on that front, you're almost like me in that regard, making ladies swoon worldwide. He ducked another swing. Bite me, I don't make anyone swoon. Naruto growled, but when I went to Otogakur I didn't take the long way and I got in just fine. Jiraiya leaned back in the cart, that's because you didn't know exactly where it was but the country was well documented, you could afford to go straight to it once you had the exact location since you had been briefed on the country in general and could aptly sneak around because you knew for the most part what was there, I know because that's how I found it the first time. We don't have that luxury this time around. Can you tell me why? Naruto nodded, Amiga Corps is supposed to be in the middle of a civil war. It was like that when I was en route. Ame was always supposed to be a dead zone. He always told me no matter what I was doing, no matter how safer it seemed than running back to Konoha, I was never supposed to go into that country, ever, I was supposed to go around and stay the fuck away at all costs. He never told me why though. A civil war shouldn't have been any of my business right? Naruto asked rhetorically, all I know is that it was the only place Donzo ever told me to stay away from with no exceptions. Jiraiya looked at Naruto as he spoke, the old one I gave you some damn good advice kid. That place is locked down so tight by the guy that runs it that if you bit off a hangnail while you were anywhere in the vicinity he'd know it and bust you for littering. Sanshao no Hanzo, Hanzo of the Salamander, Naruto said, yeah I know who it is. It's one of the few people Donzo ever cursed verbally for being a fucking fool in his words. Do you know how hard it is to hear Donzo Gigi curse someone out and not laugh your ass off when you're eight? Jiraiya blocked a snort at thinking of uptight Donzo cursing at or about anything, why does the old mummy have a problem with Hanzo? Naruto frowned, before I was born I guess, Hanzo must have done something stupid that really pissed Donzo Gigi off because I heard him curse him out every day month for one reason or another. Most of the time Donzo wasn't even talking about Hanzo at the time. I called him senile on it like seven different times. Jiraiya started snickering, I'm glad you think it was so funny. Because I didn't think it was when he would spar with me after I said it. That old son of a bitch can seriously fight. He's really good enough to be Hokage if for nothing else than the ability to fight. Jiraiya was skeptical, he's an old geezer with one eye and one good arm, and you were eight at the oldest. Yeah I was just an eight-year-old, Naruto said cynically, I was an eight-year-old good enough to fight all of Orochimaru's elites at the same time and live without the conscious use of my bijou, and did I mention the bijou? Yeah, because if you didn't know I have a bijou. Naruto looked up at the progressively cloudy sky, Donzo is most certainly not weak, no way in hell and if you somehow found a way to beat him, in the end his wily old ass would find a way to take you with him. And that's exactly how he taught me to fight. Naruto raised a fist to the sky that blocked the specks of sunlight peeking through the clouds, win if you can, lose if you absolutely must, but failure is not an option, keep your goal in sight. You don't fail. Not in route. No, you finish what you start, and you don't need to survive to complete a mission if it's important enough. Jiraiya looked at the sky as they were nearing the point of crossing over into Ame. They would have to get off soon, it was nearly time to get started, it's been so long since I was last here. He looked over at Naruto who was still looking at the sky himself, with my first students. Jiraiya spoke, yeah, kid. That's actually some damn good advice. Omake 1. Shino had taken to going inside of the forest of death every now and then to study the large insect samples that the forest had to offer. The place had interested him when he had first come through in his first tuning exam, but not only was it a free-for-all deathmatch section of the examination, 
his team had flown through it so fast he didn't have time to do anything or look at anything, and without a team to watch over him he didn't feel safe heading back in until now. He was a Chunin and had been through it before so he should have been fine. Shino was currently studying a giant leech that he was very familiar with, as they had been the direct catalyst to his team getting a scroll quickly and easily and getting through the forest so quickly. The forest really wasn't as scary as everyone said it was. He didn't see what the big deal was. Other than the rustling of nearby animals it was a very peaceful place. There were sounds of far-off conflict between the more violent denizens of the forest he assumed, but it didn't bother him. It wasn't his problem. Fuck. That was the only indication of warning Shino had before a human-sized blur flew into his general area and obliterated the trunk of a nearby tree with its body. Shino noticed that the leeches had been disturbed and were swiftly fleeing from something, more than likely whatever had just landed in their vicinity. Perturbed by the disruption of his favorite activity, Shino walked over in that area before the figure stood up. God damn it, their teamwork is better now, and since when could they spit their poison out at stuff? Naruto yelled, brandishing his sword wantily. His body was covered in scuffs and his clothing was splotched with a strange colored blood, a making them evolve just by fighting them. I don't know if I should be nervous or if I should publish a journal. Naruto-san? Shino asked as he got closer, what are you doing here? Naruto turned to face him and his face paled, Shino, he said carefully, what are you doing here? No one comes this far in here. Except me and Anko-chan. And even she's having second thoughts these days. Shino's hands were placed in his pockets as he looked at Naruto through his sunglasses, his entire body concealed by his clothing, I am here to study the insect life found inside of the forest. The specimens are very interesting. You can't find anything like them anywhere else in the world. Tell me about it, Naruto said with a deadpan face, but seriously, we need to get the hell out of here. If you're here then I can't leave you by yourself or I might get you killed somehow. He ran over to Shino and started pushing him, come on, go, go, go. Things were bad enough with just me, now I need to get you out too. Am I aware of the dangers of the forest Naruto-san? Yes, of course I am. Shino dug his heels into the ground, but Naruto was physically stronger than him by a lot, what exactly is this all about? Oh no you're not. No you're fucking not, I'm saying that right now you are not aware of how messed up this place is. I'll tell you more later, but right now we need to get moving, Naruto said, they are smart, they are fast, they are agile, and they are everywhere. Shino cocked his eyebrow and looked over his shoulder, what is everywhere? A hissing noise prompted both of them to turn around and see a group of slowly advancing giant spiders, stalking towards them, fangs moving about and dripping venom. That's what's everywhere, Naruto said, sword out in front and ready for anything, so how about it Shino? You ready to get moving or would you like to stay back and use your insects to help me fight these things for a bit? Naruto turned his head to Shino behind him, Shino? Shino didn't respond. Instead he simply turned into a massive kikaiku and flew away faster than any other time Naruto had seen the bugs move, Mushi Bunshai no Jutsu, Bug Clone Jutsu, Naruto said with a sweat drop, that was good, I didn't even feel him do the replacement. The hissing of the spiders brought Naruto back to the brevity of the situation, you still could have stayed back and helped me asshole. Was the last thing Naruto said before he once again found himself locked into a life or death struggle with the most devastating denizens of the forest of death. It would be a long time before Shino even thought about venturing back to the forest of death again. Was he a coward by nature? Of course he wasn't. Was he fucking terrified of normal spiders, let alone the fucking massive, steroid-riddled ones Naruto had haphazardly introduced him to that day? Who wouldn't be? Especially a guy that used insects to do anything battle-oriented. Omake too. Naruto sat down on the ground in the middle of the sparring ring in the Hyuga clan compound, okay Neji. You're way better than you used to be for sure. Neji himself was taking a long drink of water after their heated spar, I couldn't let you stay as far ahead of me as you were when we last fought Naruto. But I believe if you weren't afraid of the repercussions of causing property damage you could have won decisively. Naruto scoffed, like I'm really going to pay for destroying half of the buildings surrounding the ring because I wanted to win a spar. You Hyugas have a sparring area in the middle of the compound because you guys don't have any techniques that could wind up taking out half of the area if it misfired. I'm not that subtle in major fights. Yes, I'm painfully aware of that fact, Neji said with a dry look on his face, but Byakugan and use of the Jukin is a very subtle art Naruto. Our eyes allow us to see everything clearly and gives us the ability to strike truer than anyone else without the need for widespread mass destruction. 
Naruto nodded and caught the bottle of water that Neji threw to him, a nice little keke genkai I have to say. He took a sip before putting on a thinking expression, hey, you guys can see through pretty much anything right? Neji nodded, yes, it's how I can see your chakra pathways. We can see through most solid objects and control the intensity of the effect. Huh. Naruto stroked his chin, so that would mean close to right? Neji blushed at Naruto's implication, man Urosenin probably would have killed for some Hayuga eyes at one point, though sound tailor-made for him. But that certainly explains something. Neji put as straight a face on as he could given the nature of the conversation, what would that be? Naruto grinned, it certainly explains one of the reasons Hinata had a crush on me for so long. She could obviously see what I was packing when I was a kid and was thoroughly impressed. Silence reigned between the two Jounin for the longest time as business as usual carried on for the multiple other Hyuga clan members walking around the compound, oblivious to the actual conversation going on between their young genius and the village's Jinchuriki. Haki Kushu, 8 trigrams empty palm. Neji shot off a vacuum shell type attack at Naruto and sent him flying hard into the wall nearby the sparring ring hard. Naruto slumped to the ground against the wall, rubbing the back of his head, damn, why didn't you hit like that during the actual fight? Haki Hasangaki, 8 trigrams mountain crusher. Neji got in Naruto's face and launched a harsh wave of chakra from his palm, obliterating the wall behind him and turning it to rubble. He narrowed his Byakugan activated eyes in anger when he found a smashed up log where Naruto should have been and turned to the side. What was that all about Neji? Naruto said from nearby where Neji was looking, relatively unscathed, it was a theory. A theory I can't prove. Or could I? Hmm. Naruto stroked his chin again before pointing at Neji with a serious look on his face, where is your cousin? I can get to the bottom of this right now. Die, Neji shouted as he began chasing after Naruto with murder in his eyes, firing off a haki kushu every now and then and missing, hold still and die Naruto. Naruto laughed maniacally as he and Neji dodged the shell-shocked Hayuga denizens that cleared the way for them as they sprinted through the compound, better men than you have tried Neji. And I'm not paying for any of that by the way. The two continued the chase until rounding a corner where they stopped abruptly on a dime as if nothing had been happening. The reasoning being that the head of the clan, Hyashi Hayuga was out for a walk with his two daughters Hinata and Hanabi. Neji quickly bowed to cover his tracks over the mayhem they had been causing all over the compound. Good afternoon Hyashi-sama, Hinata-sama, Hanabi-sama. Good afternoon Neji. The man replied stoically. Damn, did everyone except Hinata have that same dull tone with everything they said? Good afternoon Neji Niazan, Hinata said to him. Ah that was more like it. She did have a rather sweet voice. She blinked once she realized who else was there, Naruto-kun? What are you doing here? Naruto had a straight face as he was simply playing up the tone set by Hyashi and Neji, oh I just came here to spar with Neji for a bit. He was seeing me out like a good host. Naruto could feel the low killing intent coming from Neji who obviously still wanted to take a swing at him as he spoke. Yes. Neji almost growled out, we must be on our way now. With that, the two Konoha Jounin walked past the clan head and the two heiresses and continued on their way. Naruto looked over his shoulder to see Hinata doing the same, looking at each other. Naruto grinned at her, getting her to turn back around abruptly, possibly to hide a blush. Naruto then took advantage of the moment and let his eyes linger on Hinata a bit longer, stop staring at her or I'll stop your heart right here, right now. Naruto did not do as instructed, man I wish I had Byakugan. Omake 3 Kibo was sitting at the bar laughing loudly as he and the others were having fun, Naruto get off of 1010 and get over here already. You two have been over there for 15 minutes. Naruto forced 1010 off of his lips and tried speaking as she kissed any part of his face she could get to, I think 1010 chan's had enough. Someone should take her home and I don't mean me. If I did it I don't think I'd be able to leave. So? Kiba roared across the bar at the blonde, sounds good to me. Naruto responded as Tenten finally passed out in his lap, no, I make it a personal bylaw to avoid hooking up with drunk chicks. Even ones that are hot and I already know like me. Naruto shakily formed a hand seal and a cage bunshine formed in front of him, take Tenten Chan home, and don't drop her. He looked at the cage bunshine swaying on its feet, great, you're fucking drunk too. I may be drunk boss, but you're ugly. The clone said, pointing a swaying finger at Naruto, and tomorrow I'll be sober but you'll still be ugly. The bar started snickering at Naruto and his clone as the original just stared at his creation before dispelling it, fucking smartass. 
he formed another one and gave it an order before it could speak, take 10-10, don't drop her, and shut the hell up. The clone leveled a drunken glare at Naruto before taking 10-10 off of his hands and stumbling out the door with the bun-haired Chunin in its arms. Naruto walked over to the others and steadied himself on the bar where Tuya shoved a small shot in his face, what? Tuya had a heavy drunk blush on her face, here Uzumaki shithead. Drink this, it's called Zamuki, Zazuki, Zensuki. The bartender Ren answered for her, Zambuki. Tuya gestured towards him, right. Zabuniki. Anyway, drink it. Naruto shrugged and threw it back, smacking his lips at the taste, that's spicier than a motherfucker. Give me some more of that Ren. Ren did as instructed and watched Naruto throw them back as soon as he was able to put them down. Go Uzumaki, Tuya shouted. The others gathered around and watched Naruto drink 16 of the shots before he hit the bar with his palm, that's really good. What's it supposed to be? Ren smirked, a shot of whiskey and pure caffeine. Well whatever it is, Naruto said, having completely ignored Ren, it finished the job, he said, balancing against Tuya, I'm fucked up. I'm really fucked up. I think I'm done. Take me home Uzumaki shithead. Tuya muttered as she draped herself over Naruto's back, and don't take advantage of me. Or do. I don't care as long as you get me home. Naruto bid one last inebriated goodbye to everyone in the bar before he and Tuya slogged home. Triple X. One hour later, 2 a.m. Tuya was draped across Naruto's chest, you know what we haven't done in a long time Uzumaki? Tuya said in a husky voice. Naruto looked extremely wired as his eyes darted around the room and his body was steadily shaking, seemingly unable to stay still, what Tuya-chan? What, what, what? What is it? Is it fun? Huh? He said in a rapid, slurred voice. It is. I like it, and you seem to like it too. Tuya smirked and began kissing Naruto who eagerly kissed back. Tuya let out a sharp cry of surprise when she felt Naruto spank her but started to moan when she felt Naruto massage where he had struck her. The kiss carried on for four minutes, until Naruto realized that Tuya was unconscious. Fuck, Naruto said to himself as he shifted the redhead to the side of the couch and got up, what the fuck is wrong with me? I know I'm fucked up but I can't pass out. He ran around the couch a few times, I know, some exercise should get the rest out of me. Naruto started doing jumping jacks. Triple X. One hour later, 3 a.m. Fuck, Naruto said to himself, I've done like a million goddamn jumping jacks and I still feel fine. What a glorious morning for youth. Naruto ran to his door and went outside to see Guy on a brisk run around Konoha. On his hand, Guy what are you doing? Huh? 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 Before Guy could respond, Naruto shrugged and jumped to the ground before standing on his own hands, whatever it is, I'm in too. With that, Naruto started rapidly walking down the street on his hands. Tears sprang from Guy's eyes, I've finally found someone youthful enough to partake in my early, early morning exercises. If it's a challenge you want Naruto-kun it's a challenge you'll get. Explode with the power of youth, Guy yelled before rushing away on his hands to catch up to Naruto. Triple X. Two hours later, 5 a.m. Naruto let out a low groan as he limped back into his apartment with scuff marks all over his body and collapsed on the couch next to Tuya. The girl crawled on top of him and snuggled close to him before both of them broke into a cacophony of snores. Chapter 38, Heavy Forecast Hamako entered the Hokage Tower with her usual serene smile on her face. She had a stack of papers in her arms, letting those around her know this was a business trip, but from the look on her face it was if she were taking a nice morning stroll. As she neared Tsunade's office she said good morning to the shinobi stationed inside as Tsunade's assistants and the like before making her way to Tsunade's most trusted one, hello Shizun-san. I have an appointment with Hokage-sama this morning. Shizun gave her a smile, it's nice that you actually make appointments instead of just dropping in like Naruto-kun does. How he never drops in when she's busy I'll never know. Hamako let out a small giggle, Naruto-sama is good like that. He doesn't like being formal outside of missions though. May I enter? Yes you can, Shizun said, go right ahead. Hamako bowed to Shizun and headed inside of Tsunade's office. The head of the female cage looked up at her and gave her a smile, Hello Hamako. How are you today and what can I do for you? Hamako bowed to Tsunade and placed the papers she had with her on the desk, I'm doing well Hokage-sama. I came here today because I want to surprise Naruto-sama when he gets back. Tsunade looked at her curiously, surprise him how? 
Naruto doesn't really like most surprises seeing as how they try to kill him. She looked at some of the papers Hamako left on her desk, I assume you just came from the bank this morning. Yes I did, Hamako said, and he will like this surprise. Master has an excess amount of spare money due to his frequent higher level missions, captured bounty of Akasuna no Sasori, and does not have to readily support me due to my work at the academy. He has a lot of money and as such I suggest a move from his apartment to an actual home. I've been dealing with this on and off for almost a year now. Looking through more of the papers Hamako carried in, Tsunade got her point, so I assume you're here because you've decided on something he would like and you're relaying this to me due to him being my shinobi. A nod from the elder blonde woman came from Hamako, yes, it should be something nice for Master to come home to after this mission he's currently on. Would you like to visit the one I've chosen after it is made official later today Hokage-sama? Tsunade smiled at her, certainly. You should come back around 6 in the evening. I'm sure he'll love it. Triple X. With Naruto, Amiga Kurino Sato. Naruto had a dry look on his cloaked and covered face as he sat quietly on a passenger boat. Other than the man running the boat and the five other passengers aboard, Naruto only had one thought running through his mind, I hate the rain, I hate the rain, I hate the rain, I hate. Shut up right now or I will start singing again. Kyuubi growled in his head. Amiga Kuro no Sato was surrounded by water created by the perpetual rainfall that took place in the village. Just outside of the flooded area lay a smattering of outlying villages, where Naruto boarded a boat intended to come into the main hidden village itself. The boat ride had lasted for around an hour with no canopy over top. Thus the only thing keeping Naruto from the elements was the cloak over his head that he was using to obscure his features, and it was bitterly cold outside as well. Sorry QB. Naruto thought to his demonic inmate, but rain is the precipitation I hate the most, and it's cold as hell too, making it worse. Maybe I should have tried taking the other way in. It might be drier than this. Fucking rain. I hate the rain, I hate the rain, I hate the rain. Uck, sorry. Game face on Ningen. QB advised, forget about the weather. You'll be living in it until we're done here. You remember what to do once you get in don't you? Naruto rolled his eyes, of course I do. My part of the infiltration was all my plan anyway. It's totally foolproof. How about too foolproof? Fuck you. Naruto shot back, me and Uro Kyofu are golden. Once I get in he'll find me. I have no idea how he's going to do that, but once we get in I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The QB's laughter rang out in Naruto's head, confusing Naruto deeply, what's funny? Nothing's funny about this. QB stopped laughing long enough to answer its Jinchuriki, you do remember what Donzo told you about basic infiltration in all of the noteworthy villages don't you? Of course I do. Naruto thought testily, you don't forget stuff like that. QB started laughing again, then you would remember that Amiga Corps has a policy of security checks and surveillance to all visitors. Naruto wasn't getting it, so? I can deal with the surveillance, that's rookie stuff, and I don't have any weapons or anything conspicuous on me anyway. Who cares if they have security checks? There's nothing on me that could give me away. QB chuckled a bit more, okay then. I guess you're right. Yeah those series of cavity searches should be no problem for a tough guy like you right? QB could feel Naruto just lock up after that statement was uttered and let out more laughter. Naruto grit his teeth under his face cover as the sound of raindrops mixed with the laughter of his inner demon, I hate you so much. Triple X. Elsewhere in Amiga Core. In the tallest tower of Amiga Core, a pair of ripple pattern eyes peered through the darkness of the room they were in, Conan. The voice of pain called out, there are intruders of interest in Ame. Please locate and identify one of them for me, he will be around the western quadrant. If he is who I suspect him to be, you know what to do. A woman with blue hair and a paper flower in her hair, dressed in the Akatsuki robe, Conan walked out onto the ledge outside into the rain, as you wish pain sama. With that, a pair of wings sprouted from her back as she jumped into the sky and took off in flight. After the presence of his female partner had vanished from view, pain shut his eyes, and about this other presence? Another presence, and it feels so familiar. I hope you enjoy your return to Ame Sensei, thank you for bringing me the QB Jinchuriki. And I hope you enjoy being in the presence of God before your death. Triple X. With Naruto. He had lived through the demeaning cavity searches that had awaited him after the boat had docked, there had been one right after everyone got off, there had been one once they had gotten inside the dock building, there had been another one right outside at the gate before they could actually get to town itself. 
After dealing with it he decided to go on walkabout until Jiraiya found him somehow. There wasn't much he could do except start getting information as long as he didn't have any gear on him, not even a lone shuriken rested on his person. He had never been so unarmed in the field in his entire life and he had to say, it was rather hard keeping his cool around all of the Ame ninja inside of the posts waiting to search him. He had to keep his fingers from twitching towards his bladeless back, or his pouch less thigh. Despite the out of his comfort zone feel he had the entire time, once he got out to the streets he felt much more at home in his little espionage mission. Amiga Kor was a very industrialized village, more so than Konoha. There were elevators abound, cable cars all over carrying people between the tall buildings, tons of neon signs and the like. Most of the ninja he saw, instead of using kunai and shuriken as their primary long-range weapon, took to carrying umbrellas that would sprinkle senbone in a deadly rain of sorts. Original. In addition to that, a lot of them wore oxygen tanks and face masks that would allow them to breathe underwater. The village itself was huge. The buildings were more narrow than Konoha's, but they were so much taller. Skyscrapers were abundant in the village, but even then there were so many of them. Still, infiltrating this village felt more comfortable than trying to do so in any of Orochimaru's bases. At least he had free reign to fight and run away if he needed to. It was going to be one hell of a challenge for anyone in Ame to corner him if he was discovered and forced to flee. There were tons of canals that were full to the brim with rainwater and he could see younger ninja down in them. A lot of D-ranked missions in Ame probably had to do with how they dealt with all of the excess rain and flooding. Uro Kyofu better not be fucking around on the outskirt villages. Naruto had left Jiraiya to infiltrate Ame on his own as both of them together would be too risky to attempt. Naruto would be heading through the front door so to speak while Jiraiya ensured Naruto that he had his own way of getting in inconspicuously. He left it at that and sent Naruto on his own way to get in saying that if he didn't beat him there he would catch up soon enough. That was just one of the things they had spoken about before beginning their operation in earnest. Flashback, one day ago, just past Ame's border. Jiraiya looked at Naruto as they both trudged through the rain, you're very strong Naruto. I'm very proud of you I want you to know that. Naruto looked over at Jiraiya and returned his attention to walking, don't say stuff like that Uro Kyofu. You know it's bad luck to say that crap before we do things like this. Save it until after we leave this country and get somewhere safe. Jiraiya shook his head, no I'm saying this now. You're one hell of a ninja kid. You're going to be a great Hokage whenever Tsunade Haim decides to cough up the hat to you. Root trained or not, I know so. And I've said it a million times, but I'm truly sorry about sealing you off when you were younger. Seeing the sincerity in the man's eyes Naruto couldn't just tell him to stifle, it's alright. I forgave you a long time ago, you know that. What's wrong with you? Just thinking back to some old pupil's kid. Jiraiya gave Naruto a wide grin, I've got something I need to teach you once this mission is over. Something that I'm excited about. We'll talk about it more once we get out of this, alright? Naruto shrugged off Jiraiya's previous attitude with a grin of his own, now that's more like it. And flashback. I saw the angel today. A nearby man said as Naruto took temporary refuge under an awning from the rain, I still can't believe that someone was able to take down Hanzo, but I guess he is God after all. Naruto frowned underneath his face mask, this guy killed the guy that the guy who trained me wanted to drain of his lifeblood with a spoon but never had the chance. And they call him God. S rank superiority complex. I really don't want to meet this guy yet. Now where do I go to wait for Uro Kyofu, the bar? No, that's too obvious. Naruto started walking around the village again, just seeming like a harmless tourist of sorts as he thought things out and took in the conversations of the people around him. All the citizens were talking about were the guy they called God and the person they referred to as his angel. The more he heard, the less he liked and the sooner he wanted to leave. But he had just gotten there, they hadn't even gotten to the crux of the mission yet and he still had to find Jiraiya. Maybe after he had a blade or twenty on him he would feel less skittish over the whole matter, but until then he was cold, wet, hungry, alone, and unarmed, miles away from home, in the dead zone of the elemental nations. If anything happened he would have one hell of a breakout ahead of him as if Orochimaru's hidden village was a rat's nest, then this village was a hill of fire ants. The people believed that this pain guy kept the village safe, that he was God among men, and there had to be some reason for that. Naruto wasn't buying it in the least, but if the guy Ranakatsuki, could be the legend that inspired terror like Hanzo, and could get people to call him God he had to have something that backed it up. It was alright. Just don't get caught. Simple. Be cool, be ice. What did they have on him? Nothing. Tons of people came into Ame looking like him, 
It was raining and cold as hell. Everyone was bundled up. When Naruto was sick of wandering around he saw a sight that made him grin widely under his cover. A small building that he knew wasn't a regular part of Ame, no matter how well it looked like it belonged there. A cozy looking tavern with lights on and the prices of cheap drinks out front. What kept Naruto from going in, was that he knew exactly what this was, and seeing as how he was the only person on this particular street it was almost show time. And he was not disappointed when the building turned into small toad, signifying the presence of the man he was looking for, smooth Uro Kyofu, Naruto said, I'm going to assume you caught someone just now in there. Jiraiya appeared at Naruto's side, grinning, you know it Gaki. How'd you like the cavity searches? He asked with an amused look on his face. Naruto gave him a look with the only thing visible being his piercing blue eyes, I hate you so much right now. The only thing stopping me from leaping out and you and kicking you in the balls right now is that I still need you. Don't give me that look, Jiraiya said before holding up a scroll, here, I brought you your goodies. Naruto quickly took it from his grasp, felt naked without your stuff did you? You have no idea. Naruto replied, alright, go shake down your captures, I'm going to change into something better. It's not like if I do my job right I'm going to be seen again so it doesn't matter. Triple X. A few hours later. Naruto waited for Jiraiya to return from interrogating his prisoners. He changed into the same stuff he had on for the Yuki no Kuni mission, only he kept his cloak over top due to the weather. He noticed the look on Jiraiya's face as he returned from getting his information and shared it all with Naruto. How this pain character killed Hanzo in battle how he eradicated anyone loyal to or anyone who had a relationship of any sort with Hanzo, so what did you do with the guy? Naruto asked after all of their cards had been laying out on the table. Jiraiya wiped the rainfall from his face, I sent him to Konoha. He wouldn't say anything more about pain than what I told you so hopefully they can work something more out of him. Naruto nodded, Jiraiya was good, but he wasn't an interrogation specialist. It was better to send him to people that could definitely coax the information from him, so now what's the plan? Where do you need me Uro Senen? Jiraiya pointed up at a skyscraper, I need you to find me areas of potential interest. Do what you need to do. Find me anywhere that could have anything we need to know Naruto. Send me periodic reports on your progress, don't be afraid to send a toad. With all of this water it should be easy enough for them to stay discreet. I'll be keeping my feet to the pavement for now. The two Konoha ninja looked at one another before Naruto took on a stone-like face and saluted Jiraiya before vanishing in a sunshine. Jiraiya watched as the after trail of his sunshine dispersed, good luck Gaki. With that he went off on his own to dig up his own dirt. Triple X. Well someone in Amiga Core was spoiling for a fight rather soon, or so the stockpiled weapons here and there inside of storehouses all over the village would attest to. No one inside of Ame seemed to be ready for any kind of war, but the kind of surplus that Naruto found was just too much for it to just be superfluous. It had been a few hours since he had left Jiraiya, and he actually had something to arouse some suspicion so he figured then was as good a time as any to check in with his perverted sensei slash godfather. Naruto had taken his place atop a skyscraper as he sat out for a short reprieve. It had been a while since he had to go under the radar like this, he forgot how much energy it expended staying hidden for so long. Good thing it was something you never forget how to do. Before Naruto took to biting his thumb to begin a summoning, he saw a figure in the sky not too much higher than he already was. As it flew around the area he frowned to himself, damn it, this is too soon. He knew his cover was already blown by whoever this was, but if he could take this person out and go along his way he might have been able to stay hidden. It didn't seem like this person had risen the alarm on his presence yet, that was their mistake. The last mistake they'll ever make, Naruto said to himself as his cloaked form stood straight up to a dress that he knew he was found out. The cold storm wind causing his cloak to flutter about, eventually pushed the hood off of his head to reveal his blonde hair. He pulled the face mask connected to his shirt under his flak jacket down to reveal his whiskered cheeks. A series of projectiles flew at Naruto from the aerial attacker. Naruto had to say he was jealous of whoever it was, he had mastered his element and he still couldn't fly. But for right then he had to stifle that thought and dodge before he was hit. Naruto moved out of the way of the attacks and as one stuck itself into the roof he was standing on he saw that it was a sheet of paper. Naruto touched the edge of it to reveal that it was razor sharp. That would have seriously injured him if it had hit him. He turned his attention back to his opponent who had sent out an entire salvo of the paper shuriken for another attack. Naruto drew his sword and sliced through them, a long-range fighter like Daedara. He thought as he decided he was going to close the distance in this one even if it killed him. 
he'd be damned if he was going to let himself get picked apart from a distance this time around, Cage Bunshine no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto was joined on top of the skyscraper by ten copies of himself that had immediate orders to cover him while he tried to close in on his airborne enemy. He ran towards the end of the rooftop and jumped into the air at his opponent. Fuuten, Kaze Wakshikaru, Wind Release, Wind Burst. As he started to fall, his jutsu activated and the air bubbles underneath his feet burst, giving him a temporary platform with which he was able to spring at his opponent. Naruto swung his sword at the enemy, but missed wide and wound up sticking to the side of another building. From his up-close attack, he saw that he was fighting a woman, a woman in an Akatsuki robe. Yeah, he was in it now. She flew past him on wings made of paper, she fired paper shuriken at him. She certainly had a strange style of ninjutsu. His clones had begun to bombard her with weaponry of their own from the rooftop as he watched her navigate her way through the attack with her paper wings. How she was able to use paper in the rain he had no clue. Naruto crouched down standing sideways on the wall and pounced off hard, giving himself enough momentum to carry himself back to the roof with his clones where he immediately began making hand seals, Raten, Kaminari Shuriken, Lightning Release, Lightning Shuriken. The recent amount of weaponry in the air above the female Akatsuki member's head due to his clones missing began raining down lightning around her that she dodged. Naruto kneeled down in front of a wall of his cage bunshine, draw. All of them pulled out a Fuma Shuriken each, aim. All of them drew their arms back to throw at the woman still dodging the lightning bolts raining down on her, fire. The clones let loose the Shuriken that prompted Naruto to begin his own hand seals, Shuriken Cage Bunshine no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu. The large, mid-air shuriken multiplied in flight and went right for his enemy in a wall of steel. Naruto watched as the woman was shredded in mid-air with the vicious barrage of weapons before narrowing his eyes as the feeling of his clones that had formed a wall behind him being cut down fluttered through his mind. Naruto immediately leapt to his right with no time to spare as all of his clones were vanquished with extreme prejudice by more deadly flying paper. He turned with his sword at the ready to see the woman standing in front of him on the same rooftop. Naruto spoke, you know, I thought for a second that I might have put you down with that last one, but that was just a clone the entire time, wasn't it? You're correct. She replied coolly as she slowly walked forward, I can assure you that the genuine article will not be as easy to defeat Kyubi Jinchuriki. I have a name lady, and I know you know it, Naruto said as he readied himself for anything from her, I'm not going to ask you to leave me alone, or even to surrender because I know you won't. All I'm going to say is that you'd better be ready for me. Her eyes showed nothing but stoicism, I have a name too Naruto Uzumaki. It is Konan. And I never underestimate my enemies. Doing so to you would make me an utter fool. She extended her hand as a sword of paper seemingly formed out of her sleeve right before she dashed forward. Naruto quickly blocked it and took a retaliation swing that she dodged by jumping back and sending out a rush of paper shuriken at him. Naruto cut through all the ones that were immediately dangerous to him leaving the rest to turn his cloak to tatters, exposing him to the elements fully. Naruto ripped off the rest of the cloak and threw it at Konan as a weapon of convenience. The remains of the tattered cloak were reduced to ribbons by Konan's paper, but while it still existed it provided enough of a blind spot for Naruto to get to Konan's left side where he lashed out with a horizontal swing of his sword. He cut through a wall of paper that Konan haphazardly put up to stop him and saw her form a massive paper airplane to take off with. Naruto sheathed his sword and grabbed onto the back of the plane just as she enabled it to take off from the rooftop, bringing him right along with her in her flight. The added unexpected weight of Naruto immediately caused problems for the flight as they were directed into a nosedive shortly after they left the roof. Konan tried pulling up but it was too heavy to brute force upright. Naruto made a set of one-handed hand seals, Fuuten, Reposhu, Wind Release, Gale Palm. Naruto aimed the directional wind to turn the plane upright well enough that it brought them out of the dive. Naruto pulled himself up onto the plane and his presence was answered with a sword slash aimed at his face that he leaned back to avoid as it almost cleaved off his nose. Naruto responded by letting off a punch at her that when it made contact made her body burst into paper and reform behind him, with an attempt to stab him through the body. Naruto rolled off the side of the paper airplane and pulled himself back up the other side with a kick at Konan that she blocked with a mass of paper, I thought you guys weren't supposed to kill me. Conan gave him a hard look, don't be foolish. You know that you can survive that with little problems. I won't kill you, but when I'm done you'll wish you were. You will feel pain before your life ends, that I can promise you. Naruto smirked, honey, until you've been tied to a chair at the age of six and emotionally conditioned en route, you don't know what pain is. 
Conan's eyes hardened at the sound of the name Root, but until then, as I said. You'll survive this. After saying that, Conan used the paper that made up the airplane and reformed her wings before flying off, leaving Naruto hurtling high speed through the air between the skyscrapers with nothing under him. Holy shit. You crazy bitch. Naruto screamed as he continued flying through the air, if I live through this in one piece I swear to Kami I'm going to fuck you up. Naruto hurtled through the skyline of Ame until a building finally got in his way, fuck. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Nothing Naruto had in his arsenal could change his trajectory and he was moving too fast for him to use Fuuten, Kaze Wakshikaru to slow himself down or keep himself in the air, so all he could do was soften the impact enough to keep him from doing his best impression of a smashed insect. Fuuten, Rasengan, Wind Release, Rasengan. Naruto made the two-handed, elementally charged Rasengan and brutally punched a hole into the building he was flying at, causing him to crash land inside of the building. Konan hovered at the entrance that Naruto had created high up in the building, a motionless Naruto was what she saw strewn out in the rubble in a hallway from his last ditch effort to keep himself in the fight, you're not defeated yet, don't insult me by trying to play dead. You're probably a cage bunshine. Boom. The laid out Naruto said lowly before an explosion filled the hallway and came back out through the hole, forcing Konan to fly higher to dodge the fireball made from the explosive note that was attached to the now incinerated Naruto. Konan was able to elevate a floor, however Naruto crashed through a window from above her, his clothes all beat up from crashing through a building wall, scratches all along his face from it as well, a one-tail chakra cloak covering his body, and a Rasengan in his right hand. The attack hit Konan, took out one of her wings, and propelled them both downward towards the ground. Konan, luckily for her, hadn't been subjected to the violent jutsu for too long, letting her reform her wings rather quickly. Naruto was still close to her however and used the tail of his chakra cloak to grab her, pull her close, and latch onto her, keeping her from flying correctly. The direction of her awkward flight pattern led them to a canal where they skimmed the water before the actual impact of them hitting the surface occurred, throwing them apart forcefully. Triple X. With Jiraiya, before Naruto and Konan's battle began. It had been hours since Jiraiya had heard anything from Naruto, and he had just come from speaking with his Ame contact giving him his new orders for the time being. Jiraiya proceeded to go about his own through the shadows of Ame, looking for any sign of the kid as well as waiting for any news from him. During his search he heard a sound of something crashing and the sounds of people panicking in the streets around him. Jiraiya quickly found the area where the skyscraper was wrecked on what appeared to be the 15th floor or higher. Suddenly a massive fireball emerged from the hole and a glowing red figure dropped from a higher floor to hit someone floating in the air. He saw paper flutter from the person's falling body and knew only one person that had a jutsu anywhere near resembling that, Konan is that you? The angel is in a fight? Who would be crazy enough to call the wrath of God and his angel after what he did to Hanzo? It doesn't matter, he won't be around long enough for it to matter anyway. Jiraiya grit his teeth, damn it Gaki. He muttered before moving towards where he saw them fall. He wasn't doing too badly from the looks of things, but things could change in a hurry. The Akatsuki always operated in twos and while he seemed to be winning against the one, the second member could attack him at any time, this Akatsuki thing is going to kill either him or me I swear. Before he could get too far a voice called him, I would say that your opinion is correct, but you don't need to be told that you're about to die Jiraiya Sensei. Jiraiya saw a man standing on a pillar nearby staring at him. The man had orange hair tied back in a long ponytail, multiple piercings in his nose and all over his face, a slashed Ame Hitty 8, and an Akatsuki cloak. His most relevant trait was a set of eyes with distinct ripple pattern eyes. Jiraiya stared at the man hard for a long while before finally speaking up, you've certainly changed a lot, but those eyes. Your pain, aren't you Nagato? The man did not respond, I guess you didn't grow up the way I wished you would. What happened to you? Pain narrowed his eyes at Jiraiya, you don't need to know. After all, you're just an outsider in my village. Jiraiya shook his head at the man, you've changed Nagato. Pain made a few hand seals, for the better? Kushios no jutsu, summoning jutsu. A large crustacean with body piercings of its own appeared in a puff of smoke, Sutan, Humatsu Rappa, water release, violent bubble wave. The crustacean fired a wave of bubbles, much like the jutsu name indicated, that Jiraiya jumped away from against a wall. Who do you think you're dealing with? Jiraiya asked as he made his own hand seals, Ranjishigami no jutsu, wild lion's main jutsu. His hair extended and wrapped around the summoned creature before even more of his hair grew into the shape of a lion's mouth that engulfed the crustacean and kept going towards pain. 
He dodged the initial attack, but wound up getting wrapped up in Jiraiya's elongated hair. Jiraiya looked at the man caught in his grasp sadly, Nagato there are so many things I want to ask you, like what happened to Yahiko? I know Konan is fighting Naruto right now. Yahiko, Payne said, I do remember someone by that name. He's been dead for a long time. Jiraiya almost cringed at his tone, what happened to you and Konan? Nothing happened. This is just another fight, Payne said calmly, too many people have died here, and their pain is what helped me grow up. Even the most ignorant, innocent child will grow up eventually when they learn of true pain. It affects what they say, what they think, and they become real people. Jiraiya sneered at him, you think abandoning the love for your friends is the right way to grow up? Sensei, Payne said in the same monotone as before, you're still just a normal person. But me, living in the center of an infinite universe of pain. Have grown into something much more. He closed his eyes, I have grown from a person into a god. And as god, what I say, what I think, becomes the law of god. But you're still just a regular person sensei, I don't expect you to understand what I'm telling you. Jiraiya's face twisted into a multitude of emotions, I can't believe you're the same child I met all those years ago. Things I couldn't comprehend as a human are crystal clear now that I am god. And now I have also noticed that there are things I can do as a god that I could never dream of as a human, Pain continued as Jiraiya listened. What are you trying to do here? Jiraiya asked. Pain had a simple answer to that, I'm going to put an end to this pathetic world and its endless wars. It will be an act of God. Jiraiya needed to know more. He was in front of what used to be his student, who was now the leader of Akatsuki. He could get the reasoning from the source itself, what are you after the bijou for? Why do you want Naruto? Pain quickly decided his reply, I suppose since you're going to die and since Konan will have the QB in our possession soon enough I can tell you. Using all of the bijou, I will create a new forbidden jutsu. A technique that will eradicate an entire country in less than a second. The ultimate technique. A weapon of unprecedented power and scale. Yep, Naruto was right. S-rank power, S-rank ego, S-rank insanity. Jiraiya thought in response to this plan, how could you think something like that would stop war? You'll just make them bigger that way. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Payne shook his head at the toad sage, when countries quarrel with one another what is the quickest way to end the dispute? Jiraiya snapped at him, stop avoiding the question. Answer the question, how could you think of something that damn stupid? Payne ignored him, I will give my weapon to the warring nations, people who have weapons will inevitably use them. Again, Jiraiya figured that this plan was completely asinine. Yes he was right, the weapon would be used eventually, but that would solve nothing. Whenever the weapon was used, whoever was left would immediately begin starting on something bigger, something more powerful, and when that was created they would use it in revenge. This wouldn't lead to a new world order, it would lead to no world period, hundreds of millions of people will die from your idiot idea, and the survivors would be terrified. He was about to say and piss the fuck off but he was cut off. All the people of the world will learn what true pain is, pain said determinedly, my technique will breed fear and be the ultimate deterrent. The wars will cease quickly. Pain will quicken the world's growth as it did mine. Our world is still in its infancy, but the hand of God has come down to guide it down the path to maturity. Jiraiya felt like laughing, you want to help the world destroy itself to help it grow up faster. And you think that's your responsibility? I do. Pain admitted, I am a god of peace after all. Jiraiya let out a chuckle, you've turned into quite the comedian Nagato. Pain Kawari meet out of harm's way after finishing his explanation, over here sensei. To me you're an insignificant child whose growth was stunted. Another summon? Jiraiya said as he saw Pain standing atop a massive chameleon, I have to admit, hearing a kid like you telling me that I and the world need to grow up. If Naruto were here he would be laughing his ass off right now. You say you're god, but I'm no longer a human either, he said as he made hand seals for his own summoning jutsu. The smoke amassed around him, flooded by anger I cried tears of blood. The lone hermit of the legendary Sanin. The unstoppable toad sage of Mount Mayuboku. The great Jiraiya, he said before falling face first onto the surface he had been standing on. You really haven't grown up at all have you? Payne said disdainfully. Jiraiya stood up with a roar, damn it gamak and san, don't be moving all over the place when I'm getting my pose on. The massive toad wearing clothing much like Gamabunta except he had a magenta color, horns on his head, black markings going down his face and he held two things, a shield in one hand and a sasamata in the other, google it. It's a pain in the ass to explain if you don't know what I'm talking about, 
you tripped over your own two feet you clumsy idiot. Whatever, Jiraiya said as pain and his massive chameleon came charging forward, I'll have to get serious right from the start here. I'll have to use sage mode for this one. Gamakin looked up at the summoner on his head in shock, what? Are you serious? You're going to? Yep, Jiraiya said, I'm summoning the two great sage toads. I'll need you to buy me some time to set this up Ken-san. Gamakin nodded, you've got it Jiraiya. I'm pretty weak, but I'll give you my best. Jiraiya rolled his eyes, again with the you're weak crap. You're not weak and you're going to show this bastard that right now. Triple X. Naruto vs Conan. Naruto pulled himself out of the canal onto some debris that had gotten caught on something, keeping it in place, we've got a mission to infiltrate Amegaki. You should be right in your element. You might even meet a cute young lady you like there with your track record. Naruto said, mimicking Jiraiya, his voice still rather gravelly from using the Kyuubi's chakra, yeah I met a lady alright. And she's kicking my ass you stupid perverted toad sage. Naruto stood straight up to see Konan fly directly out of the water, her paper wings being soaked not hampering her ability in the slightest, that really hurt. Naruto growled, duh, that's why I did it. You dropped me out of the air from at least 150 feet. That would have hurt. Pain Sama knows that Jiraiya Sensei is here, Konan said, he's probably dealing with him as we speak. You have no hope of him bailing you out and saving you. Who says I need Uro Senen to save me from you? Naruto questioned with barbs in his voice before the important part of that statement hit him, did you just say Jiraiya Sensei? Konan nodded and tilted her head, Naruto believed that was conveying her amusement at his lack of knowledge on the topic, yes. He was our sensei a long time ago. Did he not tell you? Naruto stood at the ready but he had questions that he wanted answered, when? All I know is that he trained Minato Namikaze and that was it before me. Konan nodded again, that was after he trained us. We were trained during the Second Great Ninja War, a long time before you were born. Wow, Naruto said, so that would make you like. 40 or something. You're really hot for being 40. He looked at her wondering what she looked like under that Akatsuki robe, if we weren't fighting right now I would probably be hitting on you. Age doesn't mean anything to a demon or a ninja ningen, QB said offhandedly. Shut the fuck up. I'm fighting here. If you aren't going to tell me to dodge something that's trying to kill me, keep it to yourself until the fight is over. Naruto thought to QB as he couldn't see any inclination of emotion on Konan's face, but he could sense the killing intent from him trying to guess her age slash hitting on her, how did he train you? Why? Konan's temper died down as she decided to explain, we were war orphans. Ame was constantly used as a battlefield between the larger nations during their conflicts and our families were taken from us. Jiraiya Sensei taught us ninja arts in order to give us a chance to defend ourselves and survive. Me, Nagato, and Yahiko. We wanted to bring peace to Ame. But Hanzo. And Donzo. Wait, Naruto said, what about Donzo Gigi? What happened? Konan's eyes hardened, Hanzo aligned with him and his route to destroy our group that wanted to bring peace to Ame. He killed Yahiko. But Naga Pain killed them all and saved me. And there it was. That was why Donzo hated Hanzo, that was why he always said to stay out of Ame. Hanzo ended up getting his troops slaughtered by this pain, but Naruto knew why Donzo decided to ally with him for that purpose. Bringing peace to Ame would take away an important buffer nation that no matter what would have kept enemies at bay who tried passing through it attack Konoha during war times. Donzo could have backed Konan and pain her. Nagato though. It would have ended better. His route were killed anyway when he sided with Hanzo, and if he had supported them instead, guerrilla style, he could have kept his men alive and maybe stopped all of this from happening. But hindsight was 2020. Naruto wasn't Donzo and Kami he didn't want to be, what was done was done and it was his problem now. Konan continued to speak, Pain Sama will bring peace to the world, and you are a vital key to that peace, as well as its greatest thorn in its side. You won't be any longer after this Naruto Uzumaki. Shikigami no Mai, Dance of the Shikigami. Konan sent out a rush of innumerable papers at Naruto that started to engulf his body. His chakra cloak fought them off at first, but eventually they surrounded him and covered his body entirely, now you'll remain there until you pass out from lack of oxygen. It is all over. Fu Uten, Shinku Agyoku, Wind Release, Vacuum Sphere. The paper encased Naruto audibly inhaled deeply and exhaled, causing several bullets of air to fly from Naruto's body and cut through Konan's paper, giving him enough room to kawarimi his way out. Naruto rushed at Konan, now sporting two tails on his cloak, 
Thank you Donzo Gigi. The only damn jutsu you have that I can use from your training. Conan heard him, thank Donzo as rage flittered across her face for the first time, you would thank that monster? She said loudly as the launched a seemingly endless stream of her paper at the Jinchuriki. The power of her paper hit him full on and drove him back into the water, moving the water aside as it pushed him towards the depths, your route too. I was told that you feel no emotions, no pain. We'll see about that, she said as she began making hand seals. One man's monster is another man's hero. Aski Wagakur, Naruto roared as he exploded from the water at Konan, and I do feel pain and emotion, he never broke me like the rest. He saw her making hand seals and noticed that some of the paper that had stuck to his body were explosive tags. He flared his chakra and got them off of his body just in time for them to explode. Konan watched the fireball and saw Naruto get thrown back into the water coldly, no matter how strong or fast you are in that form, no one can outrun an explosion. The water bubbled for a moment before a large red chakra claw reached up out of the water and grabbed Konan. She saw the paper that she coated her body with burning through from the intensity of Naruto's chakra as she saw three tails swirling about when he surfaced again. Naruto whipped her body about violently before throwing her as hard as he could with his chakra claw. Konan somehow was able to muster even more paper and create more wings for herself to fly herself out of harm's way, he's a very powerful ninja. Even without the QB, but with it his strength is overwhelming. I need to play this right. I won't be able to flat out overpower him or even outlast him as he is. I just have to hold out long enough for my plan to work. I can't hit this bitch QB. She's too methodical for me. She'll just fly away and try to pick me apart from afar. Naruto roared to the demon inhabiting his mind. You aren't anywhere near Konoha Kit. There is one thing you haven't T tried yet. How many tails can you use? QB asked calmly as if it had a plan. I can barely reach four, you know that. Naruto thought to QB as Konan gained altitude and took off through the village, she's handling three pretty well so far and I can't grab her. Once I lose control at four she can keep picking me apart until I raise a mei to the ground. I don't want to do that though. Four tails eh? The last time you used what I have in mind you only had two at your disposal. You'll be twice as well off now once you activate it, QB said with a vulpine grin on its destructive face. Naruto almost froze as he used his tails to swing himself along the skyscrapers through the village in pursuit of Konan, you are telling me to use the trigger aren't you? The last time I did that I cracked every bone in my body when I turned it off. I had it on for too long. QB had an answer to that, you're an idiot. Then don't turn it off until you kill the paper using woman and her partner or at least until you can be protected by Jiraiya. It's that simple. Once you activate it she won't last long. You know this. Naruto couldn't respond to that. With two tails the only thing that kept him from slaughtering Kimimaro all those years ago was that he couldn't generate enough force to get past his unbelievably tough Shikatsumyaku Keke Genkai bones to anything vital. He doubted that Konan could take an Amari the way Kimimaro did. That guy was a killing machine. A pity he died really. But the point was, if she was buying time, he would let her. He needed the time too. With that in mind, Naruto began climbing the skyscraper he was currently attached to, trying to reach the top as fast as he could. From this point forward for him, this fight wasn't about precision any longer. Konan was far more precise in combat than he knew he could be in a head-to-head -head conflict. The only other option was overwhelming force, and Naruto had yet to meet anyone that could match him when he decided to cut loose, and he doubted he would today. Naruto reached the top of the skyscraper and saw Konan flying about keeping far out of his range. Naruto simply stood still, tail swinging about, trying to will out his fourth tail, knowing how much it would hurt and how much damage it would do to his body, just keep flying around. I've got nothing but time bitch. His red eyes rested firmly on her aerial form as he focused on drawing the rest of his power out. Triple X. Jiraiya vs. Pain. Pain's chameleon disappeared from sight, alerting Jiraiya and Gamakin, he's gone. How in the hell did he find this kind of summon? He put that question elsewhere for the time being, since he's disappeared we can only use that barrier jutsu of ours to find him. Gamakin was sweating, yeah, this won't be an easy battle. Pain knew what he was doing as Jiraiya used a jutsu to extend his awareness to sense Pain's presence, that jutsu will detect any slight movement of his opponent. He suddenly summoned a giant three-headed dog and sent it at Jiraiya and Gamakin. The large toad was forced to dodge by jumping up and grabbing onto an elevated position. Jiraiya looked down to locate their enemy that was now riding a five-headed dog that was still coming at them, the more they attack the more appear. What are these? 
little dogs with high growth rates? Damn they split up, he shouted as that indeed did happen. They split off from the main dog and launched at Gamakin who used his massive weapon to bat them away. However he missed one that knocked him off of the skyscraper. While in mid-air, a giant drill-beaked bird came at Gamakin who lifted his shield to block. It kept him from taking immediate damage, but he ended up slamming into the ground from the air, cracking the ground. Jiraiya stood on his summon's chest, whenever I plan to attack he hides himself. This is seriously weird. Jiraiya thought up a strategy as he was currently not going to last long enough as he was, he's supposed to have all six elements with the Rinnegan, but why is he only using summons to fight? A massive ox rushed at him and Gamakin, Gamakin you can return home now, I'm ready. Gamakin returned to the mountain of the toads just as the ox plowed Jiraiya into a wall, kicking up a cloud of smoke. However it ended up with the ox being thrown away as if it were nothing. Why do you always summon us in places like this? No wonder Gamabunta is always angry. An elderly voice said from Jiraiya's hole in the wall. Ah don't say that ma, Jiraiya Chan was forced to do this. Another elderly voice said from inside of the hole. Sorry for summoning you both here Fukusaku-sama, Shima-sama, Jiraiya said apologetically. Shima spoke again, but brat, didn't you always say this form of yours chases away girls? That's why you hated using it. Jiraiya chuckled, hey, there's no choice but for me to just deal with it. I am fighting an opponent with the Rinnegan after all, so let's go. Jiraiya's form could be seen from the shadows of the hole in the wall with two small toads on both of his shoulders.